speaking of Curse of Stradania, you began the session last time sitting in front of Count Escher Kreskov, Vampire Count um, Extraordinaire, Extraordinaire, uh, Master Alchemist, Alchemist, and 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 uh, Machinist, and Machinist, Machinist, probably both actually. And you uh, asked him for help. You told him you were there for Zern. Uh, you basically... I don't know, what the fuck even happened last... It was only been three weeks. Um, you, you... You brought the child, and he said that he would be... He was in that catatonic state. He told you that he could help with the... Um, with creating an alchemical brew that could cleanse her. Of whatever the uh, the, the Shadow Kai, the Dusk Elves of Skefniel, had done to her, but um, he was basically fresh out of the incredibly potent reagents that grew with the negative energy of the Shadow Fell that had seep- that seeped into this land. Um, you also requested his help in uh, in in fighting or an uprising against uh, the Carrion King of Warrock, but um, he seemed very uh, hopeless and he said there was no point. Um, he told you his story, uh, eventually, that he had had uh, a daughter, an adoptive daughter who was a vampire like he was, and that she had become restless. Mm, and I have in my notes here, it says that she took a dark dump. I mean, gift. Sorry. <laughs> my handwriting was a little... <laughs> I, mean, I, can see, I can see that. Um, and that uh, his daughter, uh, Ravenovia, had become restless. And although she had the, the body of a, of a girl younger than 10, uh, she was uh, 200 years old, and she had gone restless and gone to something called the Amber Temple, and taken a gift, <laughs> a gift from a dark power there, um, and uh, basically defected and joined the Carrion King to become the princess of Sketh uh, where she utilized her newly gained dark uh, flesh-shaping powers to help whatever the Carrion King was doing. So obviously he's very hopeless, um, and you go out the next day and, and manage to conquer your emotions and really realize just how much of a negative uh, energy connection there is to this place, how deeply connected to the shadow fell, encountering all sorts of undead and malevolent shadow creatures. Um, you eventually were able to fully replenish the stock. He created a brew, and uh, the, the child was awakened. Uh, the child uh, revealed her, her name to be Valeska, a ten-year-old uh, um, Vistani child from uh, outs from from uh, several hundred miles of to the south. And um, she said that she had heard howling, and she had then made her way into the woods, away from her camp, when they were almost returned to their uh, their home, and suddenly had woke up there. Um, and that was all you all you knew. Uh, you had a, a feast to celebrate her and, and make her feel uh, special and at home. And then that evening, you all settled down after like bleeding out or something, and it was it was, it was goofy. Uh, shooting each other. Sounds what? <laughs> yeah, we basically tried to summon <laughs> bread. You summoned bread. You shot each other with crossbow bolts. <laughs> you bled oh, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, in the middle of the night, you were ambushed by burrowing undead uh, sp- uh, spider beetle monstrosities and worms who uh, were trying to uh, in- encase Iris in webbing and drag her into their burrows. Not on my watch. You managed to uh, smite them. Um, however, uh, Escher had... Re- and then as you made your way to the foyer and the, the whole castle was under attack, and uh, Escher had returning mm-hmm. from the dungeon... Um, with uh, blood running down his chin, fully rejuvenated, uh, finished off the rest of the attackers. And when you made your way to the child's bedroom, you found that she was gone in a smooth, plugged up, uh, burrowing hole uh, in its place. Does that all make sense? Did I miss anything? Any other I questions? I don't think you oh, that's it. Where are we? So, I will set the scene. Uh... Blood, Bread, and Beetles. That's the name of the episode now. <laughs> Blood, <laughs> That's the name of my new movie. <laughs> it's perfect. Beetles are really annoying. <laughs> you 
are standing in the bedroom, the former bedroom of Ravenovia von Zarovich. And you see now that where the child Leska has been, there is just an empty bed and a sealed up hole, a, a smooth patch on the floor. As the sounds of the battle with the gargoyles finally finishing off the rest of the undead abominations that had crawled and burrowed through um, uh, the stone walls and floors of this castle uh, subsiding. However, you hear the loud booming of thunder all around you that shakes the castle uh, as it feels like a storm is, is roiling and gathering over top the castle directly. What do you all do? You see the Escher. Uh, the, you're seeing his this grayish skin with with thick, uh, dark veins and a hollow eyes. His his skin seems pristine. His hair is glistening. He has blood uh, running down his chin, and 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 all. And, and there's really only a single line of putrid uh, ichor from the remains of the spider creatures that he bisected with his uh, rapier uh, on his cheek as he just stares at the hole. And um, he looks down and he seems to be absolutely brimming with rage. As you see a, a, a level of energy and vitality that you have not experienced since arriving at Castle <clears throat> Remoria. What do you all do? Is the siege still happening? It sounds like the... It sounds like the... Uh, that there is still some, some minor conflict throughout the... Uh, castle, and but it sounds like the gargoyles, the, uh, the stone watchers, um, ha- are, are getting it under control. Is it just me, or does he look like? Uh, I don't know. He looks a little different. The child is gone. <laughs> Pressure, Where I, did she go? Well, yeah, that too. But I mean, look at him. Major, uh, you know this place way better than, uh, than, than we do. Certainly, it's your home. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, they can't have gotten far. Uh, where, 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 where could they get? Can we head them off? Is there a way? Well, what, what is the easiest way for burrowing animals to get into the into the into the, into the castle? We, we have to we have to cut them off. We have to save the child. Are we in a tower? You are in a uh, a tower uh, on on a large uh, cliff face. On a castle on a large cliff okay. face. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. He looks and he, uh, he is, he's, he's fuming with rage and he says, if only I had had her power to just slip through the floors. Well, if only you'd allowed us to keep the child with us like we had recommended. Not again. Yes, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, you hear the booming of thunder again. As you see now, uh, you hear uh, the, the pitter-pattering of, of heavy rainfall as the sky begins to open up. As you actually see the clouds start to shape and through the window, you see the flash of lightning. Not only is it arced down to the, uh, to, the, to the valley, but also it arcs all across. You actually see as the clouds start to roil and take uh, strange shapes in the sky. It booms out in thunder. I mean, is, is that whole storm thing. Is it natural? Is it normally what storms look like? Is it you? Is it because you're sad? He... He... Uh, he's, he's trembling with, uh, with anger as he, he narrows his eyes and says No, it is him. As he turns and pushes past you. Then... And he pushes past you as he uh, begins to descend. He, he uh, steps over um, the the, uh, the ruins of a gargoyle. It seems to have been crumbled into four pieces uh, and is covered in, and in some disgusting webbing. As he just walks, he pushes past you and he disappears uh, down the staircase. <laughs> I really wish you'd be a little bit more vocal and communicative with us. I, I know that we were going to go meet the other count, but does that, does that need to wait? I, we need to go after this kid. I, we have to help the other children as well. There could be many of them. 
Maybe this is our chance to just strike into the heart. Well, I agree that, I mean, if they need a raven child for some reason, and she ends up being the raven child, it's probably bad that they have her now. Uh, should we go after, um, excuse me, should, uh, how can we help? Or do we just like wait here and just stand around? You, come on, Toa, come after him. I'm coming with you. <laughs> and I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna try here. to push Toa towards where everything where, is gone. Where uh, he went. You call out and ask that, and you all turn and you look, and you just see Buddhist looking up at you. Oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm really bad in stressful situations. I'm sorry. As uh, he waits for you all to pass, as you, uh, as you continue, as you follow after Escher. And you see as he turns and he goes through a door uh, towards a central tower that you hadn't been in before. As he begins to uh, ascend a spiraling staircase up as the um, as the uh, entire castle shakes from the, uh, from the thunder. And then as a flash of lightning uh, illuminates the sky out the window, you hear a booming voice radiating all around you and says and it says <laughs> Count Kreskov I have my prize as you it booms and shakes out with the thunder with the with the, with the, the furious force of thunder as uh, he makes his way out to the very top of this tower and flings the door open and rain is pelting down and the wind is howling as he uh, takes his steps right out and you follow him and you see now as there's a massive gathering storm but it's entirely centralized over Castle Remornia, as you see far ahead out into the valley, the, the sky seems to be clear. As you then look up and see what Escher is looking at, and you see now that the clouds have formed and taken shape, and you see ahead. It's naked and entirely bald, fleshy, and bloated in certain parts. A long, extending black beak that's curved with jagged teeth from within. Small, beady, malevolent eyes, all formed out of the roiling clouds. As it, the, the flesh from the beak uh, curves up into these strange-looking cheeks uh, as this vulture-like the head of this vulture-like entity stares down with this wicked glee as, as, as it looks onto the castle. And you see now Escher in his, um, uh, his clothing now is whipping in the wind as his hair is following suit, completely drenched now, as the rain drenches all of you. As you hear the, the, the voice boom out again, and it says, <laughs> Count Kreskov, now you see the price of your betrayal. <laughs> you see that me destroying your castle is not at all as delicious as stealing your daughter. Did you like her new creations? As, as you see the, the mouth opening up, as, as it doesn't, the eyes don't seem to be uh, locking in on any individual creature, uh, especially not Escher, as it just seems to loom over the entire um, castle. And, and Escher looks and he screams up his life. Is this what you want, Vorok? Is this... What are you doing, Carrion King? You have no idea what you began tonight! As it booms and echoes throughout the, uh, throughout the storm and, and almost uh, illuminated or uh, uh, increased by a magic of his own, not drowned out by the wind. And the, the, the figure in the clouds does not seem to be able to hear as it does not uh, respond. 
we now have the final piece to our plan. Vengeance will be mine. It's finally finished for you, Count Kreskoff, and now my vengeance. As I peer through the mist and through the sand, and your counterpart will be getting his come up as soon enough. <laughs> and then you will be carrying more than you already are. They will be carrying Stephanie. Striga all will be carrying. Your daughter says she hopes you can see reason <laughs> and join us. The gates of Castle Bloomvale are open and waiting, Count Greskov. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> as he croaks out as it booms, and the in a single crash of lightning and thunder, the clouds lose their form and begin to uh, to shift back into storm clouds as the rain falls. And Escher stops for a moment and he turns to all of you and he says I've changed my mind I'm going to remove his head myself I mean, well that's something we could probably help you with that's yeah. sort of what we're kind of here doing and you heard that she's alive she's okay we can go get her at this gloomy place that's right any other plans that we had, I mean, it sounds like the other Count might be in trouble, and we can deal with that too, but we have to worry about the children first. If those creatures are, are underground, I have no idea where I've... I've, I've, I've scoured these, these mountains and this valley for any caverns, and beyond the spider burrow and the tombs that, that I took you to... The, I'm not aware of any. I mean, is there any way that we can just plan to strike quickly before they have any time to mount any kind of a defense, and then we'll find them when they pop up? Boy. Boy. We, we have to tell Alexei. He has an army. He has crusaders. We it certainly sounds helpful. I... I we have to go. I have to go back. Well, we, we can go with you. Is there a fast way to get there, or do we have to walk again? Do you think I travel by ground? Well, I meant really for us. Let's see that for the rain. As he turns and uh, uh, completely drenched as the, the rain starts to dissipate, as he uh, storms his way back through the door into the tallest tower of this place and slams the door behind him. We'll follow uh, him. No, wait. Don't leave us out here. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> Somebody in chat mentioned the Skeksis, and I am triggered. Yeah. Okay? And he I does am, not like the Skeksis. I am going to rain unholy or holy fire and purge all of them. The Skeksis kind of make fire. me so mad. Oh. Por que no los dos? <laughs> Yes, holy and unholy fire. <laughs> I will purge them from existence. The Skeksis make me so mad. Um, as he leads you all to the, uh, the foyer, the foyer of, the, uh, of the castle, as uh, as the fireplace uh, immediately roars up, and you see that Brutus is uh, is there tending to it. As he as Escher stands by it, and his eyes are darting back and forth. He says, I can't believe it. I thought I was safe, and all it took was burrowing. Insects. And rapids. Don't, uh, don't blame yourself. I mean, uh, presumably this was your daughter's doing. She would have known the castle, and, and it's, it's, it's vulnerability in that way. How do they know she was here? It doesn't make any sense. There haven't been any vultures here. And... Weeks. Oh, that's a good point. And maybe do they have some kind of spell to spy on you? 
Would you be able to see through that? He's gaining in power every month. I no longer know what power he has access to. Maybe when they put her in the state that she that we found her in, they, they'd also, you know, found some some way to scry on her. Who, who knows what they saw while while they were able to do that? But why this child? Well, I think that's if they're looking for the Raven Child, whatever that means. Maybe they somehow know that this is the real deal, and all you know, the, they could somehow tell, given that they had so many sort of. Uh, uh, false guesses so far? He bites his lip and his eyes are staring into the flames as if searching for some kind of answer. And he he turns back to you and says They are attempting to go through the mists. There are far darker powers than I even anticipated. Like the, the mist of, of sort of the misty land? Or is there some kind of other mist that I don't know about? Well, you saw just a taste of the shadow fell, but there's parts of it. Lost souls, choking mists, dark powers within, far stronger than the banshees and hounds that we encountered. That is where Vorok's new powers are coming from. Whatever unholy alliance he has made, he's planning on making good of on his end of the bargain, no doubt. Iris, why would they want you? How am I supposed to know? I don't even know if they were. Did they look familiar at all? Did, uh, have you seen anything like that from where you're from? They look like bugs. Well, I mean, like they were really big bugs. And they were kind of like dead, but not really dead. I live in a palace. I don't normally keep very large, mostly dead bugs around the palace. I guess that's fair. It's kind of like match your vibe, you know what I mean? I don't know. No, I don't know what you mean. It seems quite rude. I don't know. I don't have any moss eaten holes on my robe. I'm like desperately trying to make eye contact. Like, no. Oh, um, I mean, no, I mean just, you know, that they were going after you. So, like, uh, you know, some kind of connection. Uh, in, in, anyway. Yeah, she's very desirable. Who wouldn't go after her? <clears throat> oh, oh, that's right. Maybe maybe she wasn't being singled out. They just went for her first because they're like, wow, she's very desirable. When, um, Fesher said Unholy Alliance, uh, I think back again to the shape of the face in the clouds and that key. Yeah. Does the beak strike uh, the resemblance to the creature that I met while I was, uh, let's say, traveling between the uh, uh, I would say no. Okay. I would say yeah, I that uh, this this looked like um, a strange alien vulture creature with uh, with this uh, strange uh, teeth, and, and it, it looked just very unhealthy. Meanwhile. Uh, the, the creature that you had mentioned was um, absolutely statuesque and, and, and perfect, uh, okay. and was not vulture-like. Uh, it was more of a, a more raptor-like than carrion. Very good. Hmm. Hmm. As uh, Asher turns to Yuto and says, I don't, there's no way that she would have any way of recognizing if those were the creations of my little bat. So she just can make those, like, just... I just put them together and build them? She can put together whatever she can imagine. With her flesh crafting powers granted by that temple. I would I recognize her unique signature. But 
that that is not for us to bother with. They have the girl, they're underground. They have no way of sipping through the walls and floors of my own castle. What kind of vampire count am I? But we we can perhaps warn Alexei. Perhaps rally him to our cause. Find the mother of the child. She said that she had a mother, right? What does the girls do? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think she has a mother um, outside of some kind of town or something. In like a camp, maybe? Why would we want to do that? We don't have her back yet. We could, I mean, we could see why she might be so special. Get some information. It certainly doesn't hurt. I just feel like that's kind of pouring salt in the wound. Like, oh, they took your kid and like, we can't get it back really. Maybe we'll get it back. That's Please drag up all the feelings and then be very sad when she's dead. It's what? kind of cruel. We're going to get her back. I don't disagree with you, Faith. Yes, we rescued your daughter, and then we lost her. By the way, what can you tell us? Well, maybe we don't tell her that we rescued her. Maybe we can say, hey, we can, we're can. we really close to rescuing your daughter, maybe. And if you tell us everything you know about her, why she might be special, maybe some kind of special powers that she had when she was young, or anything else unusual about her, it might help us find her. Or at least understand why they, 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 they need her. Right? I mean, it might be kind of... Unpleasant, but only if it doesn't take much of a detour to get there and find out those answers. I, we, we're on a we're on a clock now. We're on a clock. I guess I remember. We're on a sand timer now. <laughs> Do we know our glass. sundial? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? An hourglass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, like sand through the hourglass. These are the days of our lives. <laughs> 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 I, I don't really know what Caprice is doing, but I do agree with him. We, we are yeah. short on time. This song sounds very apropos. Okay, I mean, it's nice. I, I is agree. that you actually playing your violin or just mimicking? Oh, well, I'm playing my okay. violin. Um, <laughs> and yes, I watched Shades of Life as a couple of lives when I was a kid. Fucking Stefano. Get out of here. Bitch. Fucking What the hell? Come on, Um. Well, I think either way, we need to find how to travel. So, I mean, if you can travel faster than we can, maybe you just tell us how to get there and we'll meet you in a few days or weeks. Don't we have a teleportation or something? Yeah, we got something like that. I'm looking back here, trying to recall. Is, is there any one to Zentra, one to the East Guard and Austin Guard. Yeah, I don't think we have any into Scatrinil. Uh, do we miss Thank You Blueberry Dogs? Yeah, too. Thank you so much Very for the follow. Oh, follow. Oh, follow. Oh, yes. I love uh, both those things. We appreciate you. Blueberries and dogs. Blueberry hot dogs. And the number two. I don't think about the number two as much. And <laughs> but I do like blueberries and dogs. <laughs> um, you see as, as, uh, Asher, as the fire uh, uh, flickers and, and roars in the fireplace, illuminating um, the count that uh, his youth <clears throat> has returned and there is where there had been a weary defeat before there is a resolution and uh, an intelligence as his eyes dart back and forth as and as if he's piecing something together and he he takes a, uh, a breath and he turns to all of you and says all look terrible and you need some rest. Of course you're not going to walk. We're going to all fly together. I need to prepare your mount. Give me until morning. We'll leave first thing. All right, fair enough. I, I hope the mounts are nightmare horses. Do you think I have any more of Persephone's lying around? I don't know your life. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm dressed that you think that. <laughs> I'll play. I don't know you're playing. <laughs> I don't know you, man. We just met. <laughs> Damn elevators and shit. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I can know. definitely use a rest, but that's for certain. 
it feels weird. Uh, well, it's, it's the middle of the night, right? Yes. And we didn't finish a long rest. Yes, correct. Uh, I guess we could try to get some sleep. Uh, is there anything we can do to help you prepare our mounts, or should we just go to bed? Go to bed, and you're going to need all your strength to fly and make sure your mounts do not kill you. Oh, all, all right. We'll, we'll make the journey in two days. By, by sky. I just, it'll be a long night in my laboratory. If you need something, Brutus should be able to provide it. Do not come and disturb me. All right, understood. Um, I guess that's that. All right, well, um, good night, uh, good good luck, and, and we'll just be, you know, in our rooms. Do you have a parcheesi? If Brutus knows what that is, he'll fetch it for you. <laughs> As, uh, he, gl- <laughs> he glides uh, off uh, in the direction of where you know his alchemy lab to be. Is that like a cheese sandwich? Brutus. Uh, Brutus, Brutus, who's just been sitting there watching, like, trying to calm down, uh, his tail flicking back and forth. Uh, he immediately snaps to attention. Like, oh, uh, yes, Miss, what you need? Do you have Pachisi? <clears throat> oh, could you describe it using the sentence, please? <laughs> Do you have Pachisi? Um, what is Pachisi? Um, it is a game. Do you have Moncola? Oh, or, or do you have uh, games? Uh, just, uh, just give me, I'll just bring all of them, and you can see if one's part cheesy or or, okay. or color. And I'll, I'll be, I'll be right back. Bring a bunch of knives too. Yeah, all fine. Uh, okay, uh, games, knives, and more. Not uh, necessarily in that order. Um, I think that covers all of my needs. Uh, some cheese, maybe, given the the, the subject matter. And cheese. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll bring you all that, and I'm gonna go clean up the dungeon, and uh, uh, and then uh, oh, you hold it down uh, toward the dungeon area. After I'll bring everything back if you need anything. Goodbye. And he uh, shuffles, shuffles off. Well, let's make our way back to our room then. Um. All right. I think we'll walk back to the room. You're in your room, room. and it is an absolute fucking disaster. <laughs> there is soggy bread. There's blood. There is webbing. There is a bunch. The corpses of a bunch of undead uh, spider, uh, beetle, and worm abominations uh, strewn about. I just like when we get up to the room. I'm just like, <sighs> and I just begin waving my hand and like trying to press to digitate things and like clean things up as I move around the room. And, like, yeah, you and do that's that. So cool. You like, you're, you're moving things around the best that you can. You're piling up like all the pieces of, of, of body. Just like pushing stuff. It's all charred from the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like scooping out the window the best I can. You know, just like trying to clean it up. Why don't we sleep over there instead? My point because the other we were there's, sort of on one side. Half, right? Yeah, you see, there's a sealed out hole, but there are a couple beds that do, that have not been cut. The other half of the room is completely fucked. Maybe we just sleep over there for the rest of the night. Yeah, I, I suppose that's fine. I just want to clean this up a little bit. Uh, we should definitely take watch and maybe you you know set a few alarms and sure and. We'll see if we make it to the morning. I go about that ritually casting alarm after I've cleaned up a little. Uh, Bruce arrives uh, with wine and knives. Uh, a, a large stack of these wooden, long wooden boxes. Some are, are square shaped, uh, brightly colored and painted, uh, filled with all sorts of, of, of pieces. And uh, he, he lays them all down and uh, brings out a plate of, of, of cheese and, and some wine. And there's actually a few uh, crackers and biscuits and things that he's added. Uh, and he said, okay, uh, this is all you need. Uh, like I said, I'll be in the dungeon uh, scrubbing out. Uh, do you need me to clean this up? I sh- oh, no, I need to clean the dungeon up first. Uh, or do you need, would you like me to take care of this? The dungeon can go back. Uh, yeah, yes, of course, sir. Uh, what, 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 why is the dungeon so messy? Oh, just because he ate that guy? We don't have a cash no more. <laughs> Oh, that's sort of what I kind of... He, he checked out. He, he, if, you, if you know what I'm saying, he checked out. Like he... Like, like a lot of noise, like he checked out. <laughs> so he's like, he's... he's... Like, oh, he, no, like, like he's... He, he, 
he checked out. <laughs> you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, sort of like, <sighs> oh, I'm dead. Have you used uh, Speak With Dead in this campaign? <laughs> yeah. Is he, uh, is he intact? Well, uh, he, he should, it, if, if blood is required to be intact, no. <laughs> <laughs> if blood is not required to be intact, then yes. But minus the blood, he's whole. So he just kind of like... <laughs> he, he kind of looks like an empty freezer. <laughs> I'm so glad he said it. Did you say my name? <laughs> he doesn't say that. <laughs> Why do you care? Well, do you remember that one time, uh, Iris, uh, you know, with the, uh, hey, I'm dead, but I, I can answer your questions and all, and my more whatnot? It was like yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. What's, What's it? happened? <laughs> We've been through a lot, Tor, all right? Now. Sometimes I do know. <laughs> It's been like, oh, it's been over half a week. Oh, it has? Yeah. Okay. Do we think there's any value in uh, questioning our uh, intact guest who checked out? That's what? Just some dirty dungeon guy. Who cares? He, he could tell us about uh, being him and 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 <laughs> what what that's like. That, that's like intel that we might be able to use as we infiltrate the culture that he represents. Maybe we can understand why his leader has, has that horrible beak thing. Do we know where he comes from? We know he comes from, probably. He probably, probably works for the for the Carrion King. I mean, it's, what it's did a Ashman guess. say where he came from? Just that he had someone locked in the dungeon. Well, he said that he was a vulture rider that he had captured. Oh. I think I'll oh. check my memory banks and confirm with the dungeon I'd master. Sell that. That's not right. <laughs> oh well. I mean, That's the first what I question we ask him is like, what's your profession? He's like, I make barrels and we can just call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to turn down information. Uh, you know, I think that's wise. We gather what we can. That would make him a Cooper. I'm sorry. What? I think Mercer. Is it a Mercer? Mercer. Oh, it was a Cooper, like wagon wheels? Yeah. Ah, uh, you want me I'm to clean learning. up the beetles first? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think we'll, spiders. We're passing on the guest uh, interaction. That's fine. That's fine. I'll just sit over here. If you, I, I mean, I, I think you know the, the master said you could could even go basically wherever you want as long as you don't disturb him into the little 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 tree. Well, were, were there any were there any holes in the dungeon? Like, like that they got through, maybe? I mean, it, it's... They had to have gone somewhere. We can see where they went down in the floor. So where did they come out of the floor? So, I mean, it's sort of if it's in the bottom of the castle, it might be a good place to at least check out to see if we can maybe plug up a... Oh, do you think you're so still down there? I've been checked! Um... Yeah, well, maybe you should have checked. Maybe you should go first. <laughs> um... Well, I, I, I could certainly go down. I, I, we probably, I don't know. I mean, you, can, you guys can come with me if you want. I'm, I'm doing your voice now. Oh, no. <laughs> Tor, what's happening oh, to you? I am only being powered now. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> governor. Oh, governor. Um, I, I mean, you guys could, could come come with me. I mean, well, if you want to. I'm not going to go down there by yourself. Eh? If that's what you want to do, well, then I'll go with you. I mean, just to kind of take a look around, and if you, you know, if you want to come, Iris, you could ask him questions. But I mean, I don't know what more he would say, or they, or whatever. It's like four o'clock in the morning. Yes, I'm just very full of adrenaline. I can't imagine sleeping right now. That's why I asked for Parchinzi. Oh. We well, thought we could all get into our jammies and play a game or two. Like We're going to be party. here for two days, which seems irrationally long. Things are. What is the what is the hip cool term? Going down in the other areas of Strigoff. Wait, we're going to be in this castle for two days? Yes, he said we'd leave in two days. No, he said the journey would take two days. No. And we'd leave in the morning, I think. Did you? I mean, I'm not sure. He said- if he's, if we're leaving in the morning, I need to get some I sleep. I two days, too. Which means that yeah. as long as Brutus just leave the body, you can clean up around Brutus, the Brutus, could you bring the body to our room? Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> And I'll go with you. Uh, I'll, I'll carry the body go bag. Fetch. I'll go check it no, out. No, no, you are a guest now. You should. You should. Oh, oh, good. 
Go check it out, Michelle. Also, this is not enough knives. <laughs> More knives. <laughs> oh, I'm so knives. sorry. Please forgive or, me. In case we have Monopoly. I, I, I thought that 14 would be enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Move along. <laughs> you immediately I, move I along. reach down. If you're concerned, let me assist you. And I put my hand on him and I cast Anti-Life Shell on him. And what? this beautiful what golden hell? shimmering barrier Jeez. surrounds him. Now, nothing can enter the barrier that you don't want it to. Oh, how does it work? Does it just, it just happen, or do I gotta, like, focus no, on it, something? it just happens. Okay. Does that mean I'm... So because he's dead, you'll be able to pick up his corpse and carry it up there. But if any of those creatures still exist, they will not be able to touch you. Okay, I'll feel like I'm... I can You're do protected. it. Yes! Yes, I feel very protected and not scared anymore. Good. Okay. Okay, so we need uh, uh, one body and knobs. Okay, and he uh, he so he scampers off and he jumps down as he continue, as he uh, makes his way. Basically, he's like a, a bouncing. Have you ever played Monkey Ball? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Super Monkey Ball. He trips. He he's he's he he the Super Simian Sphere in World. Yeah, of exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have we been to the dungeon? No. No. I don't think so. Would it be a place that would be a, a, a place that's known un, that's unfamiliar to me, but obvious? Yes. Okay. As in, like, there will obviously be a dungeon, you know where the door I is. I would know roughly where yes. I could place maybe a sensor, yeah. roughly. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just stubbed my finger. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it just really hurt. Uh, you all, uh, you, you, are, you watch uh, Brutus shuffle off. And uh, you are all in, in, in your room waiting mm-hmm. for him to, to drag up corpse. I'm casting <laughs> alarm and trying to clean up the room and like I'm still doing my thing. Okay. Beatrice is f- fluttering around. It doesn't take long when you hear like, <laughs> What is that? <laughs> you can't guess? Do you want me to guess? Yes. Yeah. I really would like for you to guess. Please. I don't think I can say it in mixed company. It's not really mixed company. I mean, we've been together for like a year at this point. I don't think that's what that means. <laughs> I'm, do you know what an ocelot is? <laughs> I have the glue. <laughs> <laughs> With their little hands? <laughs> They're kind of like sloth creatures, right? <laughs> God damn it! You basically hear grunting and just the th- and I'm just gonna stare intently at the door. <laughs> it's like twenty minutes. <laughs> I'm playing a game of Parcheesi. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear, when you hear oh, someone play right outside the door, and then it, it opens. And then you see Brutus, and there is uh, the corpse of a Shadar Kai, a Dusk Elf, uh, very hollow and sunken. Uh, uh, this uh, slightly purplish gray, gray skin as uh, you see uh, Bruce grab this uh, elf by the scruff and sort of <laughs> you hear <laughs> as something is, is dragging along the stone as he drags the body and drops it. Ah! Ah! Okay! Uh, here! Oh! 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 And you see that um, that uh, tucked under his uh, arm <laughs> like he lets his arm go, and uh, four more knives clatter to the floor. <laughs> oh, <this is> perfect, <laughs> thank you. Uh, oh, do you need anything else before bed? <sighs> no, I think we're good. And you should get some rest as well. I mean, yeah, you sleep. You have him just throw it out, throw him out the window, and one of the blockheads will take care of it. When I left Galtica, I did not appreciate how comfortable I would become around dead bodies. But sure, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I mean, this is just kind of life and trigger. <laughs> well, sleep tight. 
don't let the bit. Oh, well, I guess we shouldn't joke about bikes boarding us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> and uh, he closes the door behind him. So, what do we want to do with this thing? I have no idea. Tomorrow, I thought we might do the, the questiony questiony thing. I mean, if, unless you got juice enough right now, I, I don't know. So I, I could question him now. Do you know the questions you'd like to ask him? Who are you? Uh, what can you tell us about the Carrion game? Uh, maybe, maybe it's uh, a little late and I might be a little delirious as I'm still like casting spells and walking around. But yeah, I'm going to be honest, I'd really like to see Caprice just try to take this one on himself. <laughs> All right, and I can't speak with it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you take on the, the bower of Anubis, and a shimmering washes over the body, and you see just the um, it, it's the sunken in. It, it looks very uh, the lips are incredibly parched. Uh, it looks like <laughs> this um, this elf was quite malnourished before. Uh, Meeting its end, you can see now there are two uh, there are two uh, holes on its neck, and it's it's a male uh, Shadar Kai, and there's two no, uh, holes on his neck. Uh, then there's a tiny little trickle of blood, but there's really nothing left. And as you cast the magic iris, you just see the lips, and then you are able to do whatever you do. We have about five minutes, so we get quick. Oh, uh, uh, only five minutes. Buddy, how's it going? <laughs> Hold on. It's one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that the second one. <laughs> 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 No, that was for the second question. Hey, buddy, how's it going? I know. I'm, I, I know the game now. <laughs> uh, uh, what can you tell us about your uh, living life? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> for real? <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> yes. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Um. Okay. Uh, I think I've got uh, one or two more. Um. Uh, e- 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 uh, uh, <laughs> you. What? I've never seen him so tongue-tied. I yes. Uh, what on earth uh, was he uh, planning to do? As as I'm I'm casting spells and I'm trying to clean up the room, I just look and I go, oh, "Who thinks that it's worth summoning all of this bread?" <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, what is the best way to get into the Carrion King's castle? <laughs> <laughs> As you say, ooh. <laughs> the mouth opens and it says, bread. <laughs> and then the body completely stills. <laughs> he continues to stare at it eagerly for the end of his question. <laughs> And you look as the body is its just a corpse and where the mouth has been moving. Uh, it is... Did you find anything good, Caprice? That seems like it was a valuable use of my divine energy. Now I would like to go to bed. Please, throw the body out the window, Caprice. My pleasure. (laughs) What a waste of time. <laughs> it's Max into a gargoyle on the way down. It's like it one of the guys off. that falls off the back of the Titanic. The Thank you. Yeah, I was literally going to say that. That <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> oh, the oh, 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 that's exactly what it looks like. It was a corpse. It's a ragdoll effect. And I was like, oh, shit. All right, well, I, I'm tired. I'm out. Well, I, that's it. He's just not going to tell. I guess it didn't go well. 
I don't know. Did it not work? All right. Well, I'm going to sleep as well. All right. I'll take first watch. I'll wake somebody up when I'm done. Not me. Good night. Or me. Good night. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and once everybody's asleep, I, I go back to the Parcheesi board and I just... And then I move <laughs> one piece, and I'm like, okay. Well, then I roll, and I'll move the other piece, and I'll just play Parcheesi with myself. <laughs> That's the saddest thing I've ever <laughs> For two hours. That's even more sad than us throwing that body out. <laughs> uh, you do that, and you're able to get to bed, and you all enjoy long Aha! rest. Thank goodness. We will rest. <laughs> As um, the Parcheesi doesn't even pass the time quite as, as much as you would hope. So it actually makes it go by slower. Oh. Uh, Peace. <laughs> and you all enjoy a long rest. You awake to what can be, you know, what you can call a morning in Skefternil. The sky is incredibly cloudy. Uh, it's a gl- another gloomy day. And you'll have uh, some time in the morning. I'm gonna immediately call for uh, oh, Brigadoon or whatever his name. <laughs> <laughs> the major domo. <laughs> oh, Brigadoon! Brigadoon, where <laughs> are you? Brutus. This morning, Brigadoon. Um, and uh, uh, Brutus uh, arrives not too long after you awake. Uh, and he's carrying a large tray of, uh, of, of, of cooked meat glistening in fat and uh, cups of, of, of milk and, and, and some, and some uh, light pastries as he carries it. Oh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's ready for a travel day. Uh, thanks for just giving rid of that body. I hope it was uh, useful and entertaining. Hopefully you enjoyed the knives. I see that uh, you got some of the buttons pushed in the side of the room. I'll handle that. Uh, <laughs> after you all leave, here you go. Here's your breakfast if you need anything else. Uh, the I master do. wants to see you in the stone carving room. Oh, yes? Do you have a... Gem encrusted bowl with at least one thousand gold pieces, which I could destroy at my leisure. Oh, a gem encrusted bowl with exactly one thousand gold pieces. <laughs> yes, that I could destroy at my leisure. Uh, well, what would determine the worth of, of, of a, a gem encrusted bowl? The owner of the bowl. Oh, uh, I can check. I like how Nikki just solved that problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least until her the spell owner. fizzles. We'll see. Oh! <laughs> well, technically it would be the buyer. Oh! And if I would be willing to buy it for a thousand gold, then that determines its value. It's funny you mention that, Iris. <laughs> I have a drawing of a spider that I didn't hear that I value at a thousand gold pieces. <laughs> Does that make it worth it? As the buyer, no. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> oh, I check. It looks like the dead spider on the windowsill you drew at the night before. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, well, uh, can you procure me as well? I've got to look around the castle and see if uh, see if we got any of those. Well, with, I'm going to have that. to let Esher know that you don't think he owns any valuables. I just don't know if it's a bowl. He's really he's more of a plate guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he's got goblets and he's got plates. And, and, I'm certainly and, no expert, but I imagine that that would probably work. He's right? got cups. Uh, uh, Is there a room full of little spoons somewhere? Yeah, there's spoons. I mean, there's some bowls, sure, but I mean, gem encrusted. <laughs> I mean, you know, encrusted, very specific. <laughs> Agree. Maybe just do the best you can, or bring a few things, and we'll pull. Oh, I mean, he's got some gilded bowls. I know that, but it's more of like a nice powdered filigree. Well, and what's the definition of encrusted? Like, if there was one gem, would that technically classify as encrusted? Oh, yes, does it need more than one gem? So, if there's only one, is that enough? No, I think yes, one is perfect. Yes. One no, is no, good. I'd, wouldn't encrusted kind of mean like all all around it? No. Oh, so the definition of encrusted is is one. It or more at one, and then it works its way up. Yes. Oh well. Good luck, Prudus. It doesn't say. <laughs> it does not say gems encrusted. It says gems <gasps> in like at least one. Ooh. Well, would gems encrusted be grammatically well, correct, given the hyphen? Well, now we're getting into the conversation of the different 
the difference is in <laughs> just find me the tadpole. <laughs> Ah, okay, I will. I will check uh, uh, the define uh, define porcelain and and whatever else bowls I can find. You got this, buddy. You're really good at what you do. I inspire. Oh, uh, I inspire. Did, would, it, would a basin, like a shallow basin, would that count? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay. Do you happen to have a set of divinatory tools, such as bones, ivory sticks, cards, teeth, or carved runes with 100 gold pieces, and an object from the location I would wish to find? <laughs> <laughs> Just I'll find the bowl! That too. <laughs> <laughs> this one would not need to be destroyed. I'll, I'll see if we got any in the bag. And just in, ca- <laughs> and just in case, I could use a bit of uh, fleece. I could use uh, two lodestones. I could use uh, tiny tarts and a feather that is waved in the air. I could use a uh, snake's tongue uh, or a bit and a bit of honeycomb and a drop of sweet oil, a chip of mica, fur from a feather or beast, uh, a drop of molasses. Do the golden reliquary worth at least 500 gold pieces. That's a bit of a lot. A reliquary. What? what is a that? reliquary? I'm not sure how to uh, I, I think it just means like a valuable object, almost like a relic. It's a like a, it's a thing. Isn't yeah. a reliquary a sort of like an urn, like yeah. a, to yes. hold to hold a focus is worth or... at least 1,000 gold pieces, such as a crystal ball, a silver <laughs> mirror, or a font filled with holy oil, never mind. What's oh. the definition of a focus? I mean, that's pretty general. I mean, really anything well, could be a focus. Uh, again, I, I think it has to I'll start with the bowl, the <laughs> <mind. laughs> He's inspired, I'm <laughs> You only have ten minutes. Oh, I'm gonna get <laughs> He's he's pretty quick, Toa. It'll be all right. All right. Well, let's hope he can use his his inspiring inspiration to increase the roll. What's what's the the, the D for? Uh, uh, give me. Uh, you get an additional one D ten. Oh, D ten. Okay, roll the D eight. Okay, I'm gonna roll an investigation check. Okay. I start walking to the stone carving room. <laughs> With all my things. <laughs> I walk to his collectibles area with the small spoons, one side of the room with Hard, hard Rock Cafe memorabilia. <laughs> He's very excited. I'm really confused. <laughs> oh, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne wore this same outfit on his 1983 tour. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool. He sweat all over this thing. I wonder if they washed it. You think that would increase... Or lower the value, speaking of value. Does anyone remember Planet Hollywood? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, God. I think there's one still right next to the Baltimore Aquarium. <laughs> no, I think that's gone. No, is yeah, it really? Is it gone? Yeah. Well, we'll find out in, uh, when we get back from Gen Con, because that's where the Cody concert is. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I'm on my way. Uh, I leave everybody behind. And uh, Where are you actually going? To the stone carving room. Stone cutting room. You are... Okay, all right. I, I'm joining Tara. I support you in your endeavors. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy a luxurious coffee and breakfast and just put my feet up and... Hang. I'm going to have coffee as well and focus on preparing my spells for the day. So Same I can be scenes. done with the shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Making notes. Making notes. Tara, what do you think the stone cut in moves for? Uh, Tara's not here in this room with us right now. And I also am not in this room with us right now. <laughs> How did I hear that? <laughs> Um, well, I'm not really sure. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit sure. He probably cut stone in the stone cutting room. Yeah, unless why? It's, For what purpose? Well, I mean, like, you know, Brutus is sort of cut out of stone. Those big, like, blockhead guys oh. are sort of kind of cut out of stone. So maybe he, like, cuts all sorts of... Do you think he crafted Brutus? Well, I think, I think he said as much. Uh, so, yes, I'm confident in... I can confirm that he crafted Brutus. I didn't think that he actually carved him. I thought he just kind of like enlivened him. From from what? Like a I don't pile know. of Can't clay? Can you buy them in bulk? <laughs> oh, like from a from a catalog from like a medieval yeah, <laughs> like, like 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 a medieval gifts catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. This would really be Renaissance. Oh, God, God, oh no, it, it would be more Gothic period, wouldn't it? <laughs> Do they have those kinds of catalogues in Street? Well, I, I guess don't it's. Know. Oh well. Um, <clears throat> got the cold. In, anyway, he's probably just carving. Um, you realize you don't know where the. Uh, the yeah, no, I have no clue. So I'm just like wandering around, like. Uh, make an investigation check. Just straight. 
and we'll see how long it takes you. Uh, ten. Ten. Uh, it takes you a while. You and Lofty are always wandering. <laughs> Uh, you, you poke your head into certain rooms, and, and most of them are, are abandoned. And oh, not here. Oh, no, 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 not here. Um. And so, uh, while, uh, what are you all doing while they wander the castle? <laughs> Choosing my spells for the day. I'm, I'm um, uh, obviously putting out uh, as much music notation as I can, just, just writing. Um, Felix and I might enjoy conversation. Uh, maybe we even pull out a board game, uh, see if we can enjoy one of the... And I'm, I'm assuming that brightly colored being that they are, these are board games that are uh, uh, for children. For, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for being... Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah, it's like Candyland and shit. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, Candyland. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dream I feel like we've, we've done this session before. It must be that... Uh, but it's changed a little bit. It's that Moncala effect. <laughs> you want to play Candyland? Well, let me put it another way. You want to play a game where you roll a d6 and try to climb up a ladder from 0 to 100, but some numbers put you down and other numbers take you up, and the first person to get to 100 wins? Sure. Oh. I tried to make that sound as boring and horrible as possible. <laughs> you guys talking about Monopoly? <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about Candyland. Do you want to play? Oh, I don't know Candyland. Yeah, I'm in. Well, can, you get, please, can you explain it to Felix? Oh, yeah. Uh, you roll a d6 and you try to climb up a ladder to, from 0 to 100. Is this a d6? But, but randomly, some numbers take you down and others take you up for no reason. I got a 6. Oh. Uh, you're back down to 2. I, I was on 0. Yes, I know. So you went up to 6 and now you're at uh, 2. Oh. Welcome to Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like anyone. <laughs> uh, as you do that, Brutus comes back, and um, <clears throat> you actually see that it's, there's a gilded bowl that has has some very small, um, like bedazzling in it, and it's it's it's. It's a bowl, it's like basically a plate with slightly raised edges, and in, and <coughs> Brutus comes in and says, Ah, this is the closest I could have. Is this worth, I mean, I'm thinking probably only worth about 200 gold pieces, but uh, here you go. I will give you 1,000 gold pieces for that bowl. Oh, you give me money. What should we just steal from your master? Oh, no! <laughs> is that what I'm doing? Does this bowl belong to you, too? I don't, I don't own anything. I can't believe it. You're trying to charge a guest. I thought you needed to say, I thought you needed to say what the price was of it. Yes, and I'm willing to pay 1,000 gold pieces. Wow. Are you going to give me 1,000 gold pieces? Are you trying to steal? Ah, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I was really hoping you'd get the 1,000 gold pieces and be like, Brutus doesn't need this job anymore. I'm out. Brutus, <laughs> <laughs> out. <laughs> Quit! Yeah. Uh, all right, Iris. I, I don't really know what you're trying to do, but with all of the studies that I've had under the weave and about the way that magic works in our world, I, I gotta be honest. I'm really interested to see how this turns out. Oh, I'm not doing anything with it now. I just wanted it on me in case we need it in the future. What are you plan? If you don't mind me asking, what are you well, planning on doing? I'm with hoping it? that eventually we'll be able to create not bloody bread or bloody uh, uh, water. Water down blood, I guess. But we'll be able to create food and drink within this vessel, and Anubis will embolden us when we need it the most. All right, well, and I... it will be a what is the hip term? Crop shoot. You keep turning me and asking me for hip terms. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yes, you're what they call a millennial, aren't you? <laughs> They're like a million of you or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I was just trying to say is, look at your jacket. You're clearly the coolest out of all. Of us. Yes, you got to that at the Hard Rock Cafe. I mean, there's not a, there's not a yes, single Hard Rock Cafe. It's right here on your lapel. Oh, there's there's nobody I in Striga that dresses anything like you. I mean, well, you're very cool. Nothing is more hip and cool than stealing. Oh well, uh, then uh, uh, yes, whatever you say, absolutely, no problem. Yes, sir. So when that time comes, you let me know because I want to I want to watch this. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, what's worse that could happen? I'll, I'll put it in my pack. I mean, it's just food, right? Right. Complete waste of my <clears throat> divine ability, but we'll see. We'll roll the six-sided die, as it were. Ooh, another six. 
I guess I'm back at zero. Oh, no, you're at eight. That jumps you up to 22. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, I'm feeling lucky today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, it's you for reasons. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the reason. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Don't forget about Evangelist and Chill. In case it's not <laughs> obvious, <laughs> I hate Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Caprice. That was Dick. Or Shoots and Ladders. <laughs> that was very Shoots yeah. yeah. and Ladders is also the exact same is Candyland style. Is Candyland Reskin Shoots well, and Ladders? Well, so Candyland, you actually vibe. draw cards. Uh, yes. And you jump to a color on the card. Ooh. It's meant for even younger children than Shoots and Ladders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like uh, apples to apples. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Well, weirdly enough, there was a game about gathering apples in bundles where you spun a thing and then sometimes oh, the yeah, birds would steal game. the apples. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Not called apples to apples. You know, this is completely and you have like a crazy story. But one of my favorite, well, it was my favorite games because I never played it and I was really sad about it. But there was the Hungry Hungry Hippos game. Yep. <gasps> As a kid, I watched. I watched the uh, the commercials for that all the time, and it was my dream. Every Christmas, I asked Santa for Hungry Hungry Hippos, and I was a bad kid because Santa <laughs> never brought me Hungry Hungry Hippos. Oh, oh. That's fair. I love Hungry Hungry Hippos. <laughs> that, that is the only logical conclusion you can draw sure from that. But I'm pretty sure there were a couple of times of... that Santa was drunk and gave me my older stepsister's presents. Ah, <laughs> that's why. Ah. We are going to a board game convention. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and we're we not are going to find if some fucking hungry, hungry, hungry hippos. It's happening. It's we happening. will be best friends for the it's rest done. of our it's lives. Done. It's That's a four player. Done. We will absolutely. Whenever, die. if I ever get married, you'll be my maid of honor. I can't wait. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Love the and Toa. Love the and Toa. Uh, after you wander the castle, you finally <laughs> find up up on a a high tower. Wait, from hungry, uh, hungry hippos. And you and you. <laughs> <laughs> you actually see a, a red glow from behind the crack door as you uh, you enter it, and you Is open. It? You, you actually feel. I like gently knock and like kind of creak it open. <clears throat> She's me. Um, well, now we can spy on you. As you knock, your uh, huge knuckle pushes the door and <laughs> and it creaks really loudly. <clears throat> Good as morning! You feel uh, the whip of wind as you realize that this uh, is a room that uh, basically uh, has a, a large balcony out into, um, that's fully exposed. And you can see the whole valley sprawling out thousands of feet uh, below you as you enter this large room and there are blocks of stone and marble, all sorts of carving, um, carving oh. tools. And uh, as well as uh, strange alchemical um, tools and devices, and you see uh, that uh, Escher tur- uh, you see Escher, and he is in um, in what looked like riding leathers, uh, and and he, he <laughs> <laughs> uh, as apologies, he's, he's, did I say that out loud? <laughs> yes. Careful, Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> he says. Well, I hope you got a good night's rest. Where are the rest of you? Oh, uh, what, what, oh, uh, what, what do you ask? Are we ready to go? Well, are you, is it just two of, two of you that have No, we were just checking to see how you were doing. I mean, unless we're ready to leave right now, I mean... And yeah, as... there was a little bit of unclarity on when... Unclarity? Lack of clarity on when we're leaving. Uh... Supposed to be, we're supposed to leave at least two hours ago. As you <laughs> enter the room, <laughs> we're still playing candy land. Um, well, about that, I think they may have just started a game of Twilight Imperium, so we may need like seven or eight more hours. <laughs> oh, the play next to allies! We're done! <laughs> what is the Dracula board game? Is it just called Fury of Dracula? Fury of Dracula. Fury of Dracula. 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 <laughs> no, Twilight Imperium for sure. <laughs> uh,. And as you, you enter the room, you see Escher. Uh, you see where the glow, where the glowing <laughs> red light is coming from. At the uh, at the very center of this room are five huge gargoyles uh, that are standing motionless. They all seem to have the same general body shapes. They are uh, humanoid-esque, but shorter back legs and larger uh, front arms that they seem to be uh, standing on all fours. Large bat-like wings from their shoulder blades. Um, 
uh, and uh, tales that 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 uh, have slightly different variations, and you realize that there, uh, each of them, however, has a separate, uh, distinct head, and there seem to be stone saddles that have been carved into them, and behind each one is a large, what looks like a crystalline canister with uh, a shimmering uh, metal filigree that's filled. Uh, each one of these canisters, uh, five in total, uh, is is fastened into the ground uh, and is pulsing with this uh, glowing red alchemical f- uh, fluid. As um, as there are, you now notice there are grooves uh, in the in the floor running from each of these uh, where these canisters are fastened into to uh, all around these uh, strange alchemical symbols all around each of the gargoyles. And um, <clears throat> Escher is, is, as he stands, uh, the, the wind whipping through the space completely exposed to the outside, uh, his hair um, uh, majestically whipping in the wind, uh, and, along with his, uh, his, his coattails, as he is g- wash in this radiating uh, alchemical glow, he looks at you and says, well, we're going to need the rest of you. Oh, well, um... Yeah, go get them to I'll stay here. And keep, uh, <laughs> yeah, there are probably optional through. rules to figure out if you run out of time who wins. So I'll be, I'll be right back. And I start hustling back to the room <laughs> to, to grab them. Um, oh, he's very impressive. Did you make all of them? Oh, yes, I know I am. Can I ride one? <laughs> Which one strikes your fancy? Oh my god. <laughs> and Lofty's dead when we get back. Oh He looks at my you god. and there's a there's a flare in his <laughs> eyes. The the vitality and youth that he he uh that came to, to the count. We didn't uh, even know his name because we didn't even ask the dead guy's name. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's that why came to the so kite, vitality, Britain. The, the vitality uh, <laughs> that had washed him uh, instantly. Uh, as he uh, takes he takes a few steps and he is looming tall. Already. This is a very tall uh, man, vampire, uh, and and his you see that the, the heels of his boots are also uh, giving him a little bit of a boost as well. <laughs> <laughs> as you're standing by the door and he leans forward and he presses it closed. Oh, no. Well, if it's X's and allies, <laughs> they, probably still haven't, they probably still haven't said it off yet. We have at least <laughs> several weeks of passionate lovemaking. <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> Enough time to fall in love, grow tired of each other, and fall in love again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Iris, that's the, uh, the action phase. Uh, we're entering the negotiation phase. So what do I do next? <laughs> uh, you, well, you have to choose whether you're going to play. I got a four on the little... Wait, wait, are we actually one. playing or are we still setting up? I'm confused. Oh, I, I didn't know. I thought we were playing. No, 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 no. This, we, we're we're merging all of the real. board games now. <laughs> we, we're going to play them all at once. In order to determine who wins the combat phase, we're going to play a game of Candyland. I, I, I Every have, single time. I have 20 in, and I, I feel like that's not enough. <laughs> Not enough to games of Candyland. I, I agree, which is why. <laughs> Did I win with a four? Oh, no, you dropped back down to two. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was at thirty nine. Everything leads to two. <laughs> We're going into the sex straight from dinner into the sex scene. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't think there needs to be a sex scene. <laughs> No, we pan to the, to the open window and the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the drape flows from the wind. How, how descriptive do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, the hot coffee cheat code in Grand Theft Auto. Asher, close it. I never played I just uh, that was uh, apparently a thing. I don't know. Maybe it was just like a rumor. Lufty. Or my session. Escher is standing over you as you say that. He looks down and says, I'm taking a long time to get back. This is. I have a very big castle. <laughs> Oh. Would you like to find out? Are you going to give me a 
I really love Loki Banks and Vampire. <laughs> this is Nikki, not Iris. <laughs> I'll give you the VIP package. <laughs> I hope that's not expensive. I don't have that much money. <laughs> I've always had a thing for poor women. <laughs> I have uh, another thing. <laughs> no, don't stop, them, don't stop them, Mike. Yeah, keep going. You're shoveling like mayonnaise. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I have big pots of salad. <laughs> Instead of the meme in the comments with the guy eating popcorn, is Andy eating a salad? Huh? It's yeah. a meat salad. Yeah, it's a big pot of salad. <laughs> no, I'm very full. No, I'm very full. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is horrible. Are you alone? This is terrible. This is what am I doing? <laughs> He looks at you expectantly. Mm. He looks so expectant. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is this Mikey asking what? <laughs> you look so expectant. <laughs> Do you like what you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get laid. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you picked me up from that order. <laughs> Did you get like quick, you see? No, hold on, let me hide my magic card. <laughs> Alright, a little too close to They were broken water. Let's move on. We're playing D&D here, folks. This is serious business. And I'm eating a salad. <laughs> this isn't about me. It's not about me. My focus on the hero here. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what they say. Yeah. To a starving man, anything looks delicious. <laughs> Didn't we just eat? <laughs> we tossed him out the window. Were you not done? <laughs> I have a bit of a ravenous appetite. <clears throat> Maybe a sweet tooth. <laughs> he leans in, and you feel his hot breath mm. on your neck now mm. that he has to lean very, very deep because he is considerably taller than you are. Mm-hmm. And you feel his mouth just inches from your neck, centimeters. As <clears throat> is that a as he, or as is he, that his throbbing tumultuous vampire? <laughs> I swear to God, you just said fart beat. <laughs> I heard fart beat. <laughs> is that his fart beat, or you just happened to see me? That's what I heard. I happened to say it. I heard it. Continue, Mike. As I read this book. I make farty noise. <laughs> I'm, trying to do, I'm trying to do it in the form of a heartbeat. Thank you. Ew. Thank you. What in the hell? I can't make a fart sound with my hands. It takes a lot of practice. Kelsey's a master fart maestro. You can see her in the in the mirror. Kelsey's like, come on, Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> She's like the textbook focus. spread everywhere. Focus. Diagrams of hands. Focus. Don't, don't, don't lose focus. You can do this. You've done this a thousand times before. Her entire YouTube history is fart hands. <laughs> no. As Mikey tries to remember what was said last. <laughs> Oh, sweet tooth. And he says very softly in your ear. And you can feel like when you had been close to him before that, that he when he was starving, that he was he looked cold and dead like a corpse. Now invigorated by the blood of this Shadar Kai, you can feel this paradoxical warmth and he says Let's see how sweet you will really are. I go, 
Oh. <laughs> Tell her. <laughs> Wait, so there's a lion on the box, but this is just a bunch of coloured plastic. Caprice, I got a Blistics. one. You, what, you, what, 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 I was at 22. 22, and uh, what do you want to do for your combat phase? Are you going to pass, or are you going to play a strategy card? Oh, well, I, um, Toa, combat or strategy? Wait a minute. Where are the lions? Toa, what are you doing here? Why are you well, looking well, at this? If, don't get if I wrong. were in a prairie full of lions, I would, I would do strategy. Oh yeah, we're like three hours late, but I wanted to let you guys finish the game of Twilight Imperium. Three hours? <laughs> Do you mean the count's waiting for us? We're not even supposed to leave until tomorrow. No, we were supposed to leave three, or maybe it was two hours ago. I can't really remember. Oh, Raven Queen curses! And I'm like, <laughs> no, you missed like, all the no, game. No, no. I flip oh, everything. No. The guy's I back me up my book, shoving papers into my bag. I picked strategy and I rolled a fun. We don't have any time for this. We have to get down there. We have to go. Well, We'll Where's play when we're back. Where's Lufty? Uh, she's just waiting, I mean, somewhere in the castle, probably. Where did you leave her? With, with Asher. Oh, let's go! <laughs> and I'm gonna, we're gonna run. I grab my veal pack and I'm on my way. No, 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 he was just ready to travel. He had his riding leathers on. <laughs> his riding leathers? <laughs> uh, yes. What did it look like to her? Uh, I mean, it was... He... Could you see the bloodless veins in his thighs? It was very form-fitting, if that's what you mean. Run! <laughs> Smuggle salami in there. <laughs> she wants a bath. Ah, Kelsey! She wants a bath. You should be ashamed of yourself. Or not, I don't make the rules. We're, we're at Kim Dossa levels. Yeah. All right? You... You make your way back and you are running through the castle. Toa, you, uh... I'm in the back. I'm like, oh, I'm oh, so confused. Toa's got a roll to see how quickly well, that's what I'm saying. get us there. Okay. Your memory, Toa. Yeah, well, I'm like trying to direct roll them, roll, but roll, roll, roll Iris is going so check. fast, she can, you know... Roll an intelligence check at disadvantage. Four hours later. <laughs> um, I think it was this way. Um, oh, disadvantage? Uh, that's a four. <laughs> Toa? <laughs> You, none of you know where it is. Oh, I Toa think it was the only one that's been there. Oh, no, Toa was... now immediately forgets with the, the, the situation is so, he's, he's so uh, uh, high strung now. Uh, <laughs> nervous. So I'll go, keep, continue. continue. He's nervous. He doesn't understand. Basically, he's, you it, you make, actually make it all the way down to the dungeon and you see uh, Brutus trying to scrub out a blood stain. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I know how I can find it easier. I could ask one of my ancestors to go to the room since I was just there. Why and I can look in the room. How do you to get see to, to what's Escher? going on? <laughs> <laughs> just give me one second and I'll commune with them real quick. Uh, and I, I mean, from a meta perspective, <laughs> I like this decision better. Uh, so I'll, I'll kneel down real quick and I'll take out my, my <laughs> figurines in place and I was like, um, could you please just show me the, the stone cutting room and try to help me remember where it is and I'll place a sensor in the middle of the stone cutting room. How long does this take? <laughs> It's, it's, I think it's. I would say, to, to, uh, you, you're able to react however you would like to. So that's what I do. So now there's a sensor uh, in the. Uh, you would see exactly what you expect. <laughs> <laughs> Toa, what do you see? <laughs> <laughs> Are they okay? <laughs> <laughs> I immediately cut it so I can pick like hearing and, 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 and vision. So I did vision. I'm like, oh, and I switched to hearing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I knocked my figurines. The scatter. Like, no, ah! <laughs> Tom, Tom, what's the matter? What's wrong? Are they okay? Are Is they she safe? Dead? Is she dead? Uh, no! <laughs> she, she's alive. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I don't know if it was blood or... We need to get up there and, and get to her! Lead the way as quickly as we can! Come on, come on, come on! Blood or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I know I still have to clean up all this blood. I'm just rubbing as hard as I can. And I intentionally, now I'm intentionally taking as long as I possibly can to get to the stone coming in. We just looped through here. You're taking us in circles! I um, mean, you know, I could have... No, I think it's this way. Uh, just trust me. <laughs> you make you make several loops through the castle, uh, as you then eventually find the room once again, Toa. You take them to the door at the top of a landing. Uh, okay. Um. 
We should all. He told us. He told me to, to, to that we should wait here. What? What do you mean? What, you, what, you what said, do you mean you should, we should wait out? You said we were three hours late. Well, I mean, you guys were busy. It's not my fault. It took you like three hours to set the game up. Is this the, t- the stone cutting room? Yeah, 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 yes, this is it. You Lufty, no- Lufty, 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 Iris, Lufty, Lufty, can you hear me? Lufty, Lufty. You knock and you don't hear any response. Is the door right? locked? You haven't tried to open it. Okay, yeah, I have it. What? No, I haven't. I'm okay. just knocking. Yeah, you're knocking and you hear and you don't hear any response for a bit. Lufty, are you all right? Hey, sir. Sure. One, one second. What's <laughs> <laughs> just going on? Oh, see, I mean, I think Lufty, he's, he's finishing something. his alchemical uh, ritual, <laughs> so to speak. <sighs> I'm going to swing open the door and just be smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is all the noise? Oh my god, I was so afraid that you were hurt. Toa put down his sensor and he was watching you. And he seemed really <laughs> concerned. <clears throat> he seemed incredibly relaxed. Yeah, it's something about this castle. So what was Toa freaking out about? Who knows? Yeah, he gets right. a little tightly wound. <clears throat> right, I feel like I could help him with this. <clears throat> you enter and you see as... Uh, Escher is standing by a table in the in the in the corner. His hair is completely messed up, where it had been just perfect, this perfectly uh, brushed mane. It's now uh, in every direction, and he's holding up these two vials. Mm, yes, alchemy. Alchemy. <laughs> oh yes, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, this appears to nothing be other alchemy. Than, nothing other than alchemy. <laughs> long night, Escher. Uh, long night. Yes, yes, lots of lots of work to be done. Yes, it's been a long time since I've done that much work. Yes. Well, you look closely, there's a bite net <clears throat> or a bite mark on his neck. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> oh, in the Not quite fangs, but yeah. mostly it hurts. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Toa said that we were really late this morning and that we were ready to leave three hours ago. We, we can go now, we're ready. No, I assure you, you were right on time. Oh, well, see, what, then what was the what big deal about it? Why are you all out of sorts this morning? You're doing nothing but lying to us. No, I, I mean, I, I was just confused. I'm confused a lot, you know? I don't think he was I'm intentionally just, lying. I, yeah. I think he's just struggling. Why? What's? You can tell us what's wrong. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, I think we're just ready to go, and I was just making sure that, you know, you guys had fun. Uh, did, you have, did you have another nightmare? Uh, I'm, no, no I, I mean, I... You can I, tell me if you did. I won't tell me. It, it wasn't a nightmare, uh, but I did play Parcheesi by myself for two hours. Oh, so, uh, well, next time you could have just woken me up and I would have played with you. You could have taught me how to play. <laughs> well, no, I was keeping watch. If you were awake, I wouldn't have been as alert. All right, well, fair so, enough, I suppose. You know, if, if, if I'm the only one playing, then I can keep my ears out and my senses... Fair enough. Um, for any kind of danger or, or bugs. <laughs> you keep yourself warm. I really like having a hard time managing it. That's what she said. <laughs> Alright, well, we're ready to go. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> is there anything else we need to do before we head out? Uh, uh, no, I think we I think we should definitely go as quickly as possible. I agree. Very soon. Ah, I'm yes. done with this alchemy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Are our mouth ready? Yes, it looks like alchemy. <laughs> please don't do that again. Don't do what? Do not scare me with that. I um, cannot let Lufty know that she means something to me. Let me turn and walk away. <laughs> oh, you, <clears throat> you do that, and you all see the same... Uh, the same number of gargoyles, the five, uh, the five gargoyles all facing, uh, facing each other, with each of the large crystal canisters filled with the glowing, re- uh, the glowing red fluid. And uh, <clears throat> Escher gestures at all of them and says, uh, "Well, I, these have been collecting dust for a long time, but I suppose that this is a good enough time as any to actually wake them up." There's a process to ensure that you are bonded to your new mount. All right. Uh, and what, how does that really work? So you must, each of them, and to, to ensure that no one can sneak in and ride off with one of those things, I 
there's a look into your soul and judge to see if you're worthy to ride it. It's nothing. And, and, and when you attempt to bond with it, if it judges that you are not a, the right match, it will smash you into a bloody mist. What? Like, so that's it. We, we choose wrong, we just die. Yes, that's exactly how it works. Which one is the most expensive? They're all the same, I Speaking of which, prices. do you happen to have a bowl, a gem-encrusted bowl worth around a thousand gold pieces? A few dollars. This I was bowl. looking this morning. <laughs> How much would you value this bowl? I pull out the really ugly bowl. <laughs> I'd consider that more of a dish. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, um, <clears throat> he, he ushers you all into, Escher ushers you to get out of the fucking heist. Uh, I had all of this for last month. Uh, oh my God. We're fine. <laughs> well, we're at it, we've added like 10 sessions of Need Dark Wings then today a lot. <laughs> Holy shit. As you see that each of the gargoyles, it, once again, is that, that same shape with the saddle, and, and it says, well, these have been carved for a while, and now that these were made for my friends, and now that you're my new friends, being as lonely as I am, I just can't be choosers. <clears throat> he looks at you and gives you a little bit of a sly wink, uh, and bites his lip. You see a little bit of a fang, uh, almost pierced into the, the, the flesh, as he <coughs> as um, he he gestures to uh, each of the gargoyles, and so uh, he, he gestures to one that is um, a gargoyle that seems to have uh, this ogre-like face, and um, it. Uh, it has uh, it has these large lower uh, teeth and, and upper teeth that kind of curve off in different directions, and a large uh, underbite as uh, there's these wild eyes as well. And uh, he says, uh, "This one is Carnabo," and he then gestures to one that has more of an avian face, as it's almost like a like a raven, uh, a raven's face. This a beautiful creature is Lucivia. And uh, he, he then gestures to another one that seems to uh, be uh, somewhat humanoid with monstrous, but it looks these large horns and it looks devilish and it has this angry uh, looking uh, face to it, sneer it. And he says, and, and he says, uh, this one is Cogsworth. And uh, there's another one that looks reptilian, almost dinosaur-like, as it has this elongated snout. Uh, that is Gerald. And uh, there's one that is very lupine and, and wolf-like, uh, and with these uh, t- pointed triangle ears, and he says, and that is Loopy. Uh, Loopy? Loopy. What was the first one? Uh, the first one was Kanabo, K-A-N-A-B-O. What did he look like? He looked like an ogre. Oh. Ogre type. With these strange teeth going in curving directions. But how are we supposed to know which one is which? The inscriptions. Oh. Well, you can read them and make a decision yourself. I don't know you very well, so I can't make a determination. I'll walk up and read uh, Conobos. Uh, Conobos says, For the one with the commitment to protect family, friend, and home. Hmm. But clearly this is Torres. Yes, that sounds very tower. Uh, and then you're able to read all of them. I'll just read them all off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Loopy says, uh, for the one with relentless curiosity that is sometimes mm-hmm. ill-advised. Well, Lufty. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gerald, the dinosaur, says, uh, for the one with the desire to grow and transform for the better. Oh, clearly he lives. For Lascivia, uh, it says, uh, for the one with the indulgence in all that life has to offer. <laughs> oh, that oh. Well, that's my. Mm-hmm. And then for uh, the one for Cogsworth, it is for the one with the commitment to seek out and destroy evil wherever it looks. There isn't one for me. You're pretty good at destroying evil. No, not really. I stand in the back and I protect my friends. <laughs> well, but you, you know, you smite things too, with like horrible <clears throat> locust swarms and stuff. I'm really good 
good at nagging and yelling at people who are mean. Bad. That's kind of like the same thing. But I, look- but I don't want to be smashed to a bloody fool if I pick the wrong one. I don't think any of us do. Well, this guy looks like he could be like a distant cousin, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go up to this guy and uh, I'll go to Carnabo and I'll like uh, I guess I was attempt to <laughs> to mount him. Uh, oh, so we're doing this again. <laughs> uh, and and Escher stops you and he says, "That's not how it works." Oh, um, <clears throat> when you've made your choice, you're going to make your case to the gargoyle. I'm going to turn on the device, and he looks at uh, he looks at you, Lofty, uh, and then the gargoyle will make its determination. Do, do you know which ones match, or is it a mystery? I don't know. You. If you survive the process, then you'll have a mount. We can fly and through the skies of Skeffernir. If you just happen to have five, that have five specific traits, what if you have a group of five people that do not? Have those strips. Then they don't get a pair of wings or they get smashed into a fine mess. I didn't make these for you. Yeah, so there's a chance that even if we get some of them right, some of us might get smashed. So maybe we should think of a different way to get Toa going. I, I, I think that uh, Toa should uh, follow his heart. Uh, I do not want Toa to be smashed. I don't I either. Know, but Toa but if he does smashed. get smashed, then probably process of elimination. We'll have... <laughs> then I think that you should go first. No, no, because no. Because if, so, uh, if we were if we are looking at this logistically, if any of us should be smashed, we need to send the person who is the least valuable to you. You have deceived us. You have Aww. gotten us into. I'm I'm just being fair. You have you have gotten us into a lot of trouble. Your soul belongs to some kind of demon entity. I think if you were to die, no offense that it would be the least damaging to the rest of you. Well, I was going to choose the same thing Toa was going to choose. I mean, that's where I want to go. Over to Kanabo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do what? say all of that with love, please. Right. Well, to, to Iris's point, I think that out of all of us, you've probably done the most growth lately. Thank you. You harm. Harm. Harm? He has done the most harm. But he's trying to fix it. And Which as, is why we're still his friend. Right, so maybe you don't go for this this carnival, but maybe a Gerald is more your You speed. have died before, so you are the one who's the most familiar. Well, I, I think that when um, when Count Kreskov talks about being pummeled in the red mist, they probably he's probably referring to an, an average like non Goliath. Yeah, I, Toa's gargoyle. not gonna die. I don't think so. I, Toa can I destroy can that, gar- that 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 gargoyle, no problem. I could definitely take a punch from one of these guys. My money would be on Toa. But again, I still think that Caprice is more of a Gerald as opposed to a Conor. You think so? I'm glad you're not. Yeah, you're such a Gerald. So, which, which, which what did Caprice, what did Gerald say? Uh, he, he's all about growth and transformation. Uh, I suppose well, it's an application. Felix does have a point. So, all of the all of the things I said about you were pre death Caprice. Right. Post death Caprice, you've been a pretty stand up guy. I'm trying. I, I know I need to take my lump, so if you want me to go first, uh, I, I'll, I'll ask the group. I, if Gerald's the way to go, I, I, I can make my, my case. But what if he punches you? I think he might explode your head like a like a <laughs> watermelon. Know, let's, let's look at it again. <laughs> One of them was very clearly Lufty. Well, I think there were a couple that Lufty could probably do. I think there is one that probably stands out amongst the others. Which one do you think, Phoenix? You're the smartest of them. Oh, absolutely the one that involves uh, indulgence and is very close to the word lascivious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I, I only speak 13 languages, but I know that lascivious <laughs> means the same in all of them. That sounds a lot like some of the Don't forget a missile. That's not... <laughs> I'm still yes. working on that how one. Do, how do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's really close. Nice. <laughs> I'm getting better. It's, it's really big when it's wagging. I remember wagging. 
there, there's more of a guttural pitch on the, the ending. I'm still trying. Thank you. I appreciate all of you being so gracious. I may not be uh, Big Brain Felix over here, but I feel like there's one that fits you extremely well as well. Louie. Oh. Oh. The one about uh, curiosity. You're Mr. Learn It All. I can't disagree. Uh, and again, you don't have to be first. I'm willing to try. I think that fits. Me. Mm. Oh, I've been told that I should wait. Long, the large number. The same conversation that we had about which one of us should die if one has oh. to. If we were going to take collectively a punch from a gargoyle, you are the one that would not survive. Oh, I would definitely put my money on the gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> if a gargoyle were so to punch me, I would my my body would. If you who is the strongest enough person to take a punch, it would be Toa. Okay. I don't want to risk it. All right. If someone does have to die, it should be Caprice. I don't want to risk it. This is a very blasé conversation we're having about one of our very good friends' death. It's amazing since I left Galtica how comfortable I've gotten with dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may have to get even more comfortable with one very shortly. But either way, step up and become the rider of Gerald, I say. So what you want, Kanabo? Yes, if, if you don't mind. I mean, I think so if which it's... one does that leave for me? Well, I'm kind of with Toa. I've seen, well, quite frankly, the fucked up things you've done to the undead. Well, you yeah. kind of smite a lot of evil, though. You really hate, like, bad guys. And, yeah. Well, the and demons curiosity and... killed the kitty, you know. Well, then we definitely don't want her going after Loopy. Well, maybe she lives life to the fullest. <laughs> no. I, I live mean, life to you. the fullest and not be this disgusting <laughs> new offense. Excuse me. <laughs> You're complete right. waste <laughs> of a castle. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Why don't I just go and see what it's like? I really don't want you to die, Toa, especially not if you spent your last evening playing a game of Parcheesi by yourself. <laughs> no, it's very sad. It was for the good of the group. Oh. I know how, I know how we resolve it. this. <laughs> Who has, over the past 24 hours, had the most fun? I did enjoy <laughs> myself playing whatever those games were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept I kept one of the D6s just in case we want to pretend. I don't really know what fun is. I think the last time that I had fun was when I ate ice cream all the way back in that small little village. Oh, yes. well, we got Sundays! Yeah. And we had you a qualify! You got Sundays in a village and you didn't get any for the rest of us. It was so long ago and the rest of you were in a cave and... Some well, of us got to stay at the end. You don't remember that? Well, Only no. some of us were able to go back, and and then there was ice cream. But that was when we all came to to the tavern. We and, were all there. We just had different rooms. And, and honestly, I wasn't really even able to enjoy it. I was so guilty about the whole thing. And we didn't really know you very well. Like that was like day two, maybe three. It was. And tabaxi, I love cream. Well, to be fair, it was really good. <laughs> that would probably be the last time I knew anything about the time. To be fair, it was really good. <laughs> it you was see cool. Escher step in front of you, is that really the last time you've had fun? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, we've been through a lot of really horrible things. I mean, my you brother's... poor thing and he runs a finger along your cheek. Um, stop. I, I'm trying to tell a story here. This isn't very <laughs> Don't delightful. waste your time. I've been after that one for a while. Uh, my brother's been missing. It's been a really harrowing Don't experience. Mean. It's been a really harrowing <laughs> experience, as I was saying. Anyway, I think Loopy's the one for me, and I'm willing to take the risk. I think it'll be fine. No, In fact, I, I Toa will, will protect I will me. I will go. If I've clearly had the most fun out of all of us, then if one of us should die, and you must protect my soul. I went out having a lovely 24 hours with my closest and dearest friends. So I will step in front of Hogwash, whatever its name is. Yeah, Hogsworth. Yes, the, the one about smiting evil. And I will let him judge me. I think, I think you know, we'll just have Toa stand by, and he can probably save you. No. I mean, we'll definitely try to save you. We won't let this thing kill you. No, I, uh, I'm picking my fate. If I were to be smote into a blood red mist, so would you be. Don't you think We'd I like should... like to see that, Cody. Let's see how it goes, shall we? And yes, Esther please. walks over to the canister, and a large lever between each one. And he, uh, uh... He, he grips it with both hands and he looks <laughs> and he says are you ready? as ready as I'll ever be I stand very close to Iris <laughs> very I, I close I take a step back but I do say I believe in you Iris 
It's for you. You'll, Thank you. You'll know when to start talking. And he heaves forward. Stop. And <laughs> the uh, you hear a as the canister begins to drain, as all the lines around the floor fill with this alchemical solution that then, uh, uh, it, in almost an instant, a large tr- uh, transmutation circle appears, of uh, filled with fluid and glowing, and it illuminates this uh, huge gargoyle named Cogsworth, as it then begins to rise up all of these uh, alchemical designs all along the hide of this gargoyle, and then you see as it finally fills the eyes, as the eyes glow in this bright red, as then you hear <laughs> as the creature finally begins to move and then uh, leans forward. And you see uh, this devil-looking face now staring directly at you uh, as, uh, as, it, as it seems to be uh, waiting for something. All right, Cogsworth, be my guest. <clears throat> Are we having a staring one? You have to make your case about why you are worthy of the, the inscription thing. Why I'm worthy of the inscription? Or to, to write what, on its back? Well, of what it says on the I'm inscri- worthy to write on your back because you're made of stone. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm worthy to write on your back, Cogsworth. Because I've seen evil. I've faced evil. And I've not turned from the light. For my friends guide me through. And my heart will always wait for morning. Now, let me get on your back. Uh, you, uh, you wait as, as Cogsworth leans forward. And you see now it's this, what was just a statue beforehand. Uh, and not a quite a breathing creature, but is now very clearly a, a living creature that leans forward. The mouth uh, opens and closes, and as you finish, it stops, and then it leans down, uh, and uh, you see that the saddle now is perfectly uh, level against the ground as it uh, waits to mount. Do you have a side saddle? You say I don't ride this way. Oh, whatever. I <laughs> climb up on that. On the gargoyle. You climb up on the gargoyle, and you feel that there's actually two uh, grooves for hands, and they, they glow with this red, uh, this red magic. As soon as you put your paws on there, you feel this wash of alchemical energy, and you get the sense now that you that this gargoyle will follow all of your commands and will follow it to the best of its ability. And you now have a a, 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 a loyal trusty mount. Well, that's what. Look at that. Good Easy. job! I think that was the riskiest one that might. That uh, I'm, I'm so glad. Who should go next? You see the, the tail had, with a spade at the who end. Who had the second around. most fun? I mean, some sort of a relative to him. That's one person not dead. Who's next? When I go, what did you do to have a good time? Well, I always have a good time everywhere I go. Yes, I, I can. am like a walking good time. Okay. Then talk to the dog. The boys used to call me a good time gal. <laughs> That's one of the things. They I'd like to add them. another 4.8 star review. What? what? Did she mean? cook you breakfast? Well, where does the stars come into play? So to speak. Yes. And he steps forward and grabs the. Uh, oh, which one, I guess, are you? Are you standing in front of? Uh, Lascivia. He, I was already on my way there. And he, <laughs> gra- <laughs> he, he grabs the level. Are you yes. ready? When you see the uh, alchemical solution, uh, once again, fill that transmutation circle and rise up. Uh, fill the raven-like head as the avian face stares into you as it leans forward its large wings with a little bit of um, slightly less bat-like uh, with a bit of a feathery design uh, as it stares at you. Oh. Well, I, I can already tell we're going to be best of friends. I like to have fun. You look like a bundle of fun. We're going to soak all the joy out of life. Ring every little bit. You want to be turned into mist. What? And even you would have fun as mist. I think I could. Tell it. I, well, don't turn me into mist, but I could have fun as mist. You don't want to do that, do you? To me? Do you? Can I get on your back? <laughs> You're so cute. 
you see this bird face stare at you and lean in as the, the eyebrow narrow or, or, or furrows. As it leans down, I'm going to kiss it right on the beak. Uh, you kiss right on the beak, and then as soon as you do that, <laughs> and it leans down, the, the, the claw like t- talon like hands up, uh, settles down, and you're very easily able to knock the door. Bound up and. Once again, those same uh, handholds, you feel like you're able to, to control this car well. Oh, I love her. Well done. Easy. I have fun. I've, I've been having a blast. I'm, I, I get to sing and, 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 and dance and, and uh, do all kinds of fun stuff. And I get to hang out with you guys. We just played uh, three hours of setting up a board game. Great time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm ready. I'd like to go and uh, uh, walk up to Gerald, if you don't mind, Hector. <laughs> I don't mind at all. <laughs> and he steps over to the lover. <laughs> I guess your friends are right. You do look like a Gerald. Are you ready? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he pulls it forward, and once again, the reptilian dinosaur, like the long, much uh, thicker tail uh, with spines down the, uh, the back of it, as it then leans forward, uh, and looks at you expectantly. The, you see that there's uh, very, um, not sharp because it's a stone, but very uh, prominently uh, carved teeth in, in, its, uh, in its, its, its small. I do a deep bow. Hi, Gerald. Uh, my name is Capri Desesco. It's a pleasure to meet you. You can call me Caprice. Uh, I don't know if you could hear anything before you were animated by this uh, red goo. <laughs> However, uh, my friends tell me that, uh, you know, I am uh, good at uh, transformation, growth, uh, that I would make a good Gerald. I turn into a commoner, you can help themselves. Uh, but I can be all sorts of things. I turn into a lizard folk, uh, just like you, reptilian style. Uh, I uh, am, am, am a king of transformation. I'm bopping myself through a variety of different uh, characters. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know what? That uh, That's cheap tricks. That's just, uh, that's just an illusion. Uh, the, the reality is, is that uh, very recently I passed through the uh, the first veil and uh, came back from the other side. And to be frank, I have been very much reborn. I no longer wake up with existential dread in the way that I used to. <laughs> I uh, uh, feel a great uh, burden off of my shoulders, and I'm here for it. It just uh, my heart sinks. Gerald, what do you say? You want to be uh, my mouth? Uh, there is no hesitation as Gerald leans forward and rests down uh, and is effortless for you to hop on on its back. I jump up and I, uh, oh, it's a little pokey reptile style. All right. <laughs> <laughs> as it then, and uh, Escher uh, looks at his host who will be able to wake up without existential dread. And <laughs> I feel for you, buddy. I feel for you. That's three out of five. Well done. I must say I'm Slightly surprised. Who's next? What are you saying? What are you thinking? I think you should go so I can be ready just in case you get punched in the face. Well, that is very generous of you, and something that someone who protects their family, friends, and home would do. Wait, can you read that one more time? Something that would someone would protect their family, uh, friends, friends, and home. Conobo isn't animated yet. He's just making, he can't hear you. He's taking notes. All right, it helps uh, if he studies. I'm just trying to. Uh, the, the inscription's really like squiggly and swirly. Yeah, it's, it's like, a cursive. Yeah, it's in Welsh. Is. Oh, Welsh. Is it the <laughs> same thing as cursive? I'll be honest. I, I don't way. really know. I, I have is it, it Welsh or good? Good. <laughs> <laughs> You hear from the echoes of the chamber. Good, 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 good. What did you call it? Giggle, 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 this lupine creature, and it's a, it's a bushier tail as it leans down. You see the, the fur-like design on the wings as uh, this wolf-like head stares directly at you like a predator. All right. Uh, all things considering that have happened in my lifetime, I still consider myself pretty lucky because I've always had my brain. And because of it, I've 
ever since I've been able to read, I've learned like 13 or 14 different languages and every single day I learn something new and, and I've devoted my entire life to studying and learning and, and trying to cram as much knowledge into my brain as I possibly can, even in the short few years that I've been on this planet. But uh, it's not going to stop. I promise, I know, and that until the day that I am can no longer breathe, that I'll continue to learn and, and, and pick up new things because there's always something new you can learn every single day. And that's what I've devoted my life for. And then hopefully using that knowledge to save some people. The, you see it lean forward as if it's uh, attempting to, to smell you. As soon as you finish, uh, uh, it then uh, kind of, whack, the tail starts to move back and forth a little bit. And then it, it, it uh, looks at you expectantly as it, as it uh, lays down. Ha! That's it! Hey, look, easy as that. Oh, we can do this, right? And and the best way to learn is just try things because you never know what's going to happen. And I will jump on to Luffy's back. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad. Uh, wait, what if what if I pick wrong and there's only one left and, and it's not a good fit? What happens? Oh, I mean, you're not going to... Something like this isn't going to hurt you. And, and even then, I think that uh, we have full command over these things now and I can make my... Gargoyle mount, destroy that one before it hurts you. You look close enough to an Oni, I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, all right, uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'll walk up to, uh, to Carabo. Conabo. Conabo. Sorry. He leans Sorry, oh, in my nose. And it starts to get uh, illuminated. You see the ogre-like face uh, close uh, with, with difficult, strange uh, curved teeth that it has, the tusks and fangs, as it then leans forward, definitely the biggest of the lot, and much more uh, muscular. Uh, it, 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 uh, it lowers its head at you, uh, almost, almost uh, uh, menacingly. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> hey, man. My name is Toa. We both look like rocks, kind of. Um, you know, sort of just, you're made of stone and I have the gray skin. Um, <clears throat> do you speak ogre? I mean, I mean, giant, not ogre, a giant, well, ogre speak giant, but do you speak giant? I could speak in giant if that would be more comfortable for you. Um, I'd look for any sense of recognition. Not in any, not in any sense. Oh, uh, okay. Well, uh, and I'll take my block and I'll, well, I'll say, um, well, I think that I would be a good partner to, um, take flight on your back because I love to protect my family, I love to protect my friends and I love to protect my home and I already did that last one and sort of the first one and I'm kind of in, in progress of doing that middle one, let's the second one there's a delay oh. As the ogre like face. You are supposed to be cogs! <laughs> Five minutes later, Toa's brother shows up. Hey everyone, I'm Moa. <laughs> uh, as the Oni face uh, uh, looks at you, it almost looks uh, mask like from the. Of how it's carved on the head of this uh, gargoyle, it, it it hesitates and leans forward, and then very slowly, <sighs> it lowers. Thank you. This is this is a great honor, and I will uh, respect any boundaries you may or may not have. As I ride you <laughs> in, into possibly battle, <laughs> and I'll just I'll like climb on him. And just like every, all the others, you feel like you are in full control of these mounts as Escher uh, stands back. And there's a look that he has um, as, as if he, he his stare lingers as he watches all five of you uh, atop the these gargoyles that begin to move around and you're getting a sense of how they work and it's a little bit of an awkward gait that they all have as they as they move around but you all get a sense of it as uh, the wings unfurl and flap a little bit and you realize how despite being these massive constructs whatever kind of alchemical magic the amount of lift that they're able to get with each uh, uh, beat of the wings uh, actually lifts it into the air quite easily and Escher just stands and stares and he, he he's there's actually a smile to his face. 
that you haven't seen uh, that level of, of, of warmth. It seems a bit surprising given that you guys are, are riding gargoyles. And uh, he takes a moment to take it in and he just nods and says, well, I'm glad they're no longer collecting dust. Are you all ready? Yeah, I, I don't see why not. No time like the present. Yeah. He just looks, let's go. What uh, are you going to ride on? He whistles and immediately uh, into thin air, Bucephalus uh, appears, uh, floating in midair. Have we seen Bucephalus before? Yes, we did. as okay. uh, Bucephalus, this this horse-like face that really isn't a horse, but then as you realize it looks more snake-like and, and fiendish as it stares at all of you with this malevolence and <laughs> as it chops, Bucephalus, no, these are friends, not food. As I was like, you, don't worry, you'll grow up. As uh, he he leaps into the air, does a flip, and lands on uh, Bucephalus, and you realize now uh, that there is um, that he has all of his uh, his travel bags with him uh, slung over Bucephalus, and uh, he uh, looks towards the door of this uh, of this balconied uh, room, and he says, "Brutus!" And it booms out magically, and uh, you hear. <laughs> I don't even have lungs. I don't know why this is happening. As uh, the door opens, <laughs> as uh, Brutus appears, um, and uh, Escher looks at him and says, I don't know how long we'll be gone, but you know that you are in charge or I am not in the castle. Uh, make sure that the that the stone watchers are keeping extra high alert. Uh, I made sure that we are extra fortified, but if there are any problems, you know how to contact me. Uh, yes, of course, Master. Uh, anything you say, I will run a very taut ship. Well, no, I won't, won't run a ship. Because uh, it's a castle, we're very clean on a ship. I've never been on a ship. I only know from what you put into uh, my not brain about what a ship is. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about anything, Master. Goodbye, have a lovely, lovely ship. Uh, no, I'll make not- sure there's a whole feast when you guys get back. Uh, have a good one. And, uh, Escher uh, just stop, just sit, sits and listens and, and just nods at him and says, Take care of yourself, Brutus. Friends, we fly south. And with a uh, horrifying whinny, Bucephalus... Uh, uh, that was great. Uh, Bucephalus uh, lets out this booming uh, fiendish sound and immediately starts galloping through the air as uh, Escher takes off um, and pulls out a... Um, a, a, a parasol and uh, holds it over his uh, head as Bucephalus uh, rockets through the sky. Somehow the parasol does not get immediately ripped out um, as he holds it. Uh, just before I start to join after I will turn up. Brutus, uh, leave our uh, board games where they were. We may still be able to recover and pick back up when we get back. <laughs> oh! Ooh. And you see absolute horror coming from his face. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't supposed to pick up any of all those pieces and put it away. No, leave them exactly where they are, <laughs> and if uh, you see anything out of place, put them back exactly where they should have been. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that. I won't touch it. I'll certainly have not already cleaned it all up. Certainly have not ruined your game. Thank you. Um. <laughs> I, I, I'm ready to go. We're, we're just follow, we're just following Escher, right? Yeah, we, yeah. Let's go. Again, no time like the present. All right, All right here I, we I, go. Remind me not to become an alchemist. This room smells like garbage. Who <laughs> 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 be away? <laughs> Let's go! We fly. As you all take into the gloomy skies of Skethrenil and begin your journey yeah. south, and you. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but after several hours of flight, you're you get adjusted to riding on the backs of these huge gargoyles, and it's despite their their size and and then being made entirely of stone, they're surprisingly fast. And as you travel for hours, you see the distant of uh, valleys and mountains, castles off in the distance, with small towns around them, um, and you occasionally see a vulture rider off in the distance. And Escher will tell you he'll be back in a second. He disappears, he goes invisible. And then off in the distance you see the vulture fall 
uh, followed by uh, you hear a scream as uh, a a the, the body of a Shadar Kai falls shortly after, and Escher returns with blood dripping down his mouth, and you continue on your way. It was like a Wilhelm scream. Yeah, exactly. Like Boba right. Fett oh! into the Sarlacc pit style. Like. <laughs> <laughs> My best Wilhelm. <laughs> it's impossible to impersonate because I don't think it's like a real scream. Oh. It's very <laughs> difficult to do. There's a, it's yeah. like, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. We see a soundboard. Uh, you you have you you travel all day and you eventually have to make camp uh, for the night. And uh, Escher invites Lufty to help find firewood. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. How do I look like to you? Don't you have servants? And uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh Escher will oh, 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 look at you, I guess. You're all at camp now, <laughs> if we want to roleplay this. Uh and he says, uh no, I mean fire wood. Fire wood. Hey no. Toa, do you wanna go get firewood? Yeah, sure. Yeah, do it. I'd love to get fire with you. Yes. So I like, go, you I like, it's been a long time since we've... <laughs> I like stupid men. Not stupid. <laughs> we go prancing off into the, <laughs> into the dark woods together. <laughs> We're like skipping along. Go find Oh, this wood. is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good find. Here, let me see what I... Look, this one kind of looks like a snake. <laughs> this is going to burn for hours. Wow. <laughs> nice and dry. <laughs> Uh, you eventually, unless there's anything you'd like to do, when you, uh, you're, you're, you find a spot that's pretty protected uh, out in the wilderness, and you're able to make camp, unless there's anything you'd like to do. Just collect firewood, and then burn that firewood. <laughs> collect more, maybe, if we run out. So be it, you know? So be it, yeah. <laughs> I play some fun with all these hats. You do that. You take off the next morning. And you, oh, we get a long rest? You get a long rest. Hey. It's great. I used a lot of resources right now. Actually? No. Oh, I'm still going to long rest. Because <laughs> of my emergency. No. No, we didn't do shit for an entire day. We literally did nothing. We just <laughs> fucked around. As uh, you fly all day, and once again, in this gloomy land, of Skethrinil, it's sometimes hard to, to gauge uh, where the sun is because um, and what time of day it is. Besides, just the the it's slightly basically how how light gray it is. It goes from lighter uh, dark gray to light gray to dark gray to night. Um, and you continue to uh, fly uh, for for many miles, um, and you're able to avoid the gaze of the vulture riders. And when there is a vulture rider uh, nearby, Escher handles it very swiftly. And after what feels like you've been traveling all day, you finally uh, see uh, these large mountains looming over you, and you see that there's two massive mountain peaks. Uh, good number of miles in between each other, uh, with uh, smaller mountains forming uh, a bit of a valley. And as you turn around, you get a view, and you see something that you haven't seen, you realize now that you haven't seen, since you came here to Skeffer. The sun. Interesting. And you, as you fly, you see as the, you see a bit of orange and red and pinks and violets of the sky at sunset. As you turn around the bed, as you as you curve around this this bend in the mountain to to get a look at, at where you're headed, and you see that there's a ring of clear sky and sun shining through, the colors of sunset painting the 
entire space that you can see. And as you look down past the ring of mountains and highlands, you see where there had been these dense, dark green forests. What looks like now to be a ring of gnarled black dead trees that form the outskirts of a valley that make a ring around a forest that's grown throughout the entire space of the valley that seems to be entirely bathed in the sunlight of the light of sunset. And as you continue to approach, you see the shimmering of golds and reds below, as the entire valley, besides this ring of black gnarled dead trees, is absolutely filled with these huge, brilliant trees of red and gold, glinting in the light of sunset, as you see a large castle at the far end of the valley, rising up. And it looks like a verifiable city built into the moors that surround it. And as you fly forward, Escher turns to you and he extends an arm and says, welcome to Barovia. I know it. As, <laughs> as you draw nearer, you see that there's an incredibly large lake and there's these two massive mountain peaks that seem to flank each side of the valley. And you see that that towards the towards one side, it's um, it's despite the time of year, it's it's covered in in a dense snow cover. And uh, despite the temperate forest of the valley below, and as you approach the ring of uh, of clear sky, never dissipates. As the light slowly disappears and sinks below the ring of mountains, and twilight falls over the valley. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, do I get the sense that Skepranil and Barovia are like neighboring states, or that Barovia is a county of Skepranil? The latter. Okay. The latter. Liter- a literal county. Okay. And um, you see now that uh, as as the sun sets, you see the small villages throughout this forest of reds and golds as the light seems to bathe only this one county. As Ether, Escher starts to descend on Bucephalus, and he, he gestures all of you to follow. And he, he calls out as he rides, I don't think that they'd appreciate us dropping in, we should, you should, proceed on foot. Oh, um, so do we, uh, just like right here when we walk, are we going to the big castle in the middle of the city? That was where I was aiming, yes. As, uh, you, you, you skirt the valley and, uh, the, you see that there's a wistful look to Escher as uh, you all descend as night falls. And Escher stops right at the tree line of where the the forest of gnarled, dead, blackened trees stops and and, and, uh, borders the brilliant forest of red and gold leaves. And he stops and stops you. I think this is where we should camp for tonight. Um, 
I guess it's late. I think that's fine. But we're so close, we can see the castle. Yes, we can. And Escher dismounts Bicephalus as he looks into, he looks up at the, the tree line, those golden red trees, and he takes a few steps and looks down at his feet. I haven't been home in so long. I don't know if I can answer this. Maybe where you have to move on without me. Oh, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not time. You should. You should be fine, right? There's no. There's no sun right now, and maybe we could just like stay shaded during the day. Hallowed, all of it, the entire valley, wherever these trees grow, as hallowed ground as their roots grow deep, and their branches grow tall. And I am the creature of the night. I do not believe I am one is there a way we can test that theory uh, without risking you or anything? Or is it uh, sort of an all-or-nothing type deal? Yeah, what happens? It's a very painful. And as you all land and dismount, you see now that this strange, spooky force that you've landed in, these trees seem to have these sunken wailing faces in them. And they look familiar. <laughs> you had first encountered trees just like this in Erios. In the grove of the cult of Garrix. <laughs> and you see that there's and each one as you look around that there seems to have be, be a, a hole bored in at the base of these trees. And they seem to be hollow and sunken and brittle. Despite that, the trees, even with their bare branches, form a darkening canopy. As Escher looks up at the tree line and says, I am not sure what I could always just write a letter of introduction. Just be here to forgive me. And that was going to be my question, was if we have to go on without you, what, what do we say to the Count to convince them to, to be on our side? Well, tell him everything. Everything that we've, that we've seen over the past several days. I'm sure that if he, if he knows what is coming for him, it's a good thing that he seemed to have arrived before. Vorlock has made his move. I'm not sure how much time we have. Can he make a move if this place is hallowed and protected with sun and holy times? That's a good question. I thought I was protected too. I do not know what the nature of the extent of the power of the Carrion King. Especially every week and month that goes by, his power grows, it seems. And the creations that my little bat keep getting more monstrous and vile. Well, then, yeah, if you could write us a letter. And we'll be real quick. We can sleep tonight, and then we'll just go straight to the castle, and we'll beg for help, and then hopefully we'll ride out of here with the whole army. Yes. Yes, that's a good plan. I... Do you see that? Oh, yeah. You all look 
and you see into the forest of trees of red and gold. Off in the distance, you see a light that seems to be flickering off in the woods. What is that? Is it in the holy hallowed woods? Yes. And we're not near any of like, oh, the village stuff. That's the only ways off, right? Yes, so. yeah. Uh, is that a, a person, or is it some kind of... What would they be doing all the way out here? It could be anybody. It could just be some sort of uh, of, of the county's guard. I mean, we just... We don't know it's uh, good or bad. Just uh, let's just see what happens, I guess. They must know we're here. It could be maybe like a ranger, you know, just keeping up and... Maybe collecting some Texas. For, what for is Texas? No, tex, Texas, like, like... Yes, which is Texas. Yeah. It's what like is? like when you have to give a portion of your money to, 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 the, to the count of the county that you live in, and then he has to give part of that to the, to oh, the king. Taxes? Well, that's what I said. Yeah, like a tithe. Texas. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't pay our taxes. Well... well my point is, is that he, he probably means well, and we can explain the situation, and maybe he'll, he can give us an escort tomorrow. We need one. What well, I mean, he might know like a shortcut or like places to avoid. Although I mean, if it's so holy, maybe there are no places to avoid. It might be easier to get audience with the count. If we have someone who would, you know, like an inn. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't seem to be listening to what you're saying as he stares off into the forest. Go in. Just like at, at the light. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. All right. Do you want to go? Yeah, let's let's go. I'll How go. dark is it? It night fell very quickly. I'm gonna just like snap my fingers and create a little flame and like. You do that, and it, the flame. Because I don't want dark vision. I'm your very blind. <laughs> as and just hold my hand up as I walk forward. You tell us slightly ahead of me. <laughs> you step forward and you make it about 50 feet in, and the light continues to flicker, but you don't seem to draw any nearer t- to it. It seems to stay at the same distance and move through the forest. And you look back. And you hear Escher's voice call out. I think... I think it's calling to me. Like you can hear it? What does this mean? I hear... There's a guy I don't know. I'm going to try to step across the threshold. Is that a good idea? Yeah, I don't know about that, Escher. I, can we can we still see him, or is what he like how far at? away is he? He's about fifty feet back. Or he's not that see. far. Okay. No, he's not that far. So no. the three of us are are in the woods, following the light and yes. yelling back to Escher. But the two ladies are with Escher at this point. Where are I don't know where the ladies are. I would have been walking. Yeah, yeah. So we, I would just be like turning around back towards yeah. him and just say, I don't think that's a good idea. We, you already said it could be horribly painful. Yeah, stay there. It's not worth risking it. We're okay. If there's one thing I know, but don't follow. When something is tempting you, it's probably a bad thing. Might be fine, but probably bad. <laughs> Do as I say, not as Lufty does. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. We should have embroidered that somewhere. We'll figure it out. You stay there. And you can you can just see him just very, very, very faintly in the light of moon. And you realize now that you the moon's also mostly been cloudy this entire time. And he you just see a silhouette. And then you see a leg rise, and he steps forward. Oh no, come on, dude. Into the forest. And then he takes another step. And another step. And another step. And in several moments, he approaches you. You hear the rustling of the underbrush. 
as Escher joins you, looking around. You're all right. Do you feel okay? I feel fine. Does that mean that these this forest is no longer hallowed? Maybe you're not a vampire anymore. Oh, oh that's so amazing! Congratulations. So I I think it's much more likely that the the count's county is no longer as safe as we thought it was. Oh. Are you still a vampire? Yes. Oh. We should probably hurry. And I begin to like hustle through the woods <laughs> with the with the little bit of flame that I have. Uh, you see the flickering lanterns going off to the left. And Escher says we must follow it. Are, are you sure we don't want to just head right for the castle? No, there's a reason why this flame is here. <laughs> Okay, and I start to veer towards the lantern. Is Gerald and the others going to be okay? Yes, they'll be fine. The Cephalus will keep an eye on them. And you keep making your way through, and you see that as you approach and get closer to this light, it never gets any nearer, and it continues to move through the forest. As you follow this light that, that looks like it's someone holding a lantern guiding you through the forest. Oh, hold on, Felix. I can't see very well. Very well. All right, all right, all right. What? As you continue to follow this light, Escher, con- Escher is walking alongside of you, l- lingering towards the back. And as you continue to make your way, you continue to follow. And suddenly he's in the lead. And his eyes are wide. And he says, no, I think that these forests are still hallowed. He looks down at his own feet as he continues to guide you. As you follow for what feels like an eternity until you suddenly emerge into a small clearing and you see what looks like a lantern flickering in the center of this and suddenly it shimmers and fades and the light disappears and Escher takes a few steps forward and looks around what? where? and then you feel warmth as the cloudless night reveals the large moon shining down moonlight. And you hear a voice around you. It's not too loud and it's not threatening. As it as it seems to be centered around Escher. first step or the millionth step on the path to redemption. Both equally crucial. A creature of the night that is an ally of the light and an old friend is welcome in this valley. And then it fades. As Escher stands, his eyes are wide, and he looks up at the moon. You yes, you are. <clears throat> what, what, what was that? Is everything all right? What was that? Some kind of ghost? Go, 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 ghost? Everything is all right. This land is under under care and in good hands. Oh, hell. Uh, My good. And you now see oh. a also number alarm. of lights. As you see a very thin tree line of these this forest. As you see the light of villages just on the other side. 
as you've arrived through the forest to the valley of the Rodeo. Well, yeah, I was worried it was uh, something bad there, Asher. We, we're okay. We're all, everything, everything's under control, right? We're good. We made it. Well, they're normally spooky, disembodied voices. To be fair, Toa, that's probably one of the least scary things that we've encountered in our time together. It sounded like like we were all welcome. Yeah, it was a good thing, right? Yes. Yes. We are welcome here. There is power here, the voice that you heard was the voice of the forest. Do not be long. I... We all... Well, then let's go. Let's not dilly-dally. Wait, I agree. We, we need to get to the castle and we need to see the count as, as quickly as possible. Yes. yes. And he guides you out of the woods tree line now behind you and you see now that this village is still filled with these trees of leaves of red and gold and you see that there's the flickering lights of villages through the valleys you see farmland you see far off a vineyard by a tall hill and all nestled between these two huge mountains and the smaller mountain ranges along it. Something crosses above you, casting a shadow beneath the moon. And you look up and you see what looks like a small raven flying overhead as it circles a little bit and then flies off. Um, Escher looks at all of you and says, I think we should perhaps stay off the road. It's enough draw too much attention to ourselves. I'm not sure if Alexi is going to even want to see me. All right, if you if you think that's for the best, that's fine. Well, if the forest was okay with me, why wouldn't Alexi be? Yeah. Well, I'll hope that everything will be fine. Well, then, if you... I mean, you can lead us now. I mean, if this is your home, do you... I mean, is it still familiar? It is both familiar and unfamiliar. 200 years is a long time. But I know where to go. The castle is not that far. You see it looming tall above you. You get the sense that it's probably a several hour walk to, to get to the large, sprawling town that's been built into the moors that surround this castle. And you make your way, and you you occasionally see a little bit of movement off these sleepy sleepy, uh, homesteads as one by one the lights dim as this town starts to settle in for them. You walk for probably another two hours, undetected. And then you feel as the ground beneath you starts to rumble. And you see dust cloud off in the distance from behind the hill. A dust cloud? Dust cloud large dust cloud that continues to move and get closer. As you then hear the rumbling, thundering of hooves, it sounds like thundering, galloping horses approaching you. Oh good, they've sent carriages for us. It must be some sort of guard or some sort of, 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 of night watch or something. All right, well, well, uh, you can explain the situation and you can just, you know, tell him what's going on. Yes, of course. And uh, you see that, that Asher seems to be a little bit nervous. There's a, there's a bit of trepidation in his voice. 
as the thundering of the, the galloping grows louder and louder, and then from around the hill that you are, around a hill that you're approaching, on the road that you're staying on the, the outside of, you see a dozen horses galloping in your direction. And you see the glinting of moonlight off of the shimmering plate armor of a dozen knights atop them. And you see that one is carrying the standard of a rising sun. As there seems to be one at the head with the most uh, uh, decorated horses. As they begin to thunder forward and they are probably about 500 feet from you when Escher steps out into the road and raises his hands. I suggest you all do the same. Of course. Uh, Hi. I, I raise my hands and one of my hands still has a flame in it. <laughs> <laughs> and the line of galloping knights stops at you. And they... You, can, you can't even see any faces hidden beneath helmets, all of them. As the one at the lead with a very large sword with a gleaming golden hilt at his side, rides forward, trotting, looming tall over you. The horse is huge. And this knight is no small man. He, he leans forward as Escher steps forward. My name is Count Escher Kreskov. I come seeking Count Alexei von Zarvis to warn him of the dangers that is thundering towards Barovia. We mean you no harm, quite the opposite. And you see as the one at the lead steps forward and reaches up and grabs the helmet and pulls it off and you see uh, shining, shimmering blonde hair fall out at, at about shoulder length as a middle-aged man who is very strikingly handsome with strong features looks at Escher and then at all of you. Well, you have found me. My name is Alexei Bonzarovich, the Count of this valley. Oh! Oh! Hi! Hello! Uh, uh, hello, Count um, Bonzarovich. It, it, uh, it, 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 we, we mean you no harm, and 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 uh, we have a very, very uh, important information to give you. It's a bit of a long story, but it's like Toa says, very important. He looks at all of you, and you see as uh, he looks back at his knights, and he he trots up to Escher close, more closely. I will not recall seeking your counsel or the presence of a vampire here in my valley. But we have been noticing strange occurrences. I will hear you. Thank you. Uh, that, that's fantastic news. We, we appreciate it. He uh, gives a hand gesture to his guards, and they uh, begin to ride forward and uh, make a circle around all of you as uh, Alexei Von Zarovich rides up and dismounts. And he stands even taller than Asher. As he looks at all of you and says, I know Count Kreskov and the alliance that he had with my ancestor, but I do not know you. You do not look like you are from 
most of you. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Oh, well, uh, my name is uh, uh, Felix Ackerman, sir, of uh, Kesselfield from uh, Corvacchia. Sir. You do look Corvacchia. That's right, sir. My people also came from Corvacchia. Many centuries. Oh, wow, that's... I didn't know that. Huh. I'm from Corvacchia, Kirstein, I'm Lufthi, hi! 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 Do not you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You do not look good at all. No? But we have been in our valley for many years. I do not know what Kodonathia is like. Well, I can tell you we're going to get on very well. So, if you want to come back, I will give you a tour. First class. This gives you a very slow nod. Uh, but not, we're not looking for Korovaki. They just happen to be from there. We, we're with him. I'm Queen at Asher, and uh, I'm I'm Toa Kamanui. Um, some people call me Wind Chaser. Uh, or, or, or um, uh, nobody I'm, calls you. Let's be real. I mean, you guys don't call me that, but you don't know my friends back home. That's Sometimes what they call me. I'd like to make an inside check. I don't want to see if anyone's ever called me a chaser. I don't think anyone's fucking making up. <laughs> I'm telling you that my friends call me witches. You believe it. What's your, what's the, what's your inside check? 29. Uh, 13. <laughs> Now he's, he feels he's telling the truth. Okay. He feels he's telling the yeah. truth. He feels he's telling the truth. <laughs> We're in character. Well, yeah, I, uh, I'm from across the sea. I'm from Magaltica. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a great city. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with these folks. We're here to help. Uh, my name is Capriccio Vicesto. You can call me Caprice. It's a pleasure to meet you. You look like you are out of place here. <laughs> I'll look out of place pretty much anywhere. I'll tell you, this, to, to be honest, completely honest. Welcome to the world. I deep bow, holding one of my tail in one hand. I'll step forward and I'll reach out my hand. I was the saddest daughter to the family. Nick Beshin ordered to pass. And I'll bow my head, but I won't actually like curse your bow. He will look at you, and you can see that there is... And I hold out my hand so he can kiss it, which is proper. Uh, he looks at you, and he gives you a nod, and he reaches down, and he grabs your palm. And despite the size of his hand, he's a very large man. It's a very gentle grip. And he leans down, and his blonde hair uh, brushes against your, your hand, and he gives it a, a kiss. Royalty. We welcome you here in this valley. I will speak to you. You speak for your guards. Friends. I lean in and I'm like, why do we always get that? Guards, servants. It's never just, you know, people. We're never just along for the ride. I'm not like guarding and serving people, so it works for me. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's an interesting observation. I wasn't talking to you. You know I am. The adults are talking. Maybe if you cleaned yeah, up Felix. your clothes a little bit, you look a little dusty. I take it back, not friends, guards. <laughs> <laughs> After Toa makes a comment about my clothing, I just look deeply wounded. <laughs> guards and Troubadour. <laughs> I, uh, fucking This is all starting to make sense. And yes, I am also a count. And also undead. I respect the stories you, that have been sung about you, Count Krasnov. But I will speak to the royalty in my presence first. And then we can discuss what we must. You look wise, my lord. So I ask you, what is death, the second of the century? 
my faith, death should be a state where you no longer walk the values of darkness over me. For us all, it comes. And Earthlight. Iris of the Sands. I will speak to you by her new own color. Simply put, there has, an, there has been an attack on Count Asher's abode, domicile, Count Frankly called a castle, and a warning from the Carrion King himself, and your name upon his lips. He claims to be coming for you and your land, and though Count Asher feels that you do not have quite the connection he would hope, he could not turn away from you and felt that though our journey lies further into this land, that we must make a detour and warn you so you could protect your people and that maybe you would see it in your heart to care for those in this land by lending us your aid. My aid. My honor. Whatever you can spare, we are capable, myself and my friends. Zarikosa. Is that the place we're going? All these names are so strange to me. I don't know. Where? Are yes. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Make a persuasion check at advantage. Yeah. <laughs> I look at all of his guards. And I like how they're standing, and I like try to match how how they're standing, so I can feel like a guard too. You said persuasion. Yep. Uh, nineteen. <laughs> nineteen. He he looks skeptical. The Carrion King has attempted to eat revenge on my family for generations. What hope does he have? Now, what is, what is his plan? His plan we do not know of, but we do know that he may have acquired something he has sought. A raven child that he wishes to use. A raven child? Yes. Where does he acquire a raven child? On our travels, we came across a band. We believe they were working for him. A carriage, and in it, a coffin with a small girl. We rescued her and brought her to the castle. But the Carrion King was smart. He infiltrated the walls of the rooms, and he stole her back. It was then that he gave us this warning. She, she, oh. Her name was Valeska. Does that name ring true to you? Psst. She was a Vistani. You may speak to her. Oh, can I speak, sir? I mean, Count Toa, just speak. Oh, um, yes, uh, Toa, uh, lead guard here. Um, and, uh, what's it? Oh, what? Do, uh, <laughs> um, she, I, I believe, I believe. Um, Toa, spit it out. Uh, the, the, I'm nervous. Uh, I believe it was mentioned she was that a she was a Vistani. <laughs> and she is, was from a, a Vistani camp outside of Falaki, maybe? Is that what she said? I don't know. All these yes, names and places and people sounds the same to me. And she she had uh, very uh, bright blonde hair, uh, not too dissimilar from yours. My count. He looks at you. I throw him a Scooby snack. <laughs> And then turns back Tongue to you. Comes out. <laughs> I had, I had been informed of the missing child. They're saying that she is lost. Well, our hope, our hope is to retrieve her. 
I know that I can only speak for myself, but I know my friends well. We will not rest until she is safe. That's right. He steps forward. You have good intentions. My God speaks to me. He tells me to trust you. Is that how you knew that we were like right about here? Did you intentionally ride out to meet us or was this sort of a crazy coincidence? A leader, a ruler, who rules wisely, makes great alliances, and he looks up and you see three ravens circling overhead. As he then turns back, I have eyes all over the head. That is what alarms me with news. We've had several missing children over the past months. The howls in the beast wood that surround this valley continue to become more present every evening. The distant fire is dotting the hills and the mountains. hoped that this was just because times were getting desperate beyond the edge of our dragonfire forest. This is very wrong. You say that Oleska was her yes. name, yes? Yes, that is what she told us. And she also mentioned that she heard a howl uh, in the woods and she went out to, to go follow it for some reason and that's when she was taken. The first time. Oh right, the first time. She was taken a second time. Then I don't, I don't, do you remember hearing any howling? I didn't hear any howling. No, just the chittering of insects. Yeah, more like a... <laughs> so I actually do that. Yeah. Uh, the brief effect is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Derek laughs openly. <laughs> <laughs> he he looks around his guards and then back at you and says, You are welcome here in my valley. If I ask you not speak of this heaven. We cannot afford fear. You mean of the uh, uh, the, the girl being taken, or, or this meeting right now? Oh, okay. Taken to Zaracosa. It is bad enough that children are wandering from the woods, being taken by the girls. No problem, you got it. Yeah, but I'm... wouldn't they wander less if they were more scared? Maybe you should scare them a little. Fear is an incredible motivator. I'll agree under one condition. This is your home in, in, in your county. I'll abide by the rules provided you give us all the information that we need to save these kids. And, and, and help us in any way in furthering that goal and making sure that these children get home safely. I am not sure if I can pledge my men and women to ride hundreds of miles north to storm Zarikosa and the Carrion King. But I know that you are here for a reason. I know that you made it through the forest without being burned alive for a reason. Such a thing is an impossibility. Zarikosa and the Carrion King. Heavens. Oh jeez! We're just gonna cut that. Cut it! Did you not see the charred corpses of the ghouls and Shadar Kai that tried to infiltrate? To be fair, we just kind of saw some weird trees. I didn't really notice any charred corpses. 
It's generally the thing I pick up on. You are lucky that your guy looks over at Asher. Did not lead you astray. We are protected here. But there is something that is wrong with these days getting darker. The clouds encroach even on this blessed land. The howls and the fires. There is movement in the pack. They are waiting for something. You. you wish to stay the night. Yes, it would be much preferable to sleep in the woods. No, we traveled a very long way here. And I feel like we have a lot to talk about. Even if you can't lend us people, which we can hash out the details later, any knowledge that you might have is good. And, and, and a long talk might be helpful. He thinks for a moment and then looks at Escher. I believe you and I have to speak. Following up on our correspondences. And he steps forward and says, yes, of course. I must ask you a question. Is Box your ancestor had gifted to Victoria Isaacs if it's still at her residence. And he nods slowly. Yes, might be ways. Given that we are dealing with a raven child that are common foe had mentioned appearing beyond mist and piercing through them I believe it has parts to play the secrets that she and I discussed her last trip before she passed I would very much like to Look at the box. Very well. You and I shall meet tonight. The mother of the child has gone missing as well. Would send my own men to look for her, but I cannot risk any more disappearances. The more the morale breaks, the more that hope fades, and once hope is gone, you will have nothing left. We may, we may want to weigh the wolves or something rowdy in the mm -hmm. distance. Oh, they've quieted themselves. Please continue. Press off. Yes. Thoughts are revenge. You will come with me. My guards will escort you to the stony camp. You will be welcome there. Fine by me. So we shouldn't come into the town or the city? Are we not welcome there? I would prefer no bands of strangers coming under cover of darkness. That's a good point. So they're waiting until morning. 
yes, the light of morning will put people at ease. You understand. Sure. Is there anything we should know about the Masai before we meet them for the first time and try not to offend them and be generally uh, uh, good strangers, friends? Treat their customs and them. each and every one of them with respect, and they will respect you. They are the ones that welcome strangers of all kinds. You will not be out of place there. Perfect. Escher, um, Escher, like, points to am I riding with you? Yes. You talk as he mounts his horse, and Escher, uh, uh, gets on the, on the back of the, the war horse. And looks back and says, Are you going to be all right? Yeah, we'll be fine. This is, uh, we've, I think we've uh, uh, escaped burning to death, so uh, it's all built from here. Yeah, it's pretty normal for us. We're all pretty good at talking to people. Well, we must discuss our county duties. I think there may be hope here yet. I'll fetch you in the morning. Alright. Good luck. Who's what? And with that, Alexi and Escher uh, join most of the knights as they ride off. And one stays behind and uh, gives you the directions to the Vistani camp nearby the town of Alok. So, um, one of the guards stays behind, um, and as you see, the the knights all take off as uh, they ride into um, this, this village that surrounds the castle. Uh, it's sprawling. It really looks like a, like a city um, as, uh, as, they, as they, they ride off. And the, the the knight that stays behind uh, gives you um, the directions to um, to where the Vistani camp is, the primary one, and, and tells you that there's a it's basically a, a town, a small town uh, that's you know despite it being mostly tents and, 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 and uh, temporary structures, uh, it's it's pretty built up. And that you can just walk in, and you'll be you'll be welcome before allowing you to go about your uh, your evening drink. Unless there's anything you'd like to ask them. I got nothing. As the inquisitive one, I feel like the respect that I want to show is like not trying to pry away all of their questions. I just want to be like, okay, thank you for the hospitality, and uh, we'll keep on our way. Yeah, we'll second it. We'll, we'll we'll do. We'll just try not to make any trouble. Uh, are we going to be safe here? Are there any customs we should abide by? The, the guard assures you that uh, you will be safe, that they are friendly, and that, that the Vistani are the... that the, it's the... it's the humans of the... Um, of the city of... of uh, New Zarevich. The, uh, the, the... the town, that, the city that is around Castle Barovia. Um, is that they're becoming increasingly more nervous and skittish as rumors about abductions and howling in the surrounding hills and the Beastwood, as it's, since, as it's come to be called in uh, recent years, has been getting more intense and people are very much on edge. And do we like have a sense that the beast wood is that kind of circle of forest that's yep. the black trees? Yeah, you're able to do this very easily, and I'll just say it right: is that the 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 lizard cultists have basically been like sneaking in, probably for a long time, tapping them of all of their dragon fire oil, which kills the tree, gives it the gives it the face, and you realize now the true nature of what what they were doing, um, and that. They've been able to, to do that, and now they're obviously all dead. But um, that was 
that that it was it it seemed it would you get the sense that it would have taken decades to to uh, tap as many trees as they had, but basically the remnants of that sprawling mixing in with the classic dark um, dark black forests of Skethernil, uh really kind of create this 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 forest called the Beastwood. As we are moving towards the Vistani camp, uh, what would I know about werewolves? How about hmm, history? Well, yeah, history check. Up to you. An advantage. Being Strigan. That's a 20. Oh. Uh, history will be in 29. Um, I'm you know still rolling really, like hot fire. You really are. I would say so it's orange orange dice. that yeah, you good. think back to when you first encountered Count Kraskov. And you thought about and saw that thing. And you thought about all of the lore and what you had known about vampires and it being such a part of the stories told. As children, you knew that they were real. Very similar to worlds. You know that these are humanoids that can take animal shape, wolf, wolf shape, not just in just the, and you would always wonder. Um, and the stories always were that, you know, that there were large wolf, wolf packs uh, not that far from Kesselfeld. And you would tell Milo when he wasn't behaving that those were werewolves out, and that the, the howling that he heard would be the werewolves who would snatch him up and tear him limb from him. And. Uh, and maybe you wouldn't have done that, but it would be a scary story. Uh, it would be a scary story that you would that, that would be told, um, and basically the classic folklore that that most that's common knowledge amongst us would be common knowledge in Korovakia, as well as all sorts of, of spooky creatures. So then, my only other question is: How often did these things leak from Skethernil into Korovakia, and that the town guard would have to like deal with things like that? Often, not very often. I would say that you've never heard of an actual werewolf um, sighting, and I would say that you that you know historically that werewolves. I would say that historically, with that, with the the the, the role that you got, that werewolves you knew historically would have been um, that they were in Cor- that they were in Corvacia, and that they especially were in Scathlin, okay. and that. There hadn't really been any sightings in a very long time, especially since since you've been alive. Got it. Cool. And yes, I would say I would say with that role, you would have known that there that uh, several uh, centuries ago that there was a common, uh, relatively common, that the border towns. Would have to deal with lycanthrope raids, uh, particularly oh, werewolf shit. raids, and some towns entirely got wiped out. But um, ever since then, um, in recent years, that there haven't been any sightings at all. Which you know, that having to deal with the uh, the nightmares from Scathernil uh, was obviously a relief to to be rid of that. So whether we're being escorted or we're just walking as a yeah. group towards this this uh, Vistani camp, I'm not would being be, escorted. I'm saying that basically you are able. So to we're just walk. walking. Yep. I would just be in in a overly uh, matter of fact way, not realizing that it's kind of like a horrifying fact. I'd be recanting this history and just like trying to pass the time and like looking at the like Toa's face as I'm like talking about like lycanthropy, uh, lycanthropy raids and things. It almost doesn't register to me that it's like actually a scary thing. I'm just like telling history and trying to tell stories and like give some backstory as we travel. To yeah. My friends. Well, that sounds terrible. I mean, I'm glad that that when you were growing up, they weren't really a thing. But I mean, it was sort of like a, like a like a boogeyman that at least kept you out of the woods, right? I, I, I mean, I guess you're right. I never really thought of it that way. I guess I just kind of accepted it as as a story, as a part of history, and it was just the way things were. But no, I, I mean, I personally have never seen one. Yes, I, this, this, the history of the sightings have, have been long before I was ever alive, so uh, I guess uh, that's kind of a good point. I mean, if that girl had just been afraid of werewolves or some other kind of boogeyman, maybe she wouldn't have been captured. I mean, even I had a boogeyman growing up. Really? Yeah. He was, his name was Hector Mancrab. What? Hector, Hector Mancrab. H- Hector Mancrab? Yes. 
It was very terrifying. Yeah, and you were, you were scared of this you, Hector man crab? Very scared. Imagine a man crab, a crab the size of a man, or a Goliath in this case. And his name was Hector? Well, his name was Hector, yes. And why? Was, is there a story behind him? No, there, there was that we, we used to oh, sing a song about him. Crab. There's a song about Hector Minecraft. I would love to hear it. Who, who, I'd say, Palma, you Are you sure? It's kind of scary. I mean, we've got a lot of time to kill. It's, it's, it's very scary. I think we can handle it. We fought a golden dragon. All right. Just get ready to be very scared. Uh, all right. All right. Hector Minecraft. I'm ready. I'll provide a little background. Who lives in the coconut under a tree? Hector Man Crab, you can join in with me. It's, oh, it's uh, I didn't realize there was audience participation. Ka- Kitan is orange and angry, is he? Hector, Hector Man, Crab, Man Crab. If keeping your fingers is something you wish, Hector, Hector Man Crab. Crab. Then stay close to shore and feed him some fish. Hector, Hector Man Crab. Crab. And then the rest is just Hector Man Crab. Hector Man Crab. Just a few more times. Hector yeah. Man Crab. I, I just want to ask right. you a question, and I don't want you to be offended. Are you still scared of Hector Mancrab? I don't think he exists. Well, I've never seen him. Um, yeah, so then you don't know that he doesn't exist. Well, I, mean, I think they just told us that so that we didn't go out into the uh, ocean and die and drown. Yeah, I but, need to talk to you. I need to ask you a question. Uh, when uh, is the last time that you do some fish out for Hector Mancrab? Oh, not since I was a, a boy. I mean, I was very young. I mean, it made me fish a lot. I like fished every day, oh, and I would just throw it up in the ocean to, to oh, feed Hector Mancrab. Although he lived in a coconut under a tree, why did I? Out of character, how tall is Toa? He is a close to eight feet. He's like seven and a half feet tall. Um, Toa, again, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you're 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 nearly eight feet tall. You weigh something like six hundred pounds. You could literally tear me in two pieces, and, and you're scared of a of a crab that's like the size of a man. Well, if I could tear you into two pieces, imagine what Hector Mancrab could do to me! <laughs> Think of it! He's probably twice my height! Oh, he could snip me in half with one claw! <laughs> if he exists. I mean, I don't think he exists. I think he just kept me safe and out of the water so I didn't go, you know, out in the ocean at night and, and have a cramp and drown. I see. After dinner. Well, thank you for sharing that, uh, that tribal tale with us. That was, that was very kind of you. Thank for you. sharing just, some of your history with with some of my history, I'm, I'm just saying it's you know it, I don't think it I don't think he exists. Well, maybe we can rely on Caprice to come up with some sort of werewolf awareness song that maybe will prevent future kidnappings. I mean, I would be all for that. A werewolf. A werewolf. That is a great working title. You are a master of poetry and <laughs> and the written word. I'll, I'll get to work on it. Well, you could use, I mean, if you wanted to do it to the tune of Hector Mancrab, I mean, I'll, that'd be fine. I wouldn't it, be... It would definitely be a new one in Korovakia and Skeffler. You could be like, who lives in the beastie wood under some trees. There's a start. No, I'll think about it. it. I mean, no pressure. You know, there's just like the lives of innocent children at stake. Anyway, I just want to. Go. <laughs> he's 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 in the creative mode. Well, I'm just saying that the, the, the existence of some kind of boogeyman is very important for young children, and I think we should establish some horrific, terrifying <laughs> thing that will rip you from well, them. As long as we limb. don't upset the count, all right? We are in his town, in his village, and he's watching over these people, and we do need to respect that. I, I would think that you would be gung ho about that. Well, yeah, of course, of course. No, I mean, we can talk about the aware wolf song later. No, he said it, not me. Oh, it was all him. Well, he said it first. Yeah, he said it first. A werewolf. Oh, the aware wolf. Like oh, aware. Like, oh, I thought he was just talking about a werewolf. No, he was, said it. And that's you why said I it, like, Oh my god, it's a pun. Well, I. But puns aren't really your thing. They're more caprices. Stuff, I, so I, I was. Why that's I, why I said that he is a mastery of poetry and the written word. He's truly a clever individual. Anyway, we should probably just get to camp. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
We, we I'm going to go with this. For- <laughs> <laughs> we're just like standing there in the middle of a study camp having this conversation, <laughs> like not realizing we arrived. The rest of the entire walk, I'm humming uh, Hector Mancrab. Hector Mancrab. Thank you so much, Kai Trool, for the follow. Hey, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You walk. The, the the location of the camp is not far, uh, not too far. And as you finish the discussion about Hector Man Crab, you see that while the rest of the valley, as it is approaching midnight, has gone to sleep, that it's mostly dark, just the very faint and few and far between lights that dot this valley. There is a warm glow emanating from this clearing in uh, these be- the beautiful dragon flame trees. Uh, not too far from uh, the, the village that is just down the road. And you can see um, one of the guard towers of this, uh, of this walled town uh, off down uh, around a bend in the road. And you actually realize that the terrain of this, uh, this road is, um, or of this valley, is far less um, treacherous. It is still treacherous, but not nearly as brutal as the rest of Skethmanel. And um, and despite that, um, the it, you still get the sense that it would be difficult for uh, most of the horses that you've seen uh, in in uh, in Corvacia to traverse, especially the speeds that uh, Alexia and his knights have made it. You get the sense that whatever horses that they had been riding are uh, are able to handle that kind of ter- uh, terrain. And you see the warm glow, and then as you approach, you hear the sound of music sailing through the air on the cool uh, night breeze. You hear the drums, and you hear uh, these stringed instruments and uh, various horns playing. As the smell of cooking food hits your nostrils, drifting mm. just like the just like the, the the music, and the smell of uh, of a large roaring uh, fire, uh, the the ash and uh, coals drifting through the air, and it seems so inviting. As you see these large tents uh, of, of, of brilliant colors erected in this clearing, as you hear the voices of singing and, and cheering and laughing people, as you see that there are no walls to this camp that's, that the guard, the, the night was, was right, it looks like a town. But uh, of all these 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 tents, and you hear the uh, the uh, the sound of, of 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 hooves on on the ground, and the the occasional whinnying of of horses as you make your way to this large encampment. As you hear the the creaking of wheels as someone as someone passes you, uh, leading a horse. There's a wagon full of all sorts of strange-looking relics and artifacts and knickknacks. And despite your strangeness to this valley, they don't even give you a second look. As you enter the Vistani camp. What's a girl gotta do to get a second look around here? I think we should take that with uh, a little bit of grace and be happy that we're not drawing unwanted attention. But more importantly, I smell food and it smells really good. And as much as I appreciate uh, Escher's hospitality, this smells like really, really good. Well, I mean, they'll probably maybe f- perhaps feed us dinner if uh, we could p- pay them for it too. Yeah, I mean, of course. Let's go buy some food. Absolutely, yeah, we have to do that. I'm starving. I'm really hungry. I agree. Look around and you see that uh, you have to kind of dodge out of the way as you hear laughing as three children are chasing each other. Um, despite it being close to midnight, as uh, they're laughing and, and you see that one is um, that the one in the back uh, has a, a shaggy 
uh, thing that looks almost like a wolf pelt uh, over over his head as he's uh, raising up his hands, right? Arr, I'm going to eat you up! And he's chasing these two girls that are laughing as they're running away. Hey, that kind of looks like Loopy. And um, you you see and you see them running off as you then turn towards the smell of food, and you see that uh, that there's on the, the, the this large fire that there's several spits and uh, on one is is a whole uh, goat and you see another one that has a, a whole boar that are just ro- that's roasting and there's also there's these large ovens that seem to have rows and rows of of, of, of baking uh, bread. Oh man, Toa, look at that! Oh, and wow. then I feel like we haven't had a hot meal in a while. I haven't had a, a, a whole bowl roasted over a fire since I left home. And then you hear a voice shout out. You keep hearing voices. And one shouts out very clearly in your direction. That is Toa Kamanoi! Oh, is you turn and you see a large, a large man with dark hair uh, and olive skin and all sorts of uh, rings and jewelry and colorful clothing as he uh, has uh, a huge belt, all sorts of uh, trinkets and knickknacks. I slowly as, reach my hand into my uh, as, my cloak, my jacket. I uh, look like I'm tuning my <laughs> And he goes, and feel exactly men and oh capriccio di sesto and then and lufty and in the iris of these hands. Hello. I turn to who do I see? And you, you see this large man that is 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 not quite as tall as Toa, but uh, uh, it is but definitely uh, taller than the rest of you. As he walks forward, as and you see that he has a, a dark hair and a great uh, big bushy uh, beard. As he looks forward, and says, you are heroes of legend. I have heard your stories in Erios. I recognize the group of you. I have heard the the, the, the defeat of the Elder Tempest and Flamebender, who rose from the ground. What do you mean? And you, your great, the sacrifice of your mother that saved Kaviri from the dragon of fire of the cult of the dragon god that protects our very valley, warped and corrupted his wishes were. I have seen and heard your stories in the great, the, in the great masquerade. The famous. Are we famous? What the famous? Uh, uh, well, I did I kill. I it. killed a guy named Flamebender. I did. He was a big volcano guy oh, at the oh, end. Hold on, hold on. How, how do you know all of this? But you're was, listening. We're famous. There was a great play with all of your deeds in Kaliri. I just returned from Erios. Oh, man. With my family and, and, and friends, we pre- pre- performed. There was, there was a, a, a I, I, I met in, in, in our, our, the, the, the patron who invited us and gave us of the, one of the most generous donations. It, it was, oh, it was, it was <laughs> yeah. a, a tabaxi just like you, Iris of the Sands, warrior's heart. She invited us in, and and, and, and then we oh, we, we went to Koravakia, and they did not care for us. Very bad. No one wanted us to perform, or it was a bad decision. Warrior's heart lives in Kaliri now, like up in the trees. She said she was 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 visiting. So let me get this straight. You you put on the play. No, I saw the play. Who put on the play? Music? It was it was Eric Hukra, and, and, and there was was lizard folk, and I saw I saw some gnomes and tabaxi, and it was a beautiful sight. I guess they must be telling. There was a bugbear what... that played you. A gnome played you. Well, that's kind of weird. I mean, I, I'm you were taller than I would have expected. Well, yeah, I'm like I'm like a human male. I'm like six, almost six feet tall. I tell people I'm six feet tall, but I'm not quite six feet tall. The point is, uh, they must be telling the story of what happened while we were there. Uh, are they celebrating us? I don't want people just like telling uh, uh, people about us. That could be dangerous. Uh, well, is it a good thing? About? We're famous. I don't know if being famous is a good thing, Wolfie. 
Why not? Because we've been doing a lot of really important and dangerous work, and, and part of that has been us keeping a low profile. And now, somehow you know our names. I, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me. So change your name, it's easy peasy, if you're so nervous. I guess I could go back by whatever it was, Sundu Power Bottom, or whatever it was. <laughs> oh, I was just looking through my notes, I have it. It's Albert... Sunshot Power yeah, Bottom. It was something like Albert Sunshot Power Bottom. <laughs> I, I can maybe tack onto the third in case that's too soon what I was using before. This is great. No, a reputation, Felix. This, this is fantastic news. Yeah. What's your name, friend? My name is Alessandro. Alessandro, uh, my name is Caprice Sesto. You can call me Caprice. How's it going? Uh, I'm sorry, I completely <laughs> forgot my manners. I didn't mean to freak out. Felix Ackerman. I know who you are. It is. I'm, I'm sure you have not heard of me. It is a great honor. I am but a, a humble magician. I, my my tricks and and the magic that I perform is 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 nothing compared to the greatness I have heard. Is it all or all these stories true? Uh, well, I, I mean, from what you've told us, it certainly sounds like there hasn't been any embellishment, and everything that happened was factual and to history. Well, come to, you. You will be my. You can stay with with, with me and my, my my family. You you are welcome here. I, it will be a great honor. Would you like? Are you hungry? Would you like? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. If you're offering, I'm yes. hungry. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, we were just actually looking for some grub. And you don't have to to to, 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 to put us out for free. We don't want to, uh, you know, impose upon you. We're happy. But to, if you do, to, we wouldn't say to, no. To pay or, or to trade or help or, or something. We're, we're we're actually here to help. There's the whole thing we're trying to figure out. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, food would be great, and we appreciate your hospitality. If there's anything we can do for you while we're here, we're happy to help. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, the rest of my family uh, is sleeping. They, we we we. Not too long ago, arrived back from a, a long journey from Korvaki after uh, performing in Erios, and uh, one of our own went missing, and it it was it's been hard on the rest of us. Was was this in the, uh, the, the the woods of the beast over there? Yes, of course. It was, right. it, We've been hearing that a lot. We're we, really sorry to hear about your loss. Uh, it was my fault. I I, thank you. You are too kind. I, I, we should have pushed through. The horses were tired, and I decided I made the decision to not push through the night. And when we camped not very far from the valley, that is when she disappeared. There's, there's no way to know that that was the reason for any of that. You may may have been raided, and perhaps more lives were lost if you had been uh, tired to push through. Them. My decision as the leader of that caravan. And now there are two of us missing her mother. Anyway, no, no time for such sad things. No, I... But we have been... We have just recently stopped looking for you. For that, that is why the rest of my family we are filled with sorrow and are in for really But I am here. I am your humble host. I don't want to open up any wounds that are working on healing or, or, or belabor the point, but if you tell us who these people are and, and just keep this between us, we're looking for missing people, and if you describe them, we will absolutely look for them. I, I don't really know. We don't know what's going on here, but I'm dedicating myself to finding these people. We know that there have been children missing, and my own brother is missing, and I'm not going to rest until I find him or these kids, and anybody else who may have gone missing. So if you just describe them, we can we can try to help. Did you really do that? Of course. Even for a Vistani. It, it doesn't matter who. The point is that these people are, whatever's going on is, is evil, and it's really bad. And we're gonna get to the bottom of it one way or another. You truly are heroes. <laughs> you have an eternal friend in Alessandro Takash. Uh, and he, he, he I don't know about grabs heroes. Your, uh, uh, grabs your arm and he, he shakes it. <laughs> come, come, do you prefer uh, uh, pork or goat? Uh, both. <laughs> uh, pork for me. And uh, he 
he uh, he triple triple uh, servings for my friend Toa. Oh, I know. <laughs> and uh, I like that. <laughs> he, uh, he's like, you all make yourselves comfortable. And he pulls um, out, uh, and you see, there's actually um, a great number of of, of uh, wooden benches. This, this large man uh, g- uh, grabs uh, grabs one end. And he uh, waves his hand, and a magical purple hand appears in thin air and helps him uh, carry the carry the bench and place it down. And he calls over some friends who are playing music, and uh, they they start to perform uh, a, a song, and, and they're all laughing and dancing. And uh, he waves his hand, and the purple hand continues to float and uh, carve off uh, a large, just two massive trays of sliced pork and goat with uh, with uh, bread and um, mm. and, and and basically uh, mm. uh, I wish it was these real. Small, <laughs> these small tables um, uh, get get pulled uh, d- dragged in the middle of all of you, and uh, this kind of communal style of eating. As some of the Vistani come in and grab some as well, and uh, they're like they're whispering and they say they'll come up and they shake your hand. Uh, the ones seem to have the story seems to have spread. As soon as uh, that caravan got back, they had been telling the story that they had seen. How accurate is the story in this play? Like from what we're hearing. Does it sound embellished at all? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. It, sound, it sounds like the. It's just like Kaliri had literally burnt to the ground. And then uh, when Alkira the Thunder Fury emerged, the trees regrew in the city and everyone was raised from the dead. Uh, and it sounded like um, uh, that. The, the story of the fist fight with Toa, mm. or not a fist fight, the one on one between Toa and. Um, uh, and Makutu. Thank you. I don't know how, how I was, went uh, through my notes. <laughs> I took all the notes in a different book. Um, is that uh, when when he transformed, the rest of you didn't join in, and Toa transformed into like a giant sea elemental. Oh! And it was basically volcano versus ocean uh, and wind that basically. It's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of cool. And um, and very similar uh, embellishments, and uh, the and it seemed like the, the there was a great leader of of uh, of the group as Warriors Hark, who seemed to be the leader of the group uh, in that ah, situation. I see. I see. And everyone like she was really the coolest, and everyone really loved her, <laughs> and everyone said that you know she was they weren't as strong as she was, uh, and that was a little bit embellished. And of then course, um, of course. And then obviously the bugbear Zorbeck uh, got was uh, there was basically constant constant <laughs> problems. And actually there was a, basically a full C plot of a romance that they had. And, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Caprice is rubbing out his hair. I can't so power mad. word explode. <laughs> He's so mad. Oh, He's so mad. <laughs> and what is the name of this troop that is putting on these plays? <laughs> Oh. He steals the bag of holding and pulls out a portable hole out of his jacket. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, it's the, very Kaliri treetop layers. <laughs> yeah. that's, nice. that's actually the name of it. Yes, Kaliri yeah, treetop layers. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. The Kaliri yeah, treetop layers. Um, and so, what was the name of of Owl Jones? I'm trying to. I haven't been able to find of the guy who turned into the Tempest. You mean no, no, no. Uh, that was Commodus, the 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 young owl that we like. Oh, the young elevated. guy. You know, I actually that forget. was what I was looking for. Too. I honestly forget. Who defected basically? Yes, he's basically the new His leader. Mother was. You get the dumb sense he that, that he didn't. No, no. he wasn't dumb. He, he was timid. kind hearted. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was very timid. He was. He his we, he watched his matriarch of his family get murked by Commodus. We had to reconfidence him. Um, I was looking for that. I, I don't looking for how long ago this was. During my you're, other, you're pulling my other back book. stuff that happened in like May 2018 and shit. It's like crazy. Yeah. Um. I got my mouse. Um. Oberos. Minerva. Oberos. That's right. Thank you. Oh yeah. Oberos Minerva. Yeah. yeah thank you. No and you get the sense that he did he that that Alessandro and his uh, troop. Um, and his caravan didn't really necessarily mingle with the the, the, the current nobility, but um, the uh, and he tells you that uh, a great number of, of elevators and ramps had been installed uh, in this point, and that there was actually 
uh, and that, that, that the many of the forest dwellers were also now living, or the floor, the forest floor dwellers were living in Kaliri and the other towns as well. And there was a lot more uh, intermingling, and he excitedly, uh, but was a little bit more trepidatious about mentioning uh, several of the um, something that that. that that probably gave you a little bit of a pause as he's telling about uh, his time in Kaliri um, is the number of uh, Korvakian soldiers that seem to be there as well. Um, and uh, like around the city, or yep, yep, yep. And you know that there had been peace, right? And uh, and, right. And, 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 a, and a treaty that had been signed, <laughs> and uh, the ravens flying around as well. Um, so. Uh, you, you, but it is very highly embellished. Um, and you're able to enjoy a great feast of the meal. He brings out Yum. a huge, um, a huge, uh, a jo- uh, not, yeah, basically a, a big clay jar of wine. And, uh, he fills up all of your, uh, all of your cups. Right. And, uh, he, he, uh, he, he sits down and he, uh, gives uh, takes a plate for himself, and uh, he's like, I cannot believe that, that in my own my own time sitting and breaking bread with, with me is out of the heroes. And where, where is is Harja? This the love story with Zorbek. It was beautiful. I and just, it made me weep. I would just take my hat off and like he 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 runs his fingers his 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 ringed fingers through his beard. As as he thinks and, and he, he, his his face is is uh, almost uh, overly dramatically uh, uh, filled with tears, uh, fake fake tears. I um, uh, I she has uh, she's doing her own uh, thing. She, she's on her uh, she's on her own path she's right now. She's with her father. Um, yes, that she's with her father. Uh, they, they, I don't know if they. Uh, I know that that was what she was looking for. I am so happy there for her. Go. There you go. <laughs> uh, the thing with oh, Zorbeck. Beautiful. Uh, then finally they can all live together. Oh, it is a beautiful thing to no, see. No, uh, Zorbeck. Uh, he also is on his own path. <laughs> he, uh, they unfortunately uh, had to uh, part ways. <laughs> That is not what the play said, but you lived it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, I, uh, when does the play exactly stop telling our story? Because we're still alive and having adventures. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, a lot's happened since... Yeah, yeah. since Everyone lived happily ever after in the treetops, and they all took a bow. The players, oh, it was beautiful. I wish... I, I, I'm going to... to uh, start making costumes to tell the same story and put on the same play here. Well, if you... If you want, I, I think one of the very small ways that we could pay you back for all of this hospitality is maybe tell you some of our new adventures that nobody's really heard about yet, and maybe you. Is it cool? Perhaps a, 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 a yes! another, another arc or another act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could tell more tales. That we will put on a far better and more accurate. Representation in production. This guy's my Then the three top players. Just say, I like and he extends his hand, and there's a big uh, poof of, of firework looking sparks of magic as it swirls around. And he um, he uh, he's beaming uh, at you, and, and his uh, his uh, his large uh, uh, gut is almost uh, kind of swaying as he moves. Uh, this large, gregarious man as um, he. Uh, is immediately um, he immediately uh, uh, pulls up a a, uh, a chair with uh, this very plush pillow on it, and he sits down. Like, you must tell me all of your adventures. I will commit them to memory. Um, I, I I have an idea, and and I huddle up and I say, uh, uh, Caprice, if you want to take the lead in actually telling the story and and, and maybe adding some music, and, and you can back him up with the ukulele and 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 put in some some things here and there, and Lufty maybe. Do some interpretive dance and add your own little flair to it. Uh, I have an idea of what I can do with the campfire. All right. Where, where are we? Are there so much information that we well, can't reveal? What, 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 just give her, give him the gist of the of the, the the epic battle with Rajani and how we learned that she was this horrific cult leader, and you know, then and we can tell the story of defeating the dragon. That's a classic. 
Gold dragon. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So my goal is while uh, <laughs> while we do this this joint storytelling, I want to basically uh, control flame at, at the part of us fighting Rajani and have like the the fire uh, dance and turn into like a flaming dragon with us like dancing around it and like fighting it and like trying to do like a cool little control flame thing to like help Caprice tell the story of the, the epic battle with Rajani and while, you know, everybody's doing their thing. It would be impossible for me to tell the story in nothing but like prose or like rhyming prose or song. Like an epic poem. It would absolutely be epic poem style and I could start with us yeah. uh, traveling over land from um, the name of the city. Uh, Kaleri. Kaleri, thank you. Uh, Kaleri over the mountains, um, fighting a yeti, and uh, um, uh, arriving at the orc uh, town. Our, 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 our uh, defense is being down, you know, trusting this person implicitly in these kinds of details. Oh, Captain Freewing lost his hand and, and was really beat up, and then that guy turned into a virus, turned him into a gnome. Remember that part? Well, we, we, you know, maybe. We, we, we can tell a story and they can choose to keep whatever parts they want to keep. Oh, okay. oh we, do, we definitely do the resurrection moment, for sure. Yeah. For sure. The reincarnation moment, right? Reincarnation, reincarnation moment. And that moment could use a little pizzazz, perhaps <laughs> a green <laughs> gnome. Uh, uh, no. Okay. okay. an orc. Is, it, is that is it more exciting? Well, yeah, wait till you hear his uh, how the story, uh, well, um, uh, he, yes, green gnome's great. Green gnome's great. <laughs> I cannot wait to see how he lives happily ever after! And he's like, I just <laughs> But I, I just look at Caprice and I'm like, I can't tell that part of the story. <laughs> I would like you to make a performance check at advantage as oh. Felix is helping you with uh, both so of you are using magic. Some dancing flames. And and Lufty's interpretive dance and. and uh, uh, I'm like playing some ukulele. Your music, yeah. right, backing up. Uh, yeah, just very lightly, you know what I mean? A performance check at advantage? Yep. 29. 29. Uh, Alessandro is absolutely enthralled by the story. He is laughing, he is crying, he's cheering. As you're telling the story, you all are able to... Um, to, to tell and embellish however much you want. Sure. And he probably knows that you're embellishing, but he doesn't care. He's all in and offers ways to embellish it himself. And <laughs> obviously, Herja exits the story as the you know, gold yes. dragon, you know, captures them up, uh, the father and daughter. And, and, and her final words to you is, uh, you know, I will return uh, to you, my love, Caprice, and Zorbeck really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just make that a really nice I crime. want everyone yeah, to I know that. Zorbeck sucks. And he's a smelly <laughs> butt. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you I actually just... told him it was a gnome because he was actually a halfling. I, don't know, I, was, uh, the, I wasn't sure if you told him it was actually a gnome. Um, uh, I don't. I didn't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fair uh, if he was transformed into a halfling, we would. I, I guess we would have stayed and kept that accurate. Okay. That I, I wasn't sure if that, 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 that was probably just it's us for that. Two, two years yeah. ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say that we would just be spending the evening trying to entertain these people who are being so hospitable to us, yes. as a way to thank them in a minor way. Yes, okay, and you do that, and after, afterwards, uh, the plates are empty, the meal, it, it is delicious. Mm -hmm. um, and and for as, as for as delicious, as surprisingly delicious, as Brutus's cooking was, um, it, it, there's something about the Vistani cooking, as simple as it is, that just makes it feel all the more hard. Uh, and you feel a warmth, and despite, you know, traveling on the on the backs of these massive gargoyles in this land of death, there is life here. And all of the Vistani that see you, there is no sort of strip, they, they don't seem to care at all that you're a Goliath at the backseat, that you're not the Horkorovaki, right? Um, they welcome you into the camp all the same. And um, are we like celebrities? Like, are people like whispering? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. And looking at oh, us, like, man, <laughs> that would make Felix so uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, I'm weirdly picturing the like um, uh, in Return of the Jedi when after after they finally make peace with all of the um, fuzzy what the fuck Ewoks. Ewoks. Thank you. I was trying to say Wookies, but that's not right. All the Ewoks at that point, they're just like so about them and just talking and I don't know. That's that's what I'm thinking. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, afterwards, uh, Alessandro, uh, uh, he slaps his knee, and he's, he looks at all of you and says, ha, 
I, Misha is going to lose her mind when she gets to meet you. I almost want to wake her up right now, but I'm glad that she's able to get some sleep. Things she has been down lately, not her normal self. What's wrong? She was very good friends with the child who went missing several weeks ago. And Sofiana was like another mother to her, it was like an aunt. She was like a sister to me. What's the name of the kid? Names. Well, Eves, I, I hope she will turn up. Valeska. So, again, if you can keep this between us, because we don't want to spread fear or, or confusion or, or, or any kind of false hope, we're looking for Valeska. How do you know? How are you looking for Valeska? Well, from what we understand, she's just one of the many children who have gone missing. Uh, we are going to retire. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm bringing you wine, okay? And uh, he guides you all into uh, one of the tents that's there. Strike this out, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you see that the, be- the the that several of the musicians go off to sleep, but there are a couple that still continue to. I'll play a little bit together, and there still seems to be lingering in the camp. It is probably approaching uh, two in the morning now. Um, as there is, the, 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 there is some sleep that's coming to this uh, camp, but there's still life here. And uh, you see that there's a, a series of tents, and, and one seems to be, uh, be completely dark, uh, and another that's not too far from it. Uh, Alessandro uh, leads you into, and it's filled with this. Um, uh, this rich uh, burning ens- uh, incense and it's glowing with this uh, strange shimmering uh, purplish uh, light as he uh, he uh, snaps his fingers and waves his hand as uh, the uh, the tent illuminates and uh, you see that there's a number of, of pillows to sit around in a table and uh, he he places the uh, the jug of wine and, and has uh, his floating magical hand uh, a pour uh, ladle out uh, another drink for all of you. Uncharacteristically, yeah. I've uh, been imbibing all evening. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not, I'm yeah. swept up in the in the fanfare and the the, the really just lovely atmosphere. Um, so we sit down and I say, uh, I, I I don't know why, but I. You can ask my friends. I, I'm usually a pretty distrustful person, but I feel like I can trust you. This wine is really fantastic, by the way. It is, it is very good. And and I want to... It's from the Wizard of Vine. Well, before you leave, uh, I oh. must take. I must send some away with you. Well, uh, that would be yeah. lovely. I know Wiz- Lufty's favorite thing in the world is wine. Wizard's wine? You're a wizard. I am a wizard. Oh, it's, it's for you, Felix. Maybe I could make this. Uh, we're getting distracted. Do I have any of the wine? Uh, from the yes, the monster from Brother Gruber. Brother Gruber. Brother Gruber. I want to say that we drank all that when we were with your mom. Well, she had the unlimited un- unlimited you? wine skin. Yeah. Oh, she gave you. Yes, but that was not. Well, no, I thought it had like special properties, and we used it up. Uh, actually, I, Toa might have some left. Let me take I will one. say that for for all time, I still have, have a, cask. a little cask left. Of I have a cask of Lapuor Drevelry. Bingo. Oh, so it is the special wine. It was, uh, well, beer. it's a beer. It's a, a beer. beer. So, yeah. Um. Do, do you want? Do you want to break into this? I've carried a really long way, so I mean, you know. Where have you been keeping that? It's, I mean, look, look inside. I mean, this is like really trippy stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, the bag yeah, of don't get too close. Don't put your hand there. <laughs> hey, you, we're getting distracted. Yeah, I just, they're being so kind to us and sharing all these wonderful things. I just, you know, let's trade. I mean, I, I wouldn't say no if we wanted to just crack into that too. I know this isn't too. like the happiest party time, yeah. but... Well, but it could be. It could be. No, no, he, no. Look at this guy. Trading, to the cast. trading gifts and culture between new friends is one of life's great friends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Hi, thank you, my new friends. Cheers. 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 I, am, I am feasting when, and drinking ah. with heroes. Ah. And he just, ah. I have always wanted to go to Kirstein and never had the chance. It is beautiful. 
and he dr- and he chugs the entire thing, and a literal tear comes to his eye Amazing. and runs into his uh, great big bushy dark beard. Uh, I know it's good, huh? Um, it is delicious. It, it makes one want to weep. I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. No, it's fine. I, I, again, I, I feel like I'm, I, I'm repeating myself. I don't want to cause worry, or, 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 I don't. So I think you should keep this between us. But we, as we understand it, many children have been going missing, and that's why I set out all those many, many months ago was my brother's been gone for a very long time, and, and I think there might be some connection. But the point is that our paths cross with Valeska's path, and we understand it that her mother is also missing. Is this... Sophia, is that what you said? Sophiana. Sophiana. Okay. I'm not with her. Right. Uh, we, we, then we know... We, we've, been, we've been made aware of their disappearance, and, and we have an idea of where they might be headed. And we're hoping that we can head them off or, or, or find them before any harm befalls them and get them back and figure out what's happened to all the other kids as well. I think I know where Sofiana is now, if she still is alive. Yeah. Any information you have at all would be helpful. And he says, I am glad that you gave me this beautiful ale before I count story. Sofiana, the mother of sweet Valeska, after her daughter was taken, she knew that it was was the silver pine pack. What the count and the order of the feather would like us all to think is that there are no werewolves near Barovia. Oh, you hear the loud howl that seems to echo and boom over. It's a lonesome, melancholy wolf howl as it it booms that and fades. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> as you hear a wolf howl. Does it sound like a wolf, or does it sound different than a, like a normal wolf howl? It sounds like a wolf howl. Okay. I'll say that it just sounds like a wolf. See? You can hear it. They are close. You... You understand we are on... We are at the age of the girl. This is how we prefer it, but... To the... North and the East is where they hunt the missing people. I know it was them. It's just, it's such a shame. There's no reason why we cannot all be friends. No reason why we cannot survive and live together. Isn't it hard enough in this world to live, to create a good life with our families, to be separated at yeah. odds it is not hard enough! But my decision to care the howlings incessant that night. I even thought it was strange. I saw a pack. I heard scared deer. I heard the, the howling. I thought it was just a, a normal wolf pack. Perhaps dire wolves. Hunting. I believe, I believe it was the silver pine. I truly believe the little Velasca was gone that next morning. I knew it would not be long until Sofiana went looking. She is our greatest warrior. A research of the great artifacts and weapons that Borrowed and burned from the saints of the faith of the morning lord. She was our great protector and her own daughter. Taking me tonight. The terrible irony <clears throat> we could not write a better tragedy. How long has uh, it been since Sofiana 
She has been coming back and forth. She has scoured the basewood and surrounding mountains and hills and moors. She says she last I saw her was almost four days, five days. Four days ago. She said she had found a cave entrance. She believed that there was a great cavern system where they lived. She was going to find her little girl. Uh, this, uh, and, uh, just for my own mental image. So, Bianca, does she have a blonde hair? No, no. She, she is, well, she is not my sister by blood, but she is my sister all the same, and people believe that we are related. Perhaps we are. Um, and this name, uh, the Silver Pine Pack, is that a, just a local term that you guys have for it, or where, where does that name come from? The name comes from the, the pack leader. It's been told of whispers. It's called Old Scratch, but The running that we've had, the Sofiana has had, <clears throat> the interrogation that she's done, she says that they call themselves the Silver Pine, named after the Alpha. She is the monster slayer. She is the one who fights the creatures of the night and protects us. I do what I can with my magic, but it is her who it was the greatest blade against the darkness. Not a shame. But it's, it's possible that she could still be alive, is that right? Well, of course, I mean, of course, that's why we're here. Oh, my, my nose is tingling. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's not a dumb question. There are no dumb questions. This might oh, be a... Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I feel kind of sleepy. It's all right. Just have another glass of wine. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. If you feel like you're gonna get sick, just leave the tent. No, I feel fun. Is is might be a dumb question, but why would these packs be interested in children in the first place? I mean, are, have they been? Well, okay. Sorry, uh, my mind's a little loopy. The whole reason we're here is because the children are are, are missing. So we know that there's a reason that they're looking for children. Do we know, do you know, if the Silver Pine Pack is working for anyone? Or, or do they have a reason that they might be doing this? I do not know. We, I always knew that, that there, were the, there was the pack out there, how they stay so out of sight, away from the gaze of the Count. I did not know. I knew they were there. I was hoping that one day we could resolve differences and live together as friends and break bread like we do now. But it's only been recent. The past several months, the children have been missing. Even with the howls and the hunting. Decades of hunting. It was just... The only ones that had to worry were the goats and the boars and the elk. Not humans. Or any mortal. I just think that they are evil. I do not know. I know that there have been children missing. The wander into the wood. It has become an unfortunate game where they feel so protected by dragon fire trees. They will wander out as a game into the beast world. Who is the bravest? And I'm glad my precious Nisha has not has not played such games. At least I know how she knows better. But I hope that all the children know now that even our greatest warrior Stay with her family. Sorry to bring these sad stories and these sad times. 
No, no, it's very, it's very important. It's important we talk about these things, and if there's any consolation, I don't think they're being eaten. I think that we can find them. No, I, I think that... And, and forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I think this Count Vorok is somehow using these packs, werewolves, to, 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 to get these children. That's what I think. And, and I haven't cracked open why yet, but... That, that's an important point. Uh, Telespa, uh, I assume you knew her very well, not from birth. Yes, from birth. She was... She was like like a, a, a meese to She was my... She is my meese. What, um... Uh, was there anything unusually special about her? Or her magical abilities, perhaps? Or, uh... uh her, her origin, uh, in terms of, like, her birth? A uh, month or day? Or, or unusual circumstances? These kinds of people? Well, besides, they called her the golden child because of her beautiful hair. But besides that, she was a beautiful, healthy little girl. And she and Misha were like this. Like this. The people who have her seem to think that she's called the Raven Child. And I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. Ah. Has anybody ever referred to her as the Raven Child? Oh, the Raven Child. Like this... Order of the feather of our were raven to look over and work with the count and her. Wait, what? They're were ravens? Yes, yes. They, they, they have been at odds with the were rolls for centuries. Oh my gods. What if all this time we've had it wrong? What if it's not the raven child? What if it's just a raven child? Like, a, like one of these children that can turn into t- t- ravens. But little Alaska was not a were raven. She was not of the order of. She was not. Are you from sure? The Markov line. H- how could you know? I think I would know. I, I, not... saw, I was there with the day she was born. I held her minutes after she was born. I mean, no offense. I'm just saying. At a certain point, once we've eliminated the things that can't be possible, whatever's left over could be possible. I need another drink. As he pours up I mean, I could be wrong. I, I've had a lot of wine. Am I and I don't even really know where I am right now. Well, we're in a uh, the Latin, the Latin, the Latin the uh, we're in a camp. Um, you're right. The wine, really, that's, that's some strong wine. I begin to pour myself another glass. <laughs> okay. Uh, the count. Where ravens? They're the ones. The ones what? There, are we to understand that the that the count is is somehow in in league with uh, ki- the the king? No, no, I I don't think that either counts that we're talking about. There's so many counts. Oh goodness, uh, it Count is Escher Kreskov. The counts. Yes, K- Count Kreskov, Escher, who yeah. we know yeah, yeah, yeah. and who we just met, uh, Alexei Von Zarevich, yeah. are the counts. Uh huh. What I'm saying is that the, the King Vorak, I think, I think, and again, this could be the wine speaking, so correct me if I'm wrong. I think that King Vorak <laughs> is somehow working with these packs of werewolves to steal children. Now, that being said, this new information that there are people who can turn into ravens. We thought this whole time that it was the raven child, the raven child, as if it was some sort of special individual. But what if they just are looking for the children of the people who can turn into ravens? A raven child. A child who is also a raven. And we just learned of we're were raven people. Yes! Yes, of course. They are, they are the protectors of, of Barovia. Uh, forgive our ignorance, but we're not from around here. And no, frankly, of course. I do not. I do not. I mean, no judgment or. Or derision, my friend. You ought to feel exactly. Like Even knowing why. that there were werewolves and vampires, I never would have imagined that there were were ravens. Oh, there are many lichen folks. Oh, this is this is mind blowing. Maybe you could use the were ravens to uh, as a boogeyman to tell your children not to go into the woods, or, or maybe if if you you could use Hector Mancrab as well if you lo- if you'd like to use him in, instead of. Would you not this is the first time you've mentioned Hector Mancrow. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> Hector Mancrow, who is that? 
He's, Have you faced? Is this a great monster to be faced? Yeah, yes, he's 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 a crib. You can see that he's drunk. He had a lot of wine. He's a crib <laughs> as big as as a Goliath man. A Goliath he's, crab, but bigger than that. Hector he's, Van Crab. He's probably forty feet tall, and he lives in a coconut under a tree. That is terrifying. I know he, uh, he's orange. I, no, so a wait a minute. How, a wait, 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 wait. He's 40 feet tall. How does he live under a coconut under a tree? How big is it's the a co- big coconut? How big is the coconut? Maybe you can see. Oh, I guess it's a really big coconut. I never really thought about that. How big is the tree? Well, I mean, what's the definition of under a tree? Maybe just like under a palm frond. You know, you know, like if it was, let's say the as tall as the, tr- the tree. Maybe. Right. And so anyway, he, he's he's big and he's orange and and he's angry. And, and, uh, anyway, you could use hit the main crab if you'd like to take him instead of where where ravens. But you should tell your children about hit the main crab so that they don't go into the woods. The woods, or really, stay stay close to shore, which doesn't really. We try to tell doesn't <laughs> children that not to fear the werewolves. <laughs> But it is little Valeska always wanted to see one because the Order of the Feather, the Count, they, they say over and over that the werewolves have left Barovia. But not just people, just supplies go missing. There is a whole wagon of flour that just disappears over now. A wagon of flowers. Flower, no, flower. Maybe like... they're bee people. What? Like were bees. <gasps> you think there are were bees? If they like flowers and they stole it's them. Really no what one. if there were were bees and were ravens? I mean, he, he mentioned that there were tons of ta- lycanthropes. And they're locked in an eternal battle of lichen. Like hemp ropes? Yes, yes, exactly. I have never heard of their bees. I mean, at this point, anything's possible. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. No, but but I, th- I do think he said flour, a part of flour to make bread. Oh, yes. So, wait, what would they have purpose for that? I do not know. Wait, are there any streams or lakes around here? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. We are not far from Lake Zorovich. <laughs> oh no. What, what's wrong, what, Della? What if. What if Hector Man Crab's behind all of this? What? what? Hector Man Crab! Wait, hold on. What if he's behind all no, of this? No, so settle down. And he lives in the lake. Wait, can't we just feed him some fish and he'll be fine? Well, yeah, but if they haven't been feeding him fish because they don't know about Hector Man Crab, so he might have been. How far is Lake Von Zarvich? Lake Von Zarvich? No, they have big as rock. What? Several hour rock. I mean, we could go feed him fish if you're that worried. I think I would like to feed him fish before we go to bed. It's fine. It's a few hours one way. It's a few hours back. We can make it before sunrise. Okay. That sounds good. Can you hold off for sure? I do not think there is a Hector Man crab in the lake. There is something down there, but not a crab. Are you sure he's not a crab? I thought, is there a coconut anywhere? I mean, if you listen to the song, all we have to do is feed him some fish. No, there's not the climate for coconut. You just have to stay close to shore and feed him some fish, and he, he and won't steal your if children. If you just listen to the song, it'll clear it up. I think that any man crab, there is no, unless there is a weird crab that I am not aware of. It's just food for thought, is all I'm saying. But I think, I think it was the silver pot. I think that they, carts of medicine, they have been, I do not know how they are getting past the dragonfire trees. I don't know how, but I believe it is the silver pine. Why they are ta- deciding to take the children after only in recent months after centuries of relative peace. Would they have any way of knowing which children are from the Order of the Feather and, and which are not? I would we'd say no. Maybe they're just they indiscriminately kept, grabbing the kids. They kept to themselves. But 
all I know is that, uh, is that Sophie Allen says that she thought she found their, their lair. She was heading there and I... Did she say where it was? Yes, yeah, she did. Me. She did. She said it was in the northeast and not as far as you'd expect. But well hidden. Well hidden. So I guess really the only question that we have to ask ourselves is whether or not we think that these mythic insect creatures are also using this 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 cavern system. And if it's worth checking out or or you know, maybe we talk to, to, to the count first and there are a lot of moving parts, but my head's going just a million miles a minute. Well, let me let me first, first of all, Toa, can you write my name is Toa right here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, you can use my quill. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, now oh, I love you. Yes, yeah, fine. You can write <laughs> on my back if you need to. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that's our next move. I think that we uh the cavern system, Sophiana. I guess what I'm I just, I'm just worried that if if Alaska is already with King Vorak, we're running out of time. And sure. That's all I worry about. And then maybe the count. When we talk to him in the morning, and shed some light on the situation. Like a, like an onion. Uh, we can think of the center of the onion, where the kids are, and where this kid is, and where we, all the, the answers are, why are without there, going out through the exterior layers of the onion. Why are there kids in the onion? It's a bit of this metaphor. Yeah, but there's nothing oh. like else inside the onion, in a real onion, it's just more onion. You, you really are the man's poet, Caprice. I don't tell you enough. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm just saying, I think that this silver pine back is the outer layer of the onion. We gotta go. We gotta figure out what's going on there. And Unravel if, that mystery. If their caverns are connected to what the uh, buggies are using, maybe we can get there quicker. We can follow their footsteps and, right, and right. get to her. Oh, thank you. Here's here's what I'm mapping out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what? Caprice, what's the matter? <laughs> I just roll up the parchment and put it into my bag. Uh, you know, it's not important. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Holy shit, this rendition is funny. Oh my god. Oh, I oh forgot my that god. it's not autofocus. <laughs> that is so fun to do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, will you be able to recognize this if I show it to you again, Toa? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's all I wanted. Okay. Alright. I uh, Do you want any water or uh, sleep, perhaps? Uh, well, we need to go f- feed feed him. We just got yeah. back from doing that. No, I. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, We've already fed all. We the... fed the man crab. You... Yeah, yeah. Are you tired? Saved... That was hours of walking. Yeah, that was really a lot. I've, I've never fished, so I I think I'll just lay down right here. Just wake me up when it's time to feed the man crab. And I'll lay down. <laughs> <laughs> In my comfortable <laughs> position. Um, are you s- saying? And yes, you are welcome to sleep here. There's. Plenty of cushions for all of you to fit. Are you saying that it is the Carrion King that is responsible for all of these children? Uh, there, there's a hypothesis here that I'm have that I'm starting to form, which is uh, uh, these children are being going, going missing all over the place. We think that the Carrion King is involved or responsible, or perhaps both, and therefore he would have his irons in many different fires. Silver pine pack, maybe one of those irons, and uh, there may be just a few degrees from them. If we can work our way up that ladder, we could do the same kind of heroism that you saw us do in the stories you watched when you were in Carpina. Count Valerian. What he said. I do not know why the Count does not send his army and his crusader to smash that terrible city. I do not know why we wait. Why not reach out to the Silver Pine? Try to... I may perhaps I am too optimistic for the future. Well, I... I, Especially if if the Carrion King is in league with the Silver Pine, we'll have to be too late. I I, I don't think it's ever too late. I think we can fix things. And Count Kreskov is currently talking to Count 
Von Zarovich, and and we'll meet with them in the morning. And and then we can talk to them about these things. Maybe it is worth reaching out to these werewolves. The Silver Pine Pack. Maybe it's worth it. And we'll see what Count Von Zarovich says. Well, I hope he is wise for his, his stern and how strictly he rules. He rules wisely and justly. And I trust his judgment, even if I do not understand myself. You are powerful. Warriors and heroes, yes? Nah, we're not we're not heroes. We're just we're just trying to help people and, and, and make up for wrongs in the past. I do not wish to ask much. But if you do get a chance, you would at least look. At least look for Sofiana. You have my word. Bring her home if you can. Absolutely. She is incredibly strong, but an entire pack. It's the absolute least that we could do after everything that you've done for us. I thank you. I will meet you tomorrow for breakfast. Yeah, I, I, I'll have a song prepared for you, for the kids, to, to, to start off the next uh, story as you make your rendition of what we shared with you this evening. Misha will be so thrilled! Thank you, Caprice! And he gives you a big hug as he stands up. He's definitely very clearly feeling it as well. Make yourselves at home, all of you. You are, are one of us. Not just tonight, but as long as I draw breath and all of them out there, we continue your story. You are that's our what, family. That's what we always say. As long as we draw breath. Don't you hear that? You are a true hero, <laughs> Miss Evan. No, I... No, 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 I just... No, I, we're just trying to help. Well, if we are not able to save her, we will sing the story of Sofia Mabelikov and little Valeska Uh, I assume he's starting to make his way out. Yeah, he's <laughs> getting ready to <laughs> like like meet any somewhere. <laughs> Do not Barakov? hesitate, Belikov. To Belikov. wake me up, or if anyone out there is still awake, and there will be people awake for all hours of the night. It's just sort of quietly, uh, um, have a good night, have a good night, Alessandro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of that. I, I will. I will sleep easier now, even with the howls. And almost as if on cue, you hear the. <laughs> Yeah, and it's weird. That never happens until you say something. As it sounds, it does. It's like they are listening to us. <clears throat> as you hear, you can as and as he uh, as he begins to leave, he says, "Just be careful. Sleep well. You are safe here. Thank you. There's always someone awake. Good night, Good my night. friends." He turns and leaves and closes the curtain and you feel warmth and comfort. There's all sorts of sleeping cushions all around. We're able to, in plenty of room. Can you uh, immediately do that uh, alarm thing? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, well, they always told us when we were studying, don't don't magic and drink, but here I am. <laughs> and I begin to try to uh, yeah, cast alarms. That's not what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm casting alarm along the edge of the tent, uh, you know, in a perimeter, uh, as I'm listening to whatever, you know. Now those are the song. proximity mines from Goldeneye! <laughs> <laughs> My arm, like, you know, splatters across. Anyway. Um, yes, I begin cast, ritually casting alarm along the uh, perimeter of the tent uh, while we're done and hanging on. What do you think? I. I mean, I think you're on to something. I was thinking what, knives only, places to kill. What? <laughs> Is that why you wanted all those knives? From poor Major Domo? <laughs> you play some fucking gold knife, <laughs> goddammit. Oh, sweet. Guys, I don't even know what that means. I swear to God, if any of you play on job, I don't know how to aim down. Okay? I don't know how to aim down. Civilian 3 is just as tall. It's the <laughs> sneaky secret of Goldeneye. Anyways, um... <laughs> hey, good old boomers. Civilian 3. Hey, boomers. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Look, I, I think we're on to something. I, I think you're on to something. You made some good points. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to both counts tomorrow morning. I'm sure they're going to have a lot to tell us. Uh, listen, I'm scared. I'm real scared. Because I I thought we were okay with Count Sarvik. H- Hector Mancrab isn't no, real. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't trust a fucking soul. I don't know if I trust Alessandro. I don't know if we trust what? Count I just told him all that stuff. Yeah, well, uh, we haven't told him you everything. Why did you say that earlier? I... What, 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 what am I going to say that? I don't know. Cough or elbow somebody. That, that, that would just been coughing and elbowing. You wouldn't have been like, oh, maybe I should stop talking. There's no way to... Well, then I would oh, have been like, oh, right. Caprice, are you okay? And you would have said, oh, no, like, uh, help me outside, please. I think I'm going to vomit. And then you tell me this. Okay. So remember Maybe that. I had options. That's fine. However. Yeah, continue. I just... It, 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 we're, we're looking for Valeska. She got stolen away, and 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 she was being. How did she go from uh, the, the, the 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 these werewolves to a coffin in a catatonic state, being co- co- carried away by the Shadow Kai? How, 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 how do you well, feel that? That's my that's my hypothesis about the Carrion King. They met up with 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 some of his <clears throat> his his liaison. I'm they're working together. That's what I thought. To Alessandro's point, he asks, "Why? Why don't we make peace with the Silver Pines? Hmm? Why don't? Why don't? Why don't? Why don't we all go around and, and, and raid in or, 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 or fight the Carrion King? Those are two yellow flags, at least. That uh, maybe Zarevich has uh, some some reasons not to do that. Well, if if they're stealing, he's with him. Escher right now. Is Escher okay? If they're st- well, first off, the man is undead. Uh, there's not much that can kill him outside of the, in my studies, my understanding, sunlight and 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 some." Some other stuff. That's a pretty big weakness. All he has to do is be like, hey, go up to the top of the tower and then close the door. It's the middle of the night right now. And then morning comes around. Look, I, I think you're I think your concern is justified. What I'm saying is tomorrow morning, first let's see if Escher shows up. Okay, if he doesn't, then we have reason to, to, to maybe fight back. Alright? Alright. But until then we can't really do anything. Well, I, I don't think that About we can that. do anything. I'm just sharing Perhaps unwarranted paranoia. If for some reason what I was going to say <clears throat> was if, if for some reason these, these werewolves are stealing flour and medicine and supplies, maybe they don't have a choice. Maybe they're under duress and they're doing what they have to do to survive. And maybe reaching out the olive branch, so to speak, and breaking bread with them might solve the problem. I'm speculating. I don't know. I've had a lot of wine. Me too. Also, did you see Kiprulet Toa Main? Look at this. This is hilarious. I look over to see if he's, like, completely passed <laughs> totally, out. Totally, just totally zonked. I asked him to write his name, and he drew his greatest fear. <laughs> oh, sweet <laughs> gods. Here, here you go. Can we even confirm that he knows how to write? Maybe he doesn't know how to write his own name. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's look, I think that Toa, I, you have to understand that I love Toa like my brother. But I don't know. Maybe he can't write his own name. And to be fair, he couldn't stop talking about Hector Mancraft for the last six hours. <laughs> well, you know, I think he's really scared. Well, to be fair, I'm starting to get kind of scared, and I know that Hector Mancraft's not real. <laughs> I've been jamming with Toa for a year, and he's never brought that song up once. It must be really deep in there, that fear. Something really awakened the fear within me. Maybe this is something that you should talk to Iris about. I, I just feel like maybe I'm not equipped to handle this. Iris can't hold her liquor at all. <laughs> 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 well, either way, uh, I don't know. I, I think, I think tomorrow, man, this wine is good. I think tomorrow, <laughs> we see what happens with the counts. I think we have a good meeting with Count von Zarovich, mm-hmm. and then maybe this this cave system is is our next stop. Because, like you said, if it has anything to do with the spiders or 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 anything, or the Carrion King, there might be some overlap, and there might be a better way to get into Zarakos. I I think we're on the same page. Just wanted to make sure we talked it out. I, no, I'm, I'm glad you said something about not trusting anyone. You never know. And and again, I, I don't know why, I just felt so trusting of that man. He just was so kind. And the wine is so good. He kept calling us heroes. Oh. That, yeah, that was nice. Um, that was very nice. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm gonna go to bed. Oh, before you go to bed, though, I, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Can I help? Well, yeah, I mean, the more we, we've been hanging out, the more I realize that you really are 
a man of the people. And you have this unbelievable way with, with language and words. Thank you. So I... Says the person with 13 languages to... No, that's that's nothing. That's nothing. I I just... I wanted to run something by you. Yeah. I had an idea for a novel. Oh, yeah? I thought maybe you might be able to help me out. Uh, well, what kind of novel? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> don't tell... Don't, don't tell anyone, because it's a little secret. It's, it's... It's... I feel very vulnerable by telling you this. Luffy, I can suggest you go to sleep. Oh, yeah, I am so. <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep and I'm gonna just roll over. Like, no, I, I, I cast it just like, on you. <laughs> oh, I mean, you could, you could probably beat yeah, it. But be, 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 yeah, go ahead. yeah, if you want to fight it. Yeah, this is a lot for just a bit. <laughs> we gotta play by the oh, rules right. here. Natural. Oh. Play. oh yeah, he is a bard, by the way. No, no, they, they Oh, no, destroyed. it's a spell save. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, well. Yeah, just yeah. kidding. I take it all back. <laughs> but I do anyway. pretend to go to sleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I roll over. You pretend that the suggestion yeah. actually works. I do. And you yeah. keep an ear out. There, there, isn't, there isn't a lot of room for creativity in the military, but it's been on my mind for a really long time, and I think I'm onto something. Mm-hmm. So the main character, his name is John Everyman, and he works at just, you know, the inn on the corner. And it's almost as if he represents me. And represents you, and he feels like he's. See me chuckle a little. He's, 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 he feels as if he's destined for so much greater. And I bore poor Caprice for hours about this horrifically cliche <laughs> uh, <laughs> writers one hundred and one cre- creativity story one hundred and one novel <laughs> creative writing uh, creative writing one hundred and one uh, novel and asked for his uh, his input before I realized that he's nodding off before I even get to the third chapter and it was his father the whole time. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got it all written down. Right I'm gonna go now and write an, uh, another song because I promised Alessandro one. <laughs> I, 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 look, I just, I just, I really think there's something here, and you know, maybe we could mull it over and workshop it a little. I think that there could be something in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll workshop. It. Okay, we'll thanks. It out. No, thanks, no Caprice. It's my pleasure. Oh boy, I just I feel so good. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> God. You guys assume you go to sleep. Yep. I have a song to write, so I'm spend <laughs> the next twenty minutes being like Well, I might become a responsible one too. <laughs> but I go to sleep. Oh my god. Coffee break? Let's take a break. Uh, hold on. Okay. Oh no. So you all uh, uh, go to sleep, and uh, Felix, as you rest peacefully, and you feel the, or rather, you don't feel this because you're, you're sleeping, you have pleasant dreams of the beautiful music and food of the Vistani, and then suddenly the alarm goes off Ish. in your head. Someone has entered the tent. We don't all hear this. I don't know. How does alarm work? No, uh, just his head, right? Your, well, I, I thought it was hold anybody on. you... Hold on, hold on. You know what? To have Let's it. clarify, because I think I think we can all hear it in our, in our brains, but let me make sure. A mental alarm alerts you with a ping in your mind if you are with one mile of the warded area. Uh, when you cast a spell, it designates creatures that won't say... You also choose whether the alarm is mental or audible. No, it's me. It's just me. Yeah. But I can choose who triggers it. So it's obviously anybody who would not be part of our game. Yep. So, Felix, the alarm goes off ringing like crazy. Someone has crossed the threshold. Um, So this is basically something that I am so used to and also not used to and basically gives me PTSD from my time on the run from uh, the military that I immediately roll out of bed, basically completely undressed, uh, no hat, you know, no no jacket, uh, just a uh, talon guard dagger. I, like it's almost automatic that I pull it from my my side. I roll out of bed, screaming, yelling, "Oh, oh, get up! You alarm! Oh, oh my head! Oh, get up! It's an alarm! It's an intruder!" They, oh what? And oh! As soon as you do that, you see a massive mane of curly black hair. And you see that there's a, it's attached to a little girl that's just as much hair uh, as she is body. And she just looks at you. And she's like, wow, you're even more scared than you were in the play. 
<laughs> Breakfast is ready. So dagger, dagger is blue, like hand is on fire, and I'm like ready to incinerate. <laughs> God, oh my head. Oh, what in the night hells? Uh, <laughs> is he? Uh, you oh God! Are you guys really the heroes? That is the coolest thing. Uh, Hello. I'm sorry. Do you really cry as much? Yeah, what? he does. That's really sad. What? It is so sad. What? I don't cry. What? And you see a little girl, and she has uh, that same uh, olive skin, just a uh, massive mane. It goes like uh, 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 down past her hips uh, uh, as as she looks. And it's like. Wow, I can't believe I'm meeting real famous people. Uh, this I know, is so, it's This right, is the right. coolest day of my life. First, can you stop screaming? Please, just keep it down a little bit, all right? Well, I'm not screaming. It's very exciting. No, it's, you're being very loud, and it's very early. Hey, hey kid. Oh. Uh, you, you just my name is Misha, by the way. I was going to ask what your name was. Oh, you're Misha. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Misha. Um, uh, uh, we met your papa uh, last night. Uh, yeah, he's, he's the one that told me. Uh, you need to learn about knocking uh, before you walk into uh, tents of strangers. Uh, you need to learn about what you can do in someone else's tent and tell the owner of where they should go and not go. <laughs> if I sing you a song, will you leave? I love it. It better be a good song. <laughs> yeah, it better be a good song. Uh, hey. Call Mr. Bard. That's my name. That name again is Mr. Bard. That's like a four out of ten at best. Breakfast! <laughs> I just woke up because of you. Well, well you're Lord. welcome. Breakfast is ready. You have the, the, the count is here to meet with you. It's very, you are very impressive uh, people. Goodbye. And she turns around and she uh, waves. Oh, God. That is five. My throat is. You're so good, huh? My, Please stop yelling at my us. My mouth is dry. My head feels like it, I have it split in two. They've got the bottle flu. <coughs> Very common. Oh god. They drank too much. You guys um, drank too much. What? You drank a lot last did night. Did I drink you, it? What did I drink? Did I drink too much water? Do you remember drawing this? Oh my god, I, oh, remember, I drew that? I yeah. remember that. It's the yeah. man crab. The prophecy has come <laughs> true. <laughs> Are you sure I drew this? <laughs> Of course, I asked you to draw it because I wanted it to be an anchor uh, for me to understand how much information you got last night so I would know yes. how much I needed to explain when you woke he up. He asked you to write your name down. Do you guys know who this is? Yes. Yeah. Like really oh, there's a whole song about this guy. You know, we oh know the gosh. song. You told us the song. Yeah. You sang it. the man grab. Oh, did? Ma Manny. What happened what last it? night? Man check. Manny the man grab. Hector. Hector. Damn it. Ah, uh, God. Oh, I, remember, huh? I remember walking to the camp and then... I thought for a man as uh, big as you, you would be able to hold your booze a bit better. Yeah. Well, I don't... It's embarrassing. I'm like five feet and I'm fine. Well, isn't it more about like, use it or lose no. it? Isn't it more Maybe. about like... I don't know. The more of a lush, the less of a flush? What are you saying? What? What, what, are, you, what are the words that are coming out of your mean? mouth? I don't know. I don't drink that much. I mean, I don't know. Well, you have to practice like anything else. Uh, it's a muscle. No, don't do not do that. It's just, I'm just going to swear off it. Yeah, here, hair of the dog. Oh, I'll pour my, a cup of beer. <laughs> no, no, none. Uh, I'm, no, no. Me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I was Thank in performance you. mode last night. I didn't have that much to drink, and you guys really went overboard. It was hilarious to watch. <laughs> uh, some tea might be nice. I don't think I can stomach anything. Oh, I'm going to try to eat every egg. I'm gonna get up and I'm going to shuffle. I don't recommend that. Are you gonna that. rock your elbow? It? <laughs> I'm gonna shuffle over. I'm not gonna pick my feet up at all. I'm just gonna shuffle towards breakfast. Thank you for coming to get us. Uh, She's gone. Yeah, oh. I, I, I shoot her away. <laughs> you just scamp. <laughs> she was a scamp. Bye bye. I get ready. Um, and uh, I put all my things on me, and I have my viol, and I'm ready to go. I put on my, like, clothes and, like, my jacket, and I look like hell. I'm like a stumbling bum. I'm disheveled, and dirty, bum. and gross. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try to find some sort of a campfire. Because I just want to sit by the fire while I prepare my spells for the morning. You hate myself. <laughs> you make your way out of the tent, and you see that you hear the, um... Uh, the sound of, of, of many horses and a lot of chatter, uh, but it's not nearly as lively 
uh, as the scene was the previous evening. As you see sitting around, um, uh, sitting around a large uh, plate, a large, uh, really metal tray of, uh, of food, and, and there's basically a, a giant, uh, almost like a vat of just uh, uh, whipped egg, and scrambled egg, basically, and all sorts of sheets of, of pork, and uh, uh, a number of uh, a delicious looking pastries. You smell the food and it hits you, it's, 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 it's glistening. Uh, and it smells less. You see that there is uh, a, a number of uh, armored knights all sitting around eating food. There's some tin cups of, of coffee or tea or something. And you see that around the, the, the central campfire area, sitting, eating a plate of food, is uh, Count Von's Armage. And he, you, there, are, uh, there, there are there are actually some, uh, there are five chairs um, around him. And that the that there's this large uh, there's a large a teapot in the center that's, that's crackling on a fire, and um, there's a, a, a lavish feast. There's fresh fruit out, and uh, he has a plate. And he's uh, he's he's already eating. As I stumble out of the tent, uh, it looks like you could blindfold me with dental floss. Uh, <laughs> as I'm squinting so hard, and I see him, and I realize, and I oh. Oh, oh my God! Uh, I, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, Felix Axe from Ackerman, Ackerman, uh, reporting to duty. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're here. Uh, how long have you been here? <laughs> um, uh, you, uh, 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 Alexi looks at you and says, um, it "Looks like you had an entertaining night." No, no, I, I have not I, been here long. I promise, this isn't normally me. I got carried away with the food and the wine. Oh, God. If you know Alessandro, he's a very charming man. Yeah, he's, he's very hospitable. very hospitable. Hey, Boo. He is a good man. You see uh, Alessandro as uh, he's, he's standing uh, by his family tent. He looks at you and he gives like two thumbs up. As he says, thank you, Snuggie. Thank you, Snuggie. Yay! Yay! Unbelievable. Lurking and sending the love to all you sexy people. 21 months. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the sexy Snuggie. Snuggie just lurks. Yay. Um, Just creeps. Yeah. And Count uh, Von Zarovich um, uh, gestures. And he says, I saved you all enough, hopefully enough, for a cup of coffee for each of you. Oh, coffee. I'll sit immediately. Yeah, I think I'll try that. I like take the cup and I just like immediately like down it all. Oh, ah, ah. <laughs> 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 uh, what in the hell? It's really hot. It's coffee. Ah, I'm really thirsty. This is imported from Yona. This is the best coffee in the world. Uh, uh, can we get some water for? Well, Toa and me, we're both really dehydrated. Uh, and you see a, a little floating uh, purple hand uh, that uh, brings over a cup of, of water and, and, and levitates. And you see it's like Alessandro's in the back waving his hand. Thank you. Uh, oh, um. And do not be alarmed. Count Kreskov wanted me to tell you a series of passwords so that you would know that he is alive. I do not know what they mean, but I shoot him. I shoot a look at him. Yeah, please. Shoot him. Yeah, bang! <laughs> <laughs> he says, what? Lupi, Lascivia, Gerald, <laughs> Cannabo. I mean, that, that that's probably Cop, Yes, that was it. Those were the five passwords he said that you would know what that meant. Thank he, you. He is a strange man, even more strange than I had surmised from our correspondence and our letters, but he surprisingly trustworthy for undead. I can see why my ancestor trusted him and let him leave this land alive. Uh, um, uh, is, is there like food? Just food out? Like, oh yeah, no. There's a whole. There's a, a, it's a grand tray and like a full fruit basket. Is there any salad? 
There's a fruit salad. There's no, there's no, there's no salad. Uh, well, no, no. I, I want to clarify it's spelled C H O P T. Yes, exactly. Chopped. Yes. It's not, you know. And scrambled eggs. Yes. Exactly, and scrambled eggs. And thank you, Matt Perkins, Matthew Perkins, for DM. Woo! Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hello. Um, and. Uh, he and in the end, it's very much like a, a VIP spread. Oh. And you see that there's the Vastani, and they're all looking around, and and they were very chummy with you. But as the uh, the the effectively the royal knights all sit around uh, a, a spread on their own, and the count of the land is eating with these famous celebrities that have joined the camp, they're all just kind of keeping to themselves and looking around. It it, it looks very much that that not everyone is at ease. The kids are. Or being quiet and walking around like as as respectfully as possible. It, it seems that they're not on these because they're surveilling this meeting, or because they they just are on these because the count. Well, just because the count's there, and there's like tw- uh, uh, eleven of his knights right. that are there, and you see that there's uh that there's um that there are just as many uh, horses as there are people. In this camp now, it's easy to see is where there had there, you see where uh, the horses were were kept off in the darkness of the outskirts of these camps. Now, in the in the brightness of morning, you can see more. And you actually realize it's morning. You have to adjust. The, you're, it's painful for you guys to see after drinking so much. It gives you head. <sighs> this is the first time you, time you've had a bright morning <laughs> in in more than a week, wow. in many days. <laughs> And th- you haven't had that since, and it was—it's even far brighter than your mornings in Korvakia for the most part. And uh, the, you look up, and there's not a cloud in the sky except for on that on the, that ring around the valley above you, as the the, the bright light of morning shines down. Okay. I'm gonna go eat all of those eggs. But we have to talk to the cow. And I get up and I no, shuffle over and away. I ignore, no, we gotta, I ignore Felix. We have an important cow. Uh, and I just take my hand and I just take all, take like <laughs> pretty much all the scrambled things <laughs> and push them onto my plate. I love it with your hand. That's yeah, the best part. <laughs> my hand and I just walk back and I sit down. Uh, there's some rice there as well. And, you know, all sorts of. Can toast it down my gag a little. <laughs> <laughs> I start <laughs> the eggs into my mouth, <laughs> and uh, he regrets that you that he was not able to join us. But as you can see, this land is for all of its benefits. It's dangerous for him to move about during the day. So he's okay. He is in Castle Barovia. Okay. Yes, he is. I have brought him the artifact of my ancestor that he requested and he is spending time with that he believes it holds a key to averting whatever it is the Carrion King is playing I remember you mentioned a uh, name, uh, the artifact uh, creator, uh, Victoria the um, uh, uh, Zubak says Zax something along those lines what? Zolbeck? Zorbeck. You really are just hung up on that guy, huh? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I thought that... Uh, the the cr- I do not know the creator, but it is an, a family heirloom that has been in my generation for... my family for generations. It was gifted, survived, the only thing to survive the destruction of Castle Ravenloft. And my ancestor, Sergei Lanzarovich the first count of... Barovia with the scheduled meal gifted it to a half who kept it with her until she died. And we've left it in the residence with the respect. Right, right, the residence. And that was here in, in uh, the city of Barovia? In New Zarovich. New Zarovich, my fault. Yes, formerly built from the ruins of the old Barovia village, if you know the history. I don't. That's why I'm asking. I always presume. History lessons. I wanted to know what Asher was up to, that's all. Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, You know, I I hate to change the subject, but being from Korovakia, I almost don't know what the sun looks like anyway, but being in Skethrinal, I've forgotten what the sun looks like, so what is going on here? 
because it's hollow brown. The sun just shines. It's the power of the morning lord. No matter the strength of the dark magic that the Carrion King utilizes, the power of the morning lord is stronger, although it does shrink every day. Well, that's but I pray good. every day, as do our priests. Clerics, uh, crusaders, all of us. Uh, I mean, do you think it's something with the Carrion King's power growing, or is there something happening to the Morning Lord? It's not that the Morning Lord is not the big it's the strength of the horrible, horrible atrocities he is committing. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply otherwise. I do not, do not be, do not be so scared. I know that I was curse serious last night, but you must understand. Strangers in in this place are very rare. If they make it past the dragon's fire, being woken so late, having to drive out. That's understandable. Trust me. I don't blame you. We're You're, very sorry about that. Uh, I'm sure you were quite... You don't have to be. Well, but, you know, very convenient. You come here to help my people, and I thank you, may thank you for making the journey. Very strange. Very strange. I don't know what you're doing. I'm Kels is doing squats right yeah, off just, camera. Right, yeah, in the corner of my eye, I see squats happening, and I was like, ah! <laughs> I needed the rich it is, it is quite frightening. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Um, uh, so... <clears throat> Will you will you help us? Will you 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 have an army? We we could really use your help to to take out this king. I the reason why I am here is because I swore that I would meet you, and I am a man of my word, despite how busy I am. Well, okay, thank you. Um, the thing I am waiting for is to see what Count Kreskov discovers. If I am convinced that there is a hope, then I will consider sending my crusaders to bring the morning to Castle Gunther. But I will not send my men and women off to die for no reason that they hope. We are just a very small party. The numbers are not great enough, even with the bulk of the Scathlinial military at the front lines. We do not have numbers. We have the power of our God. We have skill in battle. But we are outmatched and outcome. When did Escher... I'm sorry. Count Kreskov say that he would be done inspecting this artifact. He says I could 100% count on tonight, but he is a very cocksure man. I am not sure if he overestimates his own abilities. So it could be longer. I did not know. I am here to tell you that I am not swearing any Borovians of a single life until I am certain there's a good chance that there is a weapon. There is a plan. I want to make myself very clear out of respect for all of you. I, I think that's an incredibly reasonable take. The only thing that I would ask is if you have any information that could aid us in the meantime. We have a couple of leads, and we have some things that we can do in the meantime, but if there's anything that you know, you should tell us up front. That's the least you can do. What would you like to know? What information? You're the one coming to bring information that I did not have to me. I can tell you the Order of the Feather uh, has uh, seen... Uh, more movement in the beast boat. Sure. Increasing every night. That's a good start. All right. A little bit about the Order of the Feather might be good. They are an order of fair ravens. 
that protect Borovia. They are my eyes and ears. And they make very good wine. As I can see that you know. Uh, no more. Uh, never they're, again. They're, they're up at the vineyard? They're in elsewhere, yes. Uh, who's their leader, if you don't mind my asking? I think that I would let them tell you that it is a secretive order. Hmm. Yes. You have to earn that respect. That is not my place. I have to understand my I, I, order of being ordered. I, I think I have two questions that you might be able to answer. The first is, do you know anybody that's gone into Zaracosa and come back? No. Not I a have, single person. I have... do not know many who have gone to Zaracosa. I did have a young knight who was incensed by the ghoulish use of ghouls in necromancy, decided to go on a noble quest himself to earn a place at my side, to earn my respect. I told him he did not need to do that. He was incensed and rode off, and I have not seen him since. It has been six years. No one will be alone this time. And if, if we join forces and we all work together, the, there hasn't been a force that we haven't been able to stop so far. Yeah. So, so, so right. if, if you need time and, and Count Kreskov needs time, then maybe we can spend today looking for the girl's mother. Well, that was exactly, that's exactly right. I, I was going to lead to my next question is, what can you tell us about the Silver Pine Pack? He looks and says, keep your voice down. Sorry. I, I feel like everyone's yelling. <laughs> I think it's just you, Yale. I think it is just you. They are remnants. They the pack of barrels that have been in these lands for centuries. We had first thought that they were extinct, but in the recent years they've been making themselves more known. In the recent weeks, the disappearances. And even mostly children until he looks around the camp. There's a bit of there's a bit of sadness in his in his uh, face. The first disappearance of an adult, where she did off on the road. We need to learn a little of this. Uh, so, oh, Alessandro did tell you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, some of it. And he uh, 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 told us a little of, uh, um, if I could use a. Uh, a metaphor. Uh, a metaphor? Uh, just just a, uh, an alternative name. Allegory. This is a secrecy while we're talking uh, about. You just said that uh, because I said that. Oh. Yeah, if you said it, I don't. I didn't hear it. And that this, uh-huh. uh, that this group that we're talking about is led by uh, young Itchy. <coughs> I think it's quite literally the opposite of that. That's exactly my point. Uh, just oh, so you know what we're talking. About. I see. Yay. So he has told you, yes. Okay. Yeah. That is. You don't want to get him in any trouble. That is the. Talk. That is the only title. That we have. I do not think it is worth risking the lives of my knights to investigate this. Going beyond the dragonfire trees is unwise, especially in Skeftanin. That's fine. Leave it up to us. That's what we were going to do to occupy our time for a day or two. Whatever yeah, however long it takes for Count Kreskov to figure out what that thing is. We'll, we have some leads and we'll follow up on it. You're going yeah. to willingly go into the Beastwood. Of course. Yeah. Is that... We're going to go find her. She's why, not far from here. Why wouldn't we? We're going to look for Sofiana. Yes. We have some time while uh, Andrew does, uh, Count Prescott does his thing. When it's the right thing to do. And, and it's the only reason that we're here, and it's the only way that we can pay back these people and you for your help, which I know you're going to give us. 
What's that little aggressive feeling? I forget myself. If you find sort of Fianna, yeah. bring her back. Yeah, we will. I, I care about the all of my subjects of course. equally, and I do not want to see any lives needlessly lost. I will reward you if you do find her. We don't need a reward. We just she want to find. It sound like she was coming back and forth a little bit. She hasn't been back in a few days, is what he said, right? Yeah, that is the thing. If we have not heard from her, she is in trouble. She is very capable. She has, I've, she has gained on her own access to holy artifacts and relics to fight the creatures of the night that are known to lurk and stalk the caravans as they start to come and go. Well, she sounds very strong and capable. Maybe? She is, so it is very serious, or she is dead and it's all lost. I hope that is not the case. I do not want to lose any more Borovians. We will find her, I'm sure. We're, we're talking. Easy peasy. You will no have my sincere thanks and anything I can do. I I swear it. I swear on my life. We can find a needle in the haystack. All we'd have to do is cast fireball. And... <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, wouldn't that look good? Save them. It would mean much to me that you would risk your lives and your safety for one of us. And if we don't return, uh, you'll still have uh, uh, Count Grestoff and the information that we've given you, and you can make a wise choice with uh, a little more knowledge. You're right. And if there's anything else that you can do that would make my decision easier, anything you find out, it will help in my determinations. We'll see what we can find out. I mean, we, we could come back empty handed. Um, no problem. But we, we tend to come back full handed. You know, okay. All of our sake, I hope you do not come back empty handed. And, and I just want to make ended. this clear that. Uh, no, I didn't come out of the mouth part. Right? We don't do this for a reward. We're doing this because we need to, and we're not in it for the reward. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. You can help us by giving us resources and information. And we will help you by. Making sure that the citizens of this county are safe. Also, undying love and appreciation and praise is welcome. You will see the nature of your return. Anything is on the table. I am a man willing to negotiate. And with that, uh, you see that he takes uh, uh, this a slice of some sort of melon and he pops in his mouth and finishes it. He uh, downs the last bit of his coffee as he stands and uh, uh, looks at all of you. And as soon as he stands, all the rest of the night stands. Some are, are half finished with their breakfast, but they all put down their meals as they then begin to walk back to their horses and start mounting. I'll stand immediately with the count. You are not my subject. Uh, just Relax. thank you. Thank you, sir, or, or, or count. Uh, I, I really appreciate your willingness to, to help, and we'll make sure that we help you in return. Yes, and just as a personal request from me, if you are encountering other Brovians, just do your best not to hurt Morale. Of course. He nods. I hope we meet in next in happy circumstances. Well, you certainly know uh, what melon to eat, the honey melon. That's the money melon, as I always say. <laughs> it is very sweet. Good luck. May the morning lord shine upon you. And he turns and goes back to his horse and uh, he he mounts up and immediately uh, with, with a single uh, a single motion his horse takes off and the, the eleven uh, knights that are with him uh, follow in formation, and they ride off, and it's the thundering of hooves and rumbling. Uh, and then as soon as they're decently enough away, uh, the Vasani basically start to conger, congregate in the middle. There's some music starts to play, some, the voices become uh, uh, louder and more at ease, and then you hear laughing, and, and uh, it's a little bit more like how it was. Um, 
the previous week. Well, uh, I think we've got a full day ahead of us. What, what's our, do we need to do anything here, or should we just immediately start uh, making our way? Uh, I think we should do it. We, we know where to go. Yeah, we need to yeah. go northeast, through Sounds the right. dragon uh, dragon fire woods, and keep into our the eyes beast woods. Peel because it's hidden. And uh, we have to peel our eyes, and yeah. then uh, and then we'll find a cave of some sort. And on the route, we'll look for clues for Sophiana. And if we find her in the cave, or we find a trail of her, and we follow that, we will be able to make a decision here today. Oh, uh, well, it's a very simple eight-step program. Well, then let's go northeast for step one. You're not allowed to leave yet because my papa said that you're going to put on a good show for me before you left. And you turn and you see that there's that same girl. She looks to be about 11 or 12. Um, as she uh, she looks at all of you uh, very expectantly. And sure? Yeah, and what kind of show did papa say we were going to put on? He said you were very good at, at, at performing and telling stories and just doing really cool stuff. And I saw the you guys on stage and you did really impressive stuff. Can you turn into a big wave man? Um, well, come sort of. I mean, I could, I, I, I can summon Miko, my wee friend. But I'm not going to do that here because I can't do that all the time, and I may need him later. But that's not very fun. I did promise Alessandro that I would uh, give him a song. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to perform in the like hours of the morning. I was, I was, I thought it might be more of a, a evening. Uh, uh, I had a very specific vision. All right, Nietzsche, you understand? Uh, I, 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 I can give him the song, and they, perhaps they can perform it while we're away. Uh, Make a persuasion check. Natural twenty. Oh, wow! God, get it. Uh, get it. Thirty. We rolled two dice. I don't know what, I, I, I don't know what I'm arguing for. I'm, That's I'm like sort of being I, coy about yeah, whether or not I'm going to perform it. You'll, 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 you'll see. Oh, you'll see. As you say that, uh, you see her kind of turn. She, she, the bravado that she has kind of breaks a little bit, and she says, "Well, you, the boss says you might be able to find what well, Leska." Is that true? You can save the song. Just please look for Valeska and find her and bring and bring back Sofiana. That is what I care about. That's I don't exactly what we're trying to do. You're no. exactly right. You do that, and you sing your song. Don't cry. Okay, just just you can save it for tonight because Papa's tending to the horses now, and he'll want to hear it. I don't want to. He's done so much. He's not giving him a sleep no, lately. Like well, you. If we're not going to be back tonight, we'll be back the following night. It'll be a day or two, but Don't we'll be back. Don't correct her! No, I just want to set expectations. Yes. and the longer you're a meddlesome, bothersome little child thing, the more likely she's going to die. So we're off. Oh! Finally. Iris! Oh. Well, That's not very nice. It's the truth, and she must learn it also if the werewolves how going to go to them. Do you understand? Oh yeah, uh, this man. Whoa! I'm, I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna look at her and I'm gonna say, <laughs> "This man is not safe. We need to grow up." Get back, kid. Uh, intimidation, you say? I'm not intimidating. I was intimidating. <laughs> Holy shit! Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Good. Like, that is oh, I think I rolled an advantage for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, why. It's a little bit poor. This fall. Fall. Roll it again. Uh, it's the same thing. She takes a step back, back and is like, <laughs> "Man, you're almost as mean as you were in the play." Oh. <laughs> Darling, I get much meaner. Now go tend to your father. Well, I need to go water the horses in the event. I'm going to help Papa. Good luck. Don't die. Please please find Sofiana and then Valeska. Goodbye. No. I don't have anyone to boss around without Valeska. And uh, she turns and uh, she grabs a, a, a large uh, bucket and uh, starts to, to to carry it off. Hi, Willis. What's not going to do your tail in a knot? Why are you so mean to her? She's noxious. So are you a little bit? Yes, I know. So am I. Oh yes, I know. I know, but you don't do mean things to me. Do you know you what happens to Valeska? No. She wandered into the woods and she was stolen away. We saved her, she was stolen away again, and she might die. Yeah. That child is being coddled. I don't want to see her killed. And if that makes me a bitch, then I'll be one. 
I she am. needs to fear something for a moment until we can clear the land of that heinous Carrion King so that she can have a happy, healthy childhood and she doesn't need mean old Kitty Iris to put her in her place. <laughs> yes, you do. I'm going to pout away. Uh, well, it's and hold one. my breath. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, for what it's worth, I think you're right, and I don't think you're out of line. And for what it's worth, if that little girl was, was stolen, I would go to the ends of the hills and and back to make sure she was safe. We're gonna find them. I, I'm with you 100%. We're gonna find them. It's gonna be alright. Oh god, I wish my head was pounding. Oh! All right, and I'll cast Lesser Restoration on him and cure his hangover. Ooh. Yeah, you suddenly feel like a million bucks. Oh my god! You can just do that? Yes. Uh, Why do you think we're best friends? I was going <laughs> to swear off wine <laughs> forever. <laughs> but, but now you're telling me that like I can just enjoy uh, alcohol and you can just fix it? Yes, of course. Oh. You just simply have to ask. Oh. Don't babar Felix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've been so uptight my whole life. I just, you know, I can loosen up a little bit. Oh. So I was thank you. Tale of baba. Yeah. I was thank you so baba. much. Uh, I felt like my brain was just in molasses all morning, and now I'm like, I'm ready to go. We yeah. can we can go save those people. Yes, we yeah, need you in tip top shape to make sure oh, the children are perfect. Safe. Do we know where the cave system is? Do we, well, let me talk yes, to uh, it's One northeast. moment. Like it is northeast past about. the Dragon's Fire Woods, and we need to look for a trail. Uh, you, perfect. You make your way to the outskirts. Where does it go? Before, <laughs> before we go do anything, I run to Alessandro, and I give him a piece of parchment that says, have your musicians practice this so we can perform it when we get back. Oh. It's got, I'll give you the lyrics when we get back, but this is just the note. Uh, this is the progressions, all right? Uh, and, then you, I run, and then I run away. You see that, there, that he's actually... Um, he has a, uh, a a pitchfork. It's a two-pronged uh, pitchfork. As he's uh, uh, heaving uh, hay into a large trough, and there's probably at least, as you look around on this the edge of this camp, that he's tending to probably about twenty horses, uh, varying ages and sizes and, and, and colors. As um, you look at them, and you actually get the sense that the the horses that that um, that Sergey and his knights were riding were Mustani horses. And that's probably why they were able to just uh, to, to traverse the treacherous landscape as well and as effortlessly as, the, as they did. And that seems as if it to be one of Alessandro's things. And as he, he goes, ah, you are awake. Everyone is doing fine. Thank you. Uh, Misha, I think, is going to learn a little bit of respect. I apologize for my little no, girl. No, no, she no, no, just, no, no, and, and thank you. And here, take this. As he said, I'm glad you found me before you left. I thought I'd be done by the time you all made yourself... Uh, made your way to the beast world. We have a sense of urgency about this. We're going to go and take care of business. Yes, that is where I think, from what Sofiana had told me, that's my best guess. Look in that area. Oh, and... <laughs> oh yeah, no, oh, oh, okay, yeah. You see? These landmarks there's there's a lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Lake Zorovich, uh -huh. and then there's the mountains. It's up towards there. It's okay. Like, apparently, Hidden away behind a very dense thicket, uh, behind deep into a ravine. Thicket, okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I think this is clear. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, we'll, 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 we'll be back. Uh, work Sorry. on work on the story, and uh, we'll be we'll be back as soon as we can. Honestly, get practicing as soon as our morning chores are done. Be safe, my friends. Cheers. I'll run back to the group and join up wherever we're leaving and you town. You see, you see the the mage hand. He's, he's using uh, prestidigitation and, and, and magic to, to help him in his training. Nice fighting, by the way. And I uh, yeah. return to the group. You all join. Uh, well, I, I, I have a map, uh, and uh, we can we can do this on foot. Uh, we can do this on foot, or we can uh, walk. How far does it look? Uh, well, I uh, can tell you right here. Um, wait, did you just say we can do this on foot or we can walk? Because I feel, Caprice, that those are the same things. Well, and the third option is that we can go on foot, yes. <laughs> how, how far does it look on the map? Um, it looks like it'll it'll take you probably, from your your rough estimation, by the time you think it'll take you to get there, probably if you hoof it, about like three hours. Oh, yeah. Three to four hours. Does hoof it mean on... 
No, no, no. If we if we <laughs> if we set out immediately, we can make it in no time at all. I, that's totally doable. Do you want me to go yeah. back and see if I can get some horses? I, I don't want to put these people out anymore. They did than have they like twenty. I don't think that's necessary. I'm worried that if we're going to where there are werewolves, that horses true, could be in trouble. True. Maybe we'd be a little. Okay, scared. I'm only, glad you said that. Because... It's only a few hours walk. Well, let's leave right away. Agreed. Toa, you all right? I ate a lot of eggs. What, what does that mean? I ate too many eggs. I take a few steps, very large steps away from Toa. I sigh heavily and I walk over to Toa. I put my hand on his stomach and I cast <laughs> Lesser Restoration. Counterspell, counterspell, counterspell. Oh, Iris. Please. Do not waste the counterspell. Oh, Iris. 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 Oh, I feel so much better. Thank you. You're oh, welcome. Oh, that was real close. There was like a there was like a life or death. I saw my life flash before my eyes, or I saw yes, you were does a, a gross of eggs. How many how many eggs are on a gross uh, egg? It's, it's 144. Yeah, I probably have three gross eggs. <laughs> What's the plural of gross? Grosses? Grosses. More than one gross. 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 Perhaps a gross. Grease? Well, if a Mouse is mice, is it right? Exactly right. I think it's Christ. I think you're oh, right. Thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Iris, I, I think what Toa is trying to say is that we both overdid a little bit last night and we're sorry. And we won't make you use Anubis's divine power to cure our hangovers anymore. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, no, but I no, still will. No. You have better things to be doing, what and Anubis has better things to be anymore. doing than than, stay drunk. than curing a, a hangover. And, well, but I appreciate it, and, and I won't be putting you in that position anymore. You slept well last night, didn't you? I don't know if I did. I had some horrible nightmares, and then that ringing in my head, that damn alarm. Ah, and that poor girl, I almost turned her to ash. That would have been horrible. Yeah. yeah it's that. common, though. Don't cry you, over... You probably didn't yeah. even need to use a spell. Something. You could have just punched her in the face and she would have died. I would never do that. You could say, I cast punch. I don't punch. know that. I, I don't punch people. That's not really my thing. I think I usually get towed into a form. When Felix yeah. punches, it's like zero damage. What is that supposed It's to at be? least one like point Like hurts his hand more we've, than we've it hurts the person. We've gone again and again. <laughs> no, I mean, it's one plus your modifier, but your few modifier is negative. Minimum one! <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say that well. <laughs> I mean, if I had to put a number on my modifier for strength, it's zero. So I'm oh, pretty so sure that if some damage. random jackass in a bar were to challenge me to fight, I could punch zero. him eight times and I would. I, I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I punched you a bunch of times, you'd be dead. <laughs> Felix, you know what's crazy is that at level one, I could have punched you once and not you out. <laughs> <laughs> Felix, you're you're like made of rock. I don't. I wouldn't refute that for a second. You could punch Lupti right now and probably knock her out. No. Well, I'd take a few punches, probably. But I all right. You, I bet you could do it in one. Well, let's see. Yeah, my money's on Toa. Would you like to bet? Don't make that up. Oh, I'm not I'm really a punchy. Punchy. I'm not really a punchy kind of guy. What's that supposed to mean? Now, a, now I've talked you up. I put a hundred gold on Lufty. No, to, to what? To beat Toa? Yes. I'm a, I'm a pacifist. To knock him out. I don't fight my friends. I'm not going to fight you. You're a pacifist? I'm going to punch Toa right in the chin. I can't reach your chin. I'm going to punch you right in the gut. <laughs> Uh, and then all three gross of eggs <laughs> come back up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Which would be like, no, what, 100 and... Oh, waste my... Uh, let's do 444 eggs? Is that right? No, no that's not even close. That's not even close. Um, 550... <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm Can assuming. I oh, no. Uh, my uh, I, no I'm a I'm 144 times three. Oh, I actually wasn't that far off. 432. That's not bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna just listen to this conversation thinking about how like you were a soldier and at least they made you do push-ups. So you yeah. you having a zero versus my negative one. Everybody jokes hilarious. about me being this like weakling. But yes, compared to Toa, I'm horrifically weak. But like 
I could still punch a commoner to death. Like, that's unironic. <laughs> that's I could still beat the ever-living fuck out of some dude in a bar if he picked a fight with me. Like, I'm still a soldier. It's just I'm not Toa strong. I'm not, like, you know... Iris strong. How strong are you? I have plus one. Oh, bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> I have. Bullshit! <laughs> I'm only plus one. So both Loki and Iris are strong. I just yes, I'm really strong. <laughs> only, only technically, until I learn ten. Hold him down and tickle him until he throws up. <laughs> uh, once I learn Tensor's transformation, though, I can even rip Toa's head off. <laughs> Felix's torso just like triples in size. Are, I don't know if we're just standing at the edge of the. Camp I'll say you're or... walking. Yeah, through you're, walking. You, we were waiting. Thank God, yes, you've been walking decided, through the right. uh, dragon flame forest. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be singing the entire time, as per usual. Just. Uh, Making the walk go that much easier by whistling and coming up with fun lyrics, telling stories. At this you know, point, bargularly, you look and you're Bargularly. getting towards the outskirts of the Dragon Flame Forest, and you see where it gets its name. You see a um, a group of skeletons in a clearing where it seems as if the grass and the underbrush has recently been burned away and you see charred skeletons of, they seem to all be humanoid, uh, but probably about uh, six of them in a pile. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, as soon as you said we saw a group of skeletons, I assumed they were all just like, Hanging out, standing around, and like, <laughs> and like, hey Jim, like, oh, we're skeletons today. Skeleton you know? and Jim. We walked into the wrong forest, and now we're a bunch of skeletons. One has an upright base. Yeah. yeah. Hey Jim, do you want to go into the camp? Doing no, the, I don't have the ghost. Doing the bone <laughs> dance. Exactly. Exactly. Says, hey, Daddy, I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> I'm really glad that they're in a pile and not doing a, a stand-up. Uh, you get the sense that this you know, one not is doing anything really. <laughs> You get, and you see that there's an orc skeleton and uh, an owl folk skeleton as well. You get the sense that perhaps uh, a Shatter Kai and a number of ghouls attempted to scout out this area and got by the trees. That seems to be the implication. Allegedly. We should be really nice to, the, to these trees. I've never seen a tree that could light things on fire. You would think that a tree wouldn't light but fire you know very Felix. much. What? What? He's skinny like a tree, and he lights things on fire. Okay, well, first off, that is really rude. Second of all, uh, we were, we, I mean, we heard that voice. Yes, yeah, it's a lie. Me. Thank you. When we were with Escher, we, we heard something about it being okay that we walk amongst the trees. Yeah, that's true. I think we've been given some sort of pass, and, and I think it's all because of Escher. Well, we know that the forest can talk, so... Hello, forest. Um, good morning. Uh, if you if you can hear us, um, and we hope you have a very lovely day as a forest. You hear a voice. I'm casting minor illusion. Thanks, Toa. Really appreciate your time. Have a great walk. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, that was nice. I, th- th- I think the forest likes us. Why do you be nice to a tree? You just I don't know. You don't like. Cut it down. You don't you hug it. firewood. You could hug it, I guess. I mean, you could just just don't, you know be be mindful you of it. You put some know? of your water on it so it has a drink. Water. You, the nice breeze whips through the dragon flame forest, and you feel safe and at peace. And the 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 morning sun turns gets closer to noon as the sun or uh, rather rises in the sky. And uh, it feels pleasantly warm. It's it's a it's a it's a huge change from the time you spent in Skethrinil, um lately. And however, the pleasant walk through the these woods comes to an end sooner than you'd like. Although it is closer to your destination, as you see that tree line of the beast wood ahead of you, and you make your way into the forest of gnarled branches reaching up. To the sky as if begging for absolution and despite being barren of, of, tr- of, of any leaves it still casts a great shadow as you are covered in more darkness 
than you were beneath the canopy of those brilliant dragon fire trees. As you see the faces equally begging for that uh, that that help, wailing as if whatever last moments those trees had were in absolute agony. If those really are indeed the faces of the trees. And you proceed. You hear the occasional far off animal, very occasional howl that echoes through the valley. You hear a rocks to fall down and you look over as you see a sickly looking deer. It looks a little bit emaciated. Um, uh, trying to uh, root around in the in the in the earth, you see a little blade of grass coming up from the ground as it bites at it, and then as you approach, it looks at you and bolts away. As you continue to make your way, and you walk through the beast world for about three hours, and you have the map that uh, Alessandro gave you. And you attempted to follow the best you can as the you, you make your way through the outer ring of the beastwood, and now it's mixed in with just the same standard large dark uh, trees of the black forests of um, of Skethrin. As you're away from that ring of, of, of tapped trees for that precious oil that the cult had so greedily harvested. And I'm going to need everyone to make a survival check. Oh boy. At advantage because you have a map. I'm going to do a group survival and see how long. Oh, advantage is another natural 20. Wow. Jeez. Natural 20. Wow, okay. Well, I got a 16, so I got an 18 total. So I'm actually pretty I got a 16. These dice are rolling like hot fire. You're rolling really well tonight. Got 11 plus It was like fucking prime. This table is fire, apparently. It's been, it's been a hot fire. table for a while. 19. Somebody did something to this table. Yeah. <laughs> it was all that Welsh we spilled on Oh, that. I thought it was oh, no. Abyssal. We <laughs> summoned some kind of table demon. It turns out yeah. that Abyssal was... I have to do to die to Deegan! I love you table demon. Silly go 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 <laughs> yeah. Giggle, wiggle, giggle, giggle, wiggle, wiggle, go, 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 go. Poor Mike, it's like trying to DM. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. After about three hours, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. you arrive to where you think the point on the map is. You see, you see, um, go, go, go. You see the the bit of of Lake Zarovich as you as the elevation increases uh, through the, the the ring of the dragon flame, uh, the dragon fire trees, as you. Uh, or cross-referencing it, you see this massive uh, mountain rising up and, and the smaller mountains all around it forming this valley, and you look and you see you, you use the, the you're, you're, you're tracking the ground and actually um, as you follow the map, you find some tracks and it's unmistakable in the, or in the earth a series of canine-like feet and, and dozens of cents. And you see that it's actually going in the direction of a very dense thicket of both these, these dead trees of the beastwood and also these uh, large, dense uh, black forest trees. And you continue to make your way and you see as you, the elevation increases, sure, you think you might be going in the wrong direction. But then, eventually there's a dip and you see a very narrow ravine go deeper as the elevation descends. And then you see the ca a canyon open up in a large ravine with trees densely packed on all sides as if shading it from the skies above, perhaps with watchful wear ravens. Ooh. And you see now in this almost as if the earth itself has been hollowed out, but it is a natural phenomenon. You see a uh, uh, an entrance along this cliff face with the mountain rising high up and you see now that at the very end of this open space with the mouth of a cave and jutting out 
but from the top and the bottom of it are stone formations that look like the maw of an enormous wolf. And you see the large uh, tree cover along the ravine that it almost as if the trees are grown up against the mountain to completely shade it. Um, uh, that rock formation really looks like a wolf, so I think we're in the right place. I mean, probably a deception. I, 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 if I were a wolf man, I wouldn't live in there because I would, I would just full of traps and leave. I mean, what does the yeah. map say? Did, did we follow the map correctly? We, we couldn't have gone wrong. We have a map? Uh, yeah. What, what do you think I've been doing this whole time? I I don't know. I just thought it was like a weird caprice thing. Yeah. I didn't ask. That's fair. I, uh, I feel very confident that this is the correct spot. All right. Well, then we're here we, here we are. We have to proceed with caution. We'll all stick together. <coughs> Charmer. And we're ready. So we, we should do. We should go quietly if we can. Look, and, and at the end of the day, I, I think that there might be some value in what Alessandra said, and that we might be able to resolve this peacefully. Granted, I'm not one to exactly be kind to kidnappers, but let's find out where they are. And if we can fix these relationships and, fi- and, 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 and solve these problems of all these people, maybe we can bring these people together against the Carrion King. Right? Let's yes. reserve judgment. Yes. Yeah. I want a marching order, please. Well, I am absolutely behind Toa, who is most likely in the lead. I'm, I have the map. I'd be in the lead. I am behind Toa, who is most so, likely behind Caprice. I'm behind Caprice. You're behind me. Caprice, you need to make a perception check. I'm in the very, very last position. Okay. You're in the back. Perception. That's where I'm a Viking rule. I'm in the one spot that's left. <laughs> you uh, the one spot. Give me I'm a that 16 one spot. Now, with a passive perception of 17. A 16. Mm. Uh, I'll say that as you're up in the lead, uh, uh, Caprice, as you see it's this, that this, uh, it's very uh, loose rubble that goes down into this uh, large rubble. ravine uh, that has a very narrow path, very well hidden. As you hear the sound of, of, of like a low growling and heavy breathing and movement and and and, and a scraping of claws uh, echoing from the mountains. Oh god, I hate that. <laughs> Please never do that again. <laughs> okay, I won't. Oh, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. All right, let's all just settle down. I'll, I'll pause and I'll be like, uh, you know, maybe you're going to be okay. Is this yeah. the right spot? <laughs> Guys, you all are able to hear. Okay, all right, it's fine. We, we kind of expected this, so let's just all go carefully. Wait, should we like announce ourselves, or we should do? We should stage whisper. So yeah, we, that's that's fine. We can stage whisper. Are we, are we Did I not do in? that? I thought I was doing. No, I think it was me that wasn't well, doing. I think that's everyone fine. seems quiet to me. We can talk a little, we can so a little bit. So that's more. fine. Quietly. What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Speak to me. Oh. I so, never know in these scenarios if we should sneak up on the person that we're trying to sneak up on or if we should just be like, hey, let's be upfront about it and say hello. I think we should sneak and try to get some more information. Maybe like hide behind a rock and like look over and then they'll be discussing some important plan probably when we get up there. Oh, yeah? You think that's what's going to happen? Well, I mean, you never know. I mean, maybe. You Do you speak know. werewolf? You described this ravine as rubbly and then some sort of uh, outer perimeter. So, yeah, so basically, like, you're all just draw, like, a, a loose thing, right? I love so, drawing loose things. So, so basically, you know, there was a small ravine that went down, and then basically there's this large, and this is basically the mountain uh, face, yeah. and it's going on up. Mm-hmm. And then you mm-hmm. see kind of, here's, like, the wolf snout, right? And then so here's the... the we are ravine. doing it live, friends. And then it's ru- loose, rubbly, and then the ravine opens up to this large area. And it's all filled with trees. And it's, and well, it's no, this is barren, but on the, the, the ravine above you. Oh. So it's probably about oh, 20 see. feet up. There's trees that are going, uh, growing like up. Like leaning over. Leaning over. over and and we're, almost, we're, you see roots coming down, like, and, and growing out and growing into the cliff face. We, we hear movement, snarling, scratching. You hear echoing. There's a lot of echoing that sounds like wolf, wolf-like wolf beings that's coming from 
it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a large cavern, so there's a lot of echo. So it's not like it's difficult to presume that there will be oh, uh, noise. Is it apparent to me that we would be able to get up to the wall or, or get or in, to sneak this field? It, it, it seems like an open space. It's, it's yeah, it's open. It's pretty. It's pretty loose rubble and earth and dirt. So I know this is going to be a, a shot in the dark. Uh, I know that you can go invisible, Caprice. And if you'd like to check it out and and maybe go ahead, I can go with you because I still have a little bit of dusted disappearance. Oh yeah, that's and, easy. and that way, a great idea. That way, we're, you're not going alone. We can just take a quick look, and we'll come right back. I mean, if uh, if you're sure, it could be dangerous. Of course, that's why we're going to go in a pair. And worst case scenario, I can get Caprice and I out of trouble a lot faster than Caprice can get himself out of trouble. Well, you should have some kind of code word to, like, yell or shout, so we know to, like, rush in if you need help. Uh, just one moment. Sure. Uh, do you want the, uh, uh, would you like it to be something like Hector Crabman? Who says Hector that? You're Man gonna throw Crab. him into hysterics again! because I mean, then you'll know that it's super dangerous. What do you know about Hector Man I know. Did I tell you everything? You told us yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 you even sang you a song. really did. You got up here. You sang yeah. us a song. You drew the picture. I don't want to associate these werewolves with Victor Man Crab in case they are nice werewolves. <laughs> All right, what would you prefer our, our okay. dangerous code word to be? No, 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 we don't need a code word. I've got an idea. Okay. All, All right. Uh, yeah, uh, well, you've got your, your club, uh, uh, what do you call it? Totem. Your totem. totem. Your totem. Yeah, sorry. I couldn't think of the word. Um, club okay. is fine. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, to- you just have to concentrate on um, not fighting the spell I'm going to cast on you. Okay? Now, what I want you to do, I suggest that you hold this outstretched, your totem. And you fail. I fail. I choose to fail. You choose to fail. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Now, um, if something happens to me, or we need to, to, I'll break concentration, you'll drop your your totem, and then you'll know to run with us. That's actually kind of pretty Oh, wow. Oh, that's a great... That's a... And look, at the end of the day, if things really go pear shaped, I can get Caprice and I out in the flash of an eye. Yeah, yeah I never yeah, understood good. that saying. I what? love pears. Pear shaped? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. What's wrong with a pear? There's nothing wrong with a pear. Especially things that are pear shaped. Yeah, but so I don't why want to get into that right now. Okay? Just, I don't want to explore the inner sweet and delicious. Of... Anyway, the point is, and I pop open the, uh, the dust of disappearance. This isn't gonna last too long. I got a few minutes, all right? You got a few minutes? Yeah. Oh, I was gonna do this for eight hours. All right, let's go. <laughs> you were gonna leave Toa like that for eight hours? No, I mean, I've got an hour to uh, zoop and I make myself invisible. Oh, sweet lords. Ooh. And I, I pour the dust and disappearance on my own. My arm's already really tired. <laughs> <laughs> you hear oh! Before. I got seven total minutes. <laughs> Okay. We don't oh. have a lot of time to go okay. explore. Right? Uh, right. I need you to make a stealth check at advantage as you begin to huff it. You, know, you see both Felix and Caprice uh, to look at advantage. Oh. Oh. That was oh. that was destined uh, to be what it was. Not as great as I could No, been. no, mine was absolute. But any roll but two threes. I got a six. Butt poop. Butt poop. I got a six. Okay. Or perhaps my nineteen will help. Ha oh, butt poop. Um as as do your thing, but as we begin to steal I, I whisper to Caprice, uh, I just hold my hand, all right? Because if we have to get out of trouble in a flash, I can do it, all right? Can't you just hold this? What What the hell is that? <laughs> ah, sweet Raven Queen, stop it! Give me your, your hand! No! Stop! <laughs> what is that in your tail? I assume it's his tail. <laughs> but it's some fleshy appendage that I'm not okay with. Your hand, Caprice, your Touch hand! Touch my teeth, fling flap full. No! No! Touch my Caprice, please! please. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, and, and, and again, don't let go. Because if we have to get out in a heartbeat, I can get us out and far away very quickly. But you have to be holding me. Just by the hand. <laughs> well, as long as we're touching. <laughs> but the hand is safest. All right. Hit me hard. Uh, lead, lead the way. You, you're no. one with the timer. No, no, you lead the way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's both go together. Fine. Lockstep style, we make our way down through and into the mouth, or looking into the mouth. Uh, under my breath, but a little too loud, I say, God, I tell <laughs> uh, I'm probably I heard skipping. <laughs> you're, uh, you're all as fine. you make your way through. <laughs> six. six. 
<laughs> you see the large uh, wolf-like snout emerging on, on both the top and the bottom. As you peer in and you see that this is a cave that immediately starts going down and opens up. And you can see that, that th- this space is so large and it's illuminated by, uh, by torchlight. Um, uh, that it, that are that are that are uh, staked into the ground, and you see very clearly at the front that there are four huge wolves that are just in the cliff face. Two are sitting up, and two are lying down. As you as you continue to make your way, and you see now that as uh, as as you peer in, and it's, it's difficult to see. Uh, as the space opens up and just, it's just dim in the torchlight, uh, the, the the silhouette almost of what looks like a uh, a, a sturdy f- uh, female silhouette that seems to be walking um, that is uh, that is armed uh, probably with some sort of crossbow and sword. As uh, you, you see that, and, and, and she seems to be basically the edge of the uh, edge of your sight down into this tunnel that then begins to open up. Um, Does it look like they're that the wolves are so close that we wouldn't be able to silently, even invisibly, get past them without a noticed sound or footprint embedding itself in the dirt path? Uh, as you make your way through, you would, you're trying to discern them. You might be able to squeeze by, and it's a pretty a large uh, cliff face. And you see that there are a couple of bones strewn about. And you see now that there's actually bones that are in the gravel and rubble, or not rubble, but the, the, the stones. Uh, and they all seem to be animals uh, about. You see that one of the wolves is gnawing at a tiny little bit of sinew, that, uh, that, that, one, that one of the wolves is actually, one of the ones is lying down, trying to get its, its tongue around and try to scrape off of, a, of maybe like a, a leg bone of, a, of an elk. I'm picturing a dog's with sword and stone. That's great. Uh, yeah. And as you approach, however, you're trying to discern that. Uh, I would say we're, we're, hof- we're moving quickly. We're moving quickly. We know it all the time. I'm t- pulling on Felix's hand. <laughs> yeah, and you are pulling on the hand as, and up. with yeah, that's Oofed it indeed. As I got, you, sh- I got yeah, sex. As you fuck. begin to just fuck as you begin to up, approach, man. you hear and a growling as they as the uh, wolves look back at each other, and there's very clearly a sentence there as they start to growl, and um, you then hear growling above. You. As hmm. uh, some 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 shadows uh, from the uh, from the tree line above you start to appear as uh, more uh, huge wolf-like shapes uh, uh, stick their heads from over the cliff as they are they all seem to be scanning the ravine where we, where we are. No, 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 the ravine where they are. Oh the God, ravine no. in front of the, uh, the, 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 the 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 mouth of the cave. Um, and these are wolves of, of thick, dark grays and dark browns and blacks. Yikes. Uh, as they're standing, some look to be scarred up. And, and, oh yeah. Clarification, is it the mouth of the cave or the cave at the mouth? <laughs> uh, yes. Perfect. Thank ah. you. <laughs> Fine distinction. What a classic. Yeah, they can smell us. Come on, let's get into the cave so it's a mess. Lead the way, go, 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 go. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna cave actually, cave. instead of slowing down <laughs> with this information in my brain, I'm going to speed up and try to get past them. So it's like, oh, the snow is just on the wind. And I'm, I'm actually gonna push Felix and I to get deeper into the cave as quick as we can. Um, I would, okay, I will say I, I need to make another, uh, another stealth check at advantage, and we're gonna make another perception check for the, the wolf, and, and they still get high alert. Better. I got a nine this time. Worse. Man, I suck. I miss Vandras. Seventeen. Um, and and you're pulling. I'm Felix. I'm, pull, I'm talking. And about him to try Felix and is through. trying to follow behind you, and you hear the the, the uh, rubble as uh, as it kicks, uh, and a Roof bunch up. of uh, uh, gravel and stones are kicked across, and you hear a uh, a rough female voice call out. Uh, are you the arrows coming to make the trade? Who goes there? We can smell you! I 
smell with minor illusion. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I was gonna say, prestidigitation lets you make an odd odor, but it's only ten foot range. <laughs> so I, it's not <laughs> like I can yeah, <laughs> tell, us, tell them where we are. And Mark. the growling right. starts to right. get louder <laughs> as you see a um, oh, uh, the, the, the silhouette of the woman. She uh, she steps uh, more into the light as she steps towards the uh, the cave of the mouth. And uh, she has um, a bra- braided red hair, and uh, her face is all scarred up. As uh, she she scans the, uh, uh, the this 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 ravine in in front of the, the, the cave. Uh, I'll stop and just yeah yep yep. And I would do the same. I'm I'm holding Caprice's hand and I'm following his lead. How many, how, 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 many, how many minutes? How many minutes would you? Uh, I would say we could accomplish a lot in eight minutes, but we don't have a lot of time. We don't have a That's lot. That's the time. idea, right? We were hustling, but we don't have a lot of time. What was your actual question? Oh, my actual question was: uh, uh, Can you zamp us into the cave? Yes. Uh, I want you to see if that's if you're saying that to him out loud. I'm, I mean, I'm pulling real he's, close. He's whispering like, it, but, sure, but I would say I would say make a stealth check. Yeah, because, absolutely. Uh, you know, they're they're on on guard here. Oh damn it! I am. It's gotten worse and worse. Uh, I'm 14. Gone. 14. 14. Um, you you uh, hear the the. Uh, the disruption of gravel behind him as rocks kick the back of your boots as as two as three massive wolves leap from the uh, cliff face behind you and land and begin to sniff around getting closer as all four wolves from the uh the, 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 the mouth start to uh, sniff around as well as they're beginning to pincer you on either side. And uh, they say, we fulfilled our end of the bargain. You need to do yours if it is one of you elves. Let's make this quick. Ivar will not be happy if you're playing tricks. Ooh. Who? What was the name? Ivar. 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 That's what I thought. I-V-A-R. I-V-A-R, you got it. <gasps> Can we see this happening? Are they far enough away? Or? I would say this is very clear now. The wolves have jumped down. Uh, there's so two they in the didn't back get now, very far. and no, they just made it to the. Yeah. We uh, basically made it to the mouth entrance, yeah. essentially. Yeah. You may have got a high uh, plus perception. I will, uh, knowing that I'm certainly blowing my heart cover even further, perhaps I'll just quickly go um, pop us in or pop us out. But, Either take us back to the group or or, or, or take us deeper. So, the so him asking that question of whether or not we can get to safety or go deeper, I would I would have looked around and just tried to see if there was a spot deeper within the cave uh, that is undercover or or you know someplace that we could hide behind, or whether or not if that doesn't exist, we have to get back where we came from. Is what I would try to perceive. Right? Okay, I need to make a quick perception check because quick disadvantage. Sure. <sighs> Twist. I am rolling everything just straight up the same way. Um, I don't hate the idea of twisting it. Twist it. I don't even Fuck know. It. Is perception an in check? It's whiz. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Let me let me get you let me grab all the twisters. Yeah, one of those twisterinos. Bang. Right here. Thank you, Chad. Uh, and let me give this one another roll. Mm. It will That's never nice be one. found again. No, it's it will fine. disappear forever. <laughs> okay, so I actually got an 18 total on my perception check. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty okay. good. You look and you see that although there are actually the, the this cave seems to actually be some sort of network of tunnels and caverns, and there seems to be uh, different uh, rooms and, and, and tunnels that go out further, all with uh, with torches on these uh, large stakes that illuminate it. There's such a long, um, there's a very long uh, entrance way with, uh, uh, you see now that there's uh, at least three humanoid shapes that are also armed that are um, that are stepping to join this uh, this scarred up female. So do I feel that deeper into the cave there's anywhere to hide? 
I would say where you think you could go, probably not. There's, it's, it's all very open, and it seems to be as if they are on very higher alert, as if they've been loitering around the, the entrance of this cave, waiting for something. So then what I would say was with with that assessment... Yep, it's a very quick assessment, that's all you need. I would, I would very quickly in one motion, holding Caprice's hand in, in one hand, with my other hand, I would, uh, about ten feet away, make Preston to just hate a really foul odor. Just, it's just a sensory thing that they okay. would smell. And then uh, my verbal command would be looking towards where I think Caprice is and say, hang on tight, and Dimension door us back where we came from. Okay. I need to make a deception check. Sure. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to make an insight check. OJ. He's a good one. I'm going to make an insight check here. Oh, Not bad. Not bad. Not Still bad. Good, uh, it's going to be a 16 total. 16. Uh, they got a 13. Huh? As the you uh you see that she's uh she's getting on edge as she steps in and she is very um very broad incredibly muscular and she's why are you doing this we had a deal and suddenly this the incredibly disgusting odor appears like rotten meat or rotten just meat like, disgusting you know, and all all um six <laughs> of the wolves leap forward towards that direction as you are able to bolt in the other direction as she pulls out a heavy crossbow and just shoots in the direction uh, towards the smell. And then, so I would say that we basically, if 500 feet, you know, if we've gone down a route ever. Yeah, 500 feet, we would go back up to where we started, right? I'd we, say you're able to, and they're distracted. And we land and, oh, we got out. We're good. We're good. Let's as, get back to the group. As you hear shouting voices, and the uh, the wolves are now sniffing around, uh, incredibly distracted by this. As uh, three more humanoid shapes, uh, one one woman and, and two men, uh, they all have uh, uh, bit scruffy looking hair and, and facial hair for the men. As they're all looking around, as uh, some uh, two have uh, axes, another one has uh, has a sword. As they're now starting to look around, with uh, you see one more wolf. Uh, skulking along the top of the ridge, probably coming uh, in your direction. So I would say we run back to the rest of the group. Yeah, you're Very now, quickly. and yeah, yeah. Felix and Toa now appear with the rest of you. Um, you find out. Uh, so good news and bad news. Uh, the bad news, part of the bad news, is that I'm not as stealthy as Caprice is, and that they probably are aware that we're here. Uh, the good news is that they were already expecting somebody anyway, and we were on really high alert, so we really didn't do that much damage to the situation. No, the real pro Ooh. here is that they're all together in the same floor of area. Right, and we couldn't really sneak past them or get deeper into the cave without confronting them regardless. We also learned uh, the name um, Ivar. Uh, and that they have uh, made a deal with uh, uh, presumably the Shadow guy. The Shadow guy. The Raskin's like, hey, elves, we made our part of the deal. Why haven't you left up your part of the deal? So they're working with King Vorok then? It's certainly presumable. Well, now I won't feel bad if I kill them. But we can incinerate them all. Well, uh, maybe not go that far. Maybe we try to knock them out first. What's Sorry, I'm still really hooked up on the fact that they're stealing the kids and probably killing them. No, I think we have a foot in the door here. We go to them and we say, the Shadar Terrorist, fuck you, there's no deal, you're never going to get it. Join us, let's let's go see if we can make a deal with... I like that idea! It's a great idea! Just... I haven't dropped a concentrate. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many yeah, yeah. birds could breeze? Yeah, I'm going to be worth this for the rest of the day, just so you know. I mean, it's another seven and a half hours. <laughs> ah, well, my point is, is that you do your thing, maybe we just wait right here, and you go and just walk down there, and you explain the whole thing, and then if things go pear-shaped, then we we just rush in and, and yeah. look, fight them. I got us out. I can even get back in and get you out again if things go pear-shaped again. Well, why don't you come with me, and this time, well, why don't we all go? This is yeah. Yeah. Fine. You told me they're, to they're up to shady biz, it sounds like. The shouting voices, uh, as the, the smell dissipates, they start to <laughs> turn and get closer as you see the looming shape of a, of a dark gray oh, wolf. I also completely the, forgot to mention the, that before we left, I may have left the smell of a horrific fart. <laughs> I knew that would get lifted the second you see it. I'm like, well, here it comes. Oh. Yep, there it is. It keeps going. All right. Why don't we all go? <laughs> we. Uh, we send a representative. I think we send Caprice. I was we sending Caprice. I'll talk. I'll go. Fine. Fine. Well, it could be more conspicuous than a fart. <laughs> but it was like rotting meat. 
<laughs> That's, That's not here. any better. It depends on your There are part. like a hundred hey, other man. smells you could have chosen <laughs> before. Saying, like, my fart. diet is pretty extreme. Or rotting meat. You're just Geralt from no, I thought, I thought just thought... fucking milk and cheese <laughs> and rot, full of raw meat. No, literally. Uh, could have been a skunk. No, no. I thought that I wanted to go with the rotting carrion. I mean, they're meat eaters. I wanted to go with like a like a rotting. No, but like think about things that would naturally occur in a fur. Uh, do you want to play Felix? Because I only trust Nikki to play Felix. Oh! Ah! I drop Bam. concentration Bam. as the totem falls Bam. to the ground. Bam. Bam. Oh. Bam. <laughs> Why the fuck would there be a skunk in a goddamn wolf cave? Fuck all of you! you fuck? That's probably what they're eating. Oh, thank, thank you, you, war cartographer. Thank, thank you for the follow. Really oh, thank you. It's my okay, favorite Chris, person, the photographer. Uh, uh, I, I don't have much time. Um, yeah, I will. Go. Yeah. I can get you out. Go. Be our representative. I'll save you if I have to. Thank you kindly. Uh, and then I will. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Uh, I will turn and I will uh, steal myself. I have let uh, uh, Toa uh, work the kinks out of his uh, arm. I pick up my totem. Uh, you did this for eight minutes, which is actually pretty hard. Yeah. It, maybe not for you, actually. Well, it's a heavy totem. Yeah, I mean, but it's a heavy lot. totem. So uh, I turn and I um, will uh, have a hefty jog. <laughs> This is gonna be and so just, good. And just be like all smiles and and uh, uh, make my way towards the uh, wolf pack. Uh, presumably a dozen plus this one uh, scarf woman. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's the wolves. And so you're just going in, in plain view. I'm now. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna use the center of the path. I'm. I'm walking down. Uh, hey, hey, hey there. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and. And it's you see you here. So, uh, you see as I need to make a quick. Uh, persuasion check. Just, just you know, I just want to see like how convincing this is from a charisma stand. I'm walking in confidently and uh, bravely, uh, and with a persuasion check, you say. Yep. Give me a twenty-four. Oh, oh let's go. hell Let's yeah. go. You're As you see incredible. the woman Four step 14. forward with the the uh, the three um, the three more uh, where uh, lycanthropes behind her. As she she's taken aback. And she raises her heavy crossbow and reloads. Oh! And says, What are these games? Did you have Fiona or not? I, I, I don't know who that is. I, I come from, uh, uh, I come from, uh, uh, across the forest. I come from the, uh, uh city of, uh, New Zerabakia, Zer- Zer- uh, Zerovich. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, I come to, uh, to, with good tidings, with an olive branch, to, to say hello and to, uh, uh, to, 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 to make a deal, uh, something of an alliance. Uh, my name is Fabrizio Desesto. You can call me Caprice. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm a bit of a troubadour. Uh, I, I, I talk a little too much, but, hey, you know, this is a little scary when you're having a crossbow pointed at you. I just want to say while this is happening, I am very much keeping my eye on Caprice and waiting just in case I have to go and do my thing. You hear, as you do that, I need to make a persuasion check. And as you step forward, you see motion from the cliff uh, all around you as three more wolves stick their heads out, and you now see one, two, three, four, five crossbowmen all point their crossbows at you. And and what do you get? Twenty six. Twenty six. <laughs> get warmer. She she looks at you and she seems confused. Are you expecting me to believe? You're not with the ghoul eaters. And the timing is just chance. The, the ghoul eaters? Uh, no, no, I don't know who that is. I, I, I look, look. You, uh, the elves. Don't, 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 don't shoot. Uh, I, I, I was given a map. Uh, straight here, um, based on where we thought you might be. And uh, uh, I, 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 I've come alone just to say uh, hi. Um, you, we, 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 we've learned some important information. Uh, and we, we understand that uh, you're a very powerful group. Uh, we, we think that there's a, a, a chance for us to, to help both parties, but I, I, I'm, I'm basically an ambassador, an emissary of yours. What do you want? Oh, we, we, and why shouldn't I shoot you right now? Well, well, you shouldn't shoot me because I wouldn't be able to go back and organize the meeting that we want to talk through uh, 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 sort of a, a fire... Uh, what, what's the word? Uh... Uh, no fire uh, treaty type operation where we, we get to know each other and maybe we have some uh, common interests in mind and uh, uh, we, 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 we treat you nice, you treat us nice, you're growing respect. 
So we grow, we grow both of our power powers. I, I, I don't know. You, you seem really on edge, but honestly, I'm just, I'm just here for this one purpose. Let me upstream to come. You. Ninety. Oh, nice. Oh, really good. <laughs> she roll a five. Sorry. She she stops and she thinks for a moment. This is not the day for this. I will know what to do. You're coming with me. Do you have anyone with you? I'll know if you're lying. Ivar will hear you out. Because if I shoot you and I wasn't supposed to, Ivar will give me hell. And I'm not going to make that kind of decision when I need to be keeping out for elves. Do we hear this? Yes, this is echoing through. I immediately rush. Oh no, he, he has friends. He has friends. Here we are. And I drag Felix out with me. Ah. Ah. There, there's a few of us. We're here ah. and we're just keeping an eye on him to make sure that... And nothing happens, but everything that he said, we also agree with. God. We want to be friends. Damn it, Toa. Iris, do we go? Uh, I'm not sure. Should we wait? Uh, and yes. Okay. You do that, and you're like, Iris and, and I are hunkering in the in the shadows. You immediately uh, get pulled, and uh, she, uh, she she points at you. Uh, yeah, it, it, are it, you with the feathers? What? What, is, what does that mean? Ravens. Oh, oh no, no, no. We're, we're, we're not with the Order of the Feathers. We, we, we haven't even met them. We don't know. We know they exist. That's it. Are you missing someone important to you? Our whole thing is getting back people that are taken. It's a very complex situation, which we're very willing to explain. So if you need help getting back Fiona, maybe we could help you out and get her back. If we could help get someone else back. We, we, we're, we're putting yourself at your mercy here because we think that there's actually a lot of aligned planets where we all walk away very happy. You're, you're talking about elves? Are they fucking you over? Because maybe we can help. They have the pack of his daughter. See? Okay. All right. It's it's all starting to come together. We're supposed like, to be bringing her back today. Right. So maybe we all just have a quick conversation, explain where we're coming from, and maybe we can help you out as well. We, we could help you. We could wait until they show up, and then we could just kill them all real quick and get it back. If we to deliver her, we've already fulfilled our end of the bargain. So it, it doesn't matter. We're not going to risk any more dark sorcery. Well, there's no dark sorcery. We just yes. want everybody who belongs to the people that they belong to to be returned home safely. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We'll see what Ivar says. Of course. He's the smart one. Fine, fine. We, we need to have a conversation. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, come with me. Welcome to night, Bane. Thank you. Um, what, what, what's your name? Marla. 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 Beautiful name. Um, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I would I would I would be behaving just like you if I were in your shoes. Uh, uh, take a side bar. Let's uh, let's sit down and have a little uh, powwow. Lufty and Iris, can you please join us? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a tabaxi and a genasi right up there. They should come with us. I think because we're all friends. Oh dear. He God. really just called us out. So are you still I drunk? Know, darling. What do we do? She looks absolutely bewildered as she and she. Very on edge, and you can see now that she's starting to crack, and there's a wildness to her eyes as uh, uh, several of the okay. wolves from the cliff face and uh, two of the crossbow men start to uh, Here's uh, the walk thing. along the end. We either run you. forever, and we never <laughs> see these fuckers again. <laughs> oh, we go. What do you think? I'm up Wait. for either. How, how fast can you run? <laughs> I mean, so fast. Let's go. Like, up walls. <laughs> can you imagine if just Iris and Lifty were gone from the campaign because they ran all the way out of Skethrenel? No way! They just fucking ran. No way! Fucking Look at you! 
<laughs> oh my god, what a fantastic <laughs> end. No one coming. I think we need to go make sure that they're going to be okay. Okay. And I don't think we'll be in the woods alone just in case no. they get attacked by the elves. <laughs> They're <laughs> still, <laughs> still holding me. Like, like, it's, it's very dangerous. I'm like ragdolling it's, as you're it's like. It's very dangerous for them to be alone. I'm like, what the fuck do you uh-huh. <laughs> we never say these fuckers ever I think again. you're right. I think we should run. And as I say that, I'm gonna step very loudly, accidentally on a on a tree branch that cracks and oh, where they growl. Okay. Oh, here we are. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're here. Mm-hmm. We here they are. are. We see a bear. Hello. These fuckers ever again. I'm going to give you one chance. Is this the rest of them? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, one moment. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Hands to my chest. Yeah, hands to his chest. Hope to. Be blessed. blessed. I hope you're blessed. Be blessed. blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. Oh, you're as uh, terrible. she points terrible. the crossbows at you, and uh, as well as the rest of the crossmen, they let, they aim uh, uh, directly at you. As uh, I feel like we made one, the wrong decision. Two of the men that uh, that one has an axe, one has a sword. You see, there, there. Uh, you hear a sickening pop and a, <laughs> the shifting of flesh as they Ugh. grow hair and morph into giant. Wolves and uh, don't care for it and uh, follow behind you Yikes. as Marla uh, urges you to enter the cavern. Do the guys that just shifted into wolves look like the other wolves? Yep, they're all yeah. they're all the same. So, vibe. so it's we could probably presume that they're all werewolves and it's not a mix of werewolves and, and like, you probably, like the... you, I would say that you can make that as a deduction. Goodness gracious, thank you. All right, we'll just yeah, lead, take us to your leader, and we'll we'll have a nice chat. Yeah, I would hands up follow. Yeah, and we were not hiding. We were just um. They were sending yeah, me an that. ambassador. We were along to, to, to start the initial. I don't know if you know this. You probably don't know this, but Iris is royalty, so it's like we can't just walk her into your lovely Keep cave. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, shut up. You shut up! No, you! Shh! You have to shut up! Oh, shut up, everyone! Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll shut up. <laughs> I was supposed to. But you! Sh- <laughs> and you. Uh, I love you. The answer to that question <laughs> is answered. As you make your way in and you see as the, the torches start to illuminate the walls and the different tunnels that go off and then the space starts to open up and you see as as there's um seems to be as you pass a what looks like a kennel with these iron bars and wolves uh gnawing at some bone that seem to be considerably smaller than the ones that had um that uh that are surrounding you escorting you as uh two more of <laughs> they stand back up and uh, walk side by side as human figures uh, behind you, and you hear the, uh, the the shouting of voices, and the uh, some are laughing, some are yelling at each other as it echoes through this chamber. As it then opens up, and you see pathways down. You hear the running of water as um, as there is a stream, and it opens up to what looks like a verifiable city within this cavern. And then thank you very much. Thank you for the follow, Pilot Mike Yay. X and Sealer oh, 6000. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the, the family. Hey, welcome on in. Great Omar. to have you. Welcome in. As you see now, there's a huge cavern system where that 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 built and carved into all of these walls are, are, are doorways and windows and flanked by torches. You see, you see a, uh, a, a waterfall from this tavern uh, making its way as, as there's a stream with a bridge built over it. As you as you uh, you, you wind through you uh, you see um, you see that, that, that there is a larger uh, cavern space. That, uh, that that you're that you're making your way towards, as you see all of these wolves and humans, and then you actually look and you see there seems to be one creature that is a, a hybrid. 
of the two, standing on two legs a with a, an elongated, uh, elongated snout covered in hair as it just snarls down at you. As Marla is, uh, is, is giving threatening glares at some that are, are, are looking. Oh, give me a taste. Just a little taste. As some of them actually start to you look and you now see that that the, the meat is sticking to the ribs on some of these human form, wolf form, and, and, and hybrid as they're staring and you, you see now as as um, as what looks like a little uh, a wolf puppy uh, uh, scampers and makes its way alongside one of the uh, the higher levels of this internal cavern city and then uh, goes behind the leg of a woman staring down and then in a shift later it's uh, a little girl no, no older than five grabbing onto the uh, dress of her of her mother as you you then uh, make your way to what looks like a grand hall there is a ton of torches surrounding this place and uh, and there is what looks like a uh, several elevations of a natural uh, a natural stalagmite that has been carved to form some sort of strange throne with a large table uh, strewn out and sitting at this uh, stone slab on the on which is covered the the carcass of what looks like a a uh, a goat of some kind but it looks to be skinny and sickly and just uh, bits of sinew left as uh, you see a man with large gray mutton chops and uh, and uh, salt and pepper uh, hair as it's uh, roughly just not comb back but just kind of hangs back as he tears off uh, a bit of sinew from this uh, goat leg and you see now as you enter this chamber what looks like a uh, throne which is very clearly built for a path leader and is at one end with uh, many rows of seats uh, surrounding this whole space you see at the far end even taller than this throne is what looks like the statue of a woman in robes and standing tall in uh, with with arms folded it seems to be a female silhouette but where a head should be there seems to be the skull of a goat with horns rising to the ceiling and the goat skull is wearing the head of a wolf as if it's wearing a wolf pelt that goes down its back and you see this massive statue looming above you as you as the as you're you're, you're brought before the uh, before this, this this human is tearing into the goat light and his eyes immediately uh, jot up at you and you see now he has these gold eyes the eyes of a predator as he surveys you and he puts down the leg of the goat and he looks and he, he looks at Marla and he looks and he says, what the fuck is this Marla intruders not the elves they don't have Fiona I have my men keeping an eye out excuse me <laughs> language are you guys werewolves or are you swear wolves <laughs> I, cast, I cast power word explode on Taylor. <laughs> ah, no, As he, 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 he looks absolutely stunned. And he looks to the side and he looks to the other side. This fucking day. Marla, get the fuck out. If you move, you're in chains. You understand? 100%. Understood. And then, if you move again, I have all of my hungry wolf pack tear you limb from fucking limb. Do you understand that? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Understood. Okay. You see now, as as although he, this man stands, is incredibly muscular, uh, and he seems a little bit past middle age. Um, and although he is a man, his his, his canines are, are are sharp, and uh, he effortlessly tears a little bit of flesh from the leg of this goat and he puts it down. You come in peace, you say. You have to forgive me for being skeptical. The day I'm supposed to get my daughter back from those fucking ghouls, a bunch of freaks show up to my <coughs> cavern. Well, we, we may look like freaks, but uh, we are. We don't uh, look like freaks! To the eyes of uh, Ivar. Ivar it is? Ivar Silvertor. Oh, Silver Park. Terrific. Um, you're the one we wanted to talk to. Yeah, we do not look like free. We're a neutral party. He There's walks a... around the slab as he begins to descend the stairs from this th- this throne that's been carved out of a natural formation. Um, I have a question. You can put your arms down. Um, um what's... What's that? No, my point at the horrific statue. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> oh boy. He, he looks at you and says, That's really why you're fucking here. Uh, no, it's not why we're here. We're, we're here to, to see if we can maybe gain your help and, and help you in return. That's why we're here. Well, that is a useless. Fucking statue of the dead What Toe is trying to say that is that it's an incredibly complex situation and we're more than happy to explain our side of the story. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Oh, oh, just. Your daughter now. is missing? Your niece? She's not missing. She's stolen. She was taken. And you are providing other hostages in exchange. For someone who's important to you, yes. No judgment. We already did. It's done. The deal's done. And you think that these elves will not see this weakness and use it against you again? Knowing full well all they need to do is take what is close to you to get you to do their bidding? That is not what we come here for. We come to do the opposite. To offer our help first. An allegiance. We do not put you at the heel of our boot like the elves do. We come as friends, as allies, to help you get back that which is yours. Make a pleasure check and advantage. I couldn't have said it better myself. Persaging. Persuasion. Um, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, twenty. Persuasion. I, yeah, but I can't do math. Twenty-three. Yeah, thank you. Twenty-three. Okay. He stops. <clears throat> he looks at you. Really good. Stunned. Yes. You understand the irony? It's a fucking cat. <laughs> you can breathe laugh <laughs> You know, I'll, have a seat. Have a seat. Have I'll a seat. You know, we don't have, I, I don't have anything to feed you. We, I mean, we got some some hard tack. Would you like a laugh? Oh, well, we have some rations. Uh, I mean, honestly, you yeah, can yeah. care if you want to have some like cranberry granola. Are whatever. you guys hungry? Toa, put your hands down. Well, he's. I mean, he said we could put them down, and this is down. Down. Yeah, no, use your live. arms normal. You look ridiculous. Put you your are, hands down. What are you going to do to me? Look at where you are. I'm not threatened. <laughs> you have a point. I'm interested. I like, I like the cut of your jib. I do. Thank you. Um, why don't you make everybody twenty-three thousand loaves of bread? Do you eat bread? What? Yes, that's why we have to steal fucking flour like fools. I snap my fingers and I create a shit ton of fucking bread and water. 
Jesus. It explodes. <laughs> and Technically. <a> ton <laughs> of red. As, as Ivar steps back. And actually, as it explodes, you see him step back. And say, so As he turns into his hybrid form, as you see this, uh, gr- this deep, 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 dark gray wolf man step back and these incredibly long razor sharp claws as uh, as he as he, as he um, his clothes uh, stretch and, and and slightly rip to uh, accommodate uh, his his size as he looks back and then he relaxes <laughs> and stays oh, in this form yeah. and continues to talk right. as he I continues to talk to you. I can feed your entire pack for this evening at the Do- very least. Do we get the sense that he did that because he was scared? Probably why is he or the sort of illusion he was going to basically tr- to tear it, tear it apart. And there's he's actually like one loaf that is completely shredded, and he uh, so he's hungry. He he grabs one and he uh, immediately tears it in half. <sighs> you get in here, start distributing this. Children first. Get the pups fed, then you can fucking eat. Don't sneak a goddamn my mouthful. I'll as, cast it three times so that there's enough for the entire clan. As in as abundance, you see, um, as uh, as a number of of, of <laughs> humans uh, come in and uh, start heaving away, and there's, a, there's you hear the creaking of of um, of wood as a really ramshackle uh, uh, cart gets dragged in, and they start. Uh, piling all of the bread and then start uh, pushing it back off into the broader city um, structure. I cast sneakily poisoned bread. <laughs> I swear to God, I will end you. <laughs> I missed that spell. I missed that spell. I don't think that's a thing. I'm just going to say. You best. If there are any that are wounded, I can tend to them as well. Yeah. We would we be happy help. to assist in any way that we can. And she will. She'll do anything. We all will. Yeah, she will. This is why I uh, 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 talked to Marlon. This is why we approached. We, we, we want to find a, a, a place where all of our common interests align. I know it's hard to believe, but we're looking for the missing children. We want everyone to return home to their families. This, 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 this transcends bounds. We need everyone to be safe. Yeah. And we are looking for a missing mother as well. Sophiana. And it sounds like you've already delivered her to the elves. You mean the monster hunter? Uh, yes. We we have heard that phrase bandied about when it comes to Sophia. Yeah, we took all of her holy weapons. but she's in our she's in our chair. She's but safe. Alive. She's alive and she's okay. She's fine. Taken. Not letting her leave until I get Fiona back, then we'll cut her loose in the forest. But we need to talk to her. She has information. You can do that once my Fiona is back with me. No, we well, need yes. to talk to her first. Was, no, we what don't. Was your, what was Why? your end of the bargain that you already did then, if you don't want me asking? I have no shame. Well, I. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'm fine. I stole. We stole a couple of kids. Gave them over to the ghoul eaters. They took them. I don't know what they did with them. I don't. I don't ask questions. All I know is that they took my little girl. And I'd do whatever it would take. I steal all the kids in the world to get her back. That's unreasonable. You, you obviously love your daughter very Whether much. Whether it's reasonable or fucking not. Did they take your child before you took these other kids? We've been hunting sickly fucking deer and wolves and goats for centuries. Yeah. You can ask the fucking Barovians. We didn't come close to those dragon trees. What? Yeah, what? that's not what I asked. Why, why not? I mean, wouldn't you have a more successful life and hunt if you lived inside the trees? The feathers would rather keep us out here. We've been at war for generations. And, and once that 
this useless fucking god I still keep a statue because I'm afraid of what could happen if I tear it down. As soon as we, our people are ripped out from where we were for hundreds of years and turned to this elf infested fucking place. She had power there and then she disappeared. Stop listening to our police. Stop. The, go the goddess right there? Mother Knight. Man, this, this, this whole like morning lord and mother knight, is there gonna be like an afternoon chat? She was, she used to be worse. Not a single not a single prayer answered, and I s no, she's fucking dead. Whatever. I still pray every day. As I see those pups. As I see their ribs. As they fight over bones, scraps of men. Indeed, if it were possible to come to a truce with the Lord of the Land, if someone or someones were able to get you an audience with the Count, if you pull past. We might be able to do that for you. You do not seem like you are bad people. You seem like you might be misunderstood. Be grovel. Boot lickers of the morning lord. Or is that what you're suggesting? Is that, that what I do? said? Well, I don't know it, what it is you're saying. Is it, I said that I see in you a strength you do not seem to see yourself. You have value. You could provide something to this land that the Count could use. That is not groveling. That is showing him your worth and expecting payment for it. Land for it. Food for the bellies of the children in this cave. That is not weak. Are you a leader? I am a leader of a pack. Our army, our horde is more than what he is. We have hundreds of mouths to fill. The full strength we can tear apart. Thousands of these fucking things. But I need my girl back first. That's why as much as she shrieks and says she will cut my head off, pump me full of silver bullets, bolts. So if we were Enough. to bring your daughter back, If we were to do you this kindness, would you rel relinquish the monster hunter to us and at least consider an audience with the Duke or Count, whatever he is? Make a persuasion jump. At advantage. At advantage. I'm convinced. That's probably <laughs> Natural yeah. 20. Let's fucking go. What the fuck? Um, so 27. What's going yeah. on? Yes. What the hell? Yes. He, he stops and he looks at all of you. And he says, I think I've made it clear that I will do anything for fear. Anything. I've done terrible things to get her back after they fucking took her. I won't go with my tail between my legs and my ears behind my fucking head. But I am not so proud of an alpha that I won't hear a man out who wants to make a good faith effort. Like I said, I was good as much as she wants to kill me. And I don't blame her. I was gonna cut her loose out in the woods, unharmed. I was gonna even give her back her little fucking trinkets and her whip, her axes, all of her relics. Even if she came back, 
outside to the field of it. You understand? I have priorities. But if the owner returns to me and she should be arriving any minute, you can do more of that. And he points to the, the bread being carted out and distributed. I am not so proud. If we can eat, they want to ride with us. I consider having the beginning of the start of the conversation to work with them. If. If there's a need, Gary King is strong. His magic is strong. Maybe we'll find starving in this hole. Or maybe you're starving in this hole because he knows if you were fed, you would be stronger than even he could imagine. Maybe he keeps you weak. Maybe he fears your alliance with the Count. Maybe he would be right to fear me at full strength, even without her. He points to the statue of strange goddess called Mormon. seems to be no longer here. And he nods as he steps forward. And this, it's kind of hard to realize you've been talking to a wolf man this entire time where not just a man and he has the same uh, life and, and, and mannerisms but as, as he talks and he and the voice is just slightly more guttural as suddenly there's a commotion a celebration and excited voices as you hear um, the, the, the the pads of many paws and the the, uh, the scuffing of, of, of leather boots on the stone of this cavernous city, maybe. And you hear um, uh, Marla's voice call out. We got her! We got her, Ivor! That's not, that's his voice. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Was, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, we got her, Ivor! We got her, Fiona! She's a little tired! We got her! And uh, you see Marla um, holding the uh, the uh, the form of what looks to be a thirteen-year-old girl uh, with, uh, with long brown hair uh, that seems to be uh, kind of draped around her face as she uh, as she looks very pale and uh, very uh, uh, she looks very pale, but she is stirring as. Uh, Marla, as Marla uh, brings her over, and uh, immediately uh, Ivar uh, just completely ignores you and just sprints forward and pulls this girl out of Marla's clutches. And he uh, and Marla knows to step back as the uh, the massive lycanthrope hybrid form uh, takes his daughter. It's a oh no. Oh my little girl, you're alive. You with feel you're okay. Everything I did was worth it. And and you see that in his his bestial wolf like form, uh, uh, that he, certain tears are streaming down his face as um as as as, as dozens and dozens of um. Uh, lycanthropes in in various states in both human or rather in human uh, full wolf and hybrid form start to come flood in the sides and she uh, she looks up uh, as the eyes flutter and this uh, this 13 year old girl opens her eyes and she has these, these beautiful silvery uh, irises as she then looks up and she kind of, she makes eye contact with her father. And she seems weak and she says, No. No! Ah! 
as she screams and her eyes flash and blaze with silver light as her mouth starts blasting with silver light as all of the lichen all the lycanthropes and oh, werewolves yes. start uh, howling and screaming in pain and rearing back as I change the music. What in the hell? Oh my god, it's like basically a like a, it's like a basically a werewolf nuke. Can, <laughs> can I counter it spell? Is. I would That's like to like counter spell. It's fucked up. There's she's, no spell. She's basically a nuke. It's awful. As Ivor drops Fiona to the ground as she's screaming and suddenly her whole body is blasting with silver light as as all of the werewolves are sprinting out of this chamber uh, and uh, in, in, in very clear pain as their bodies locked up and stunned and Ivar stumbles back and collapses in the side of the room as you see Fiona's small humanoid body start to shift and and start to grow, and she's and she lets out this horrible, disgusting howl as she turns into a wolf form. But then uh, she starts to uh, her, her 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 body starts to form uh, uh, several extra limbs, and her body starts to bulge. As, several uh, several extra limbs that grow out of her as her then you hear cracking as her jaw splits. And there's a th- as there's a, th- a three uh, a three sided jaw as her eyes bulge with silver light and uh, disgusting fleshy protrusions start to grow as they all pulse with silver light that blast out and start falling off of the body and start to form into these disgusting silvery globules that then start uh, making their way uh, towards the city as she grows into a massive monstrosity. Uh, that looms over you into a horrible mutated wolf. It looks like the work of Ravanovia Mazarovich. As a horrible, flesh crafted abomination that once was Fiona Silver Pie, lets out a horrific howl and stares at all of you with malevolence. And that's for one session. Yikes. We're going to fight her! It's 11.30. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we is. wasted too much time playing board games. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Caprice like always. Yeah, that was oh, my Damn! Shit. Well, now we know what we gotta look forward to uh, next month. Next month? Uh, we're not done, though. No, we're not done. The 16th. We've got Advances to Chill. What's next? I've explained it 6,000 times, but if you're new. If you're new. If you're new. <laughs> if you're new. It yeah, feels a little salty. Shut up. Oh. The idea is that okay. if you have been gifted a sub because it is September, or you're on the fence and you've decided to sub to us because it is September and you get 20% off, or you have uh, the old uh, Bezos bucks, as I like to call them, you have a va- uh, Amazon Prime, you click the thing, you get sub. You get to watch Advances and Chill, which is after every stream session of D&D that we do. We switch the stream over to a subscriber-only stream, and we talk about all of our favorite moments, your favorite moments, we answer your intimate questions. I've got a few written down here, because during our break, we were answering too many Advances and Chill questions. So the point is, don't go anywhere. Yes. Stay around. If you're on the fence and you want some behind-the-scenes content, sub, because it's Subtober. And then we're going to answer all of your awesome September. I always say September. Is I wish it were September. It should be September. It's Everybody. halfway to September. September doesn't make any sense. The point is, stay with us. Avengers and chill. Coming at you. No, 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 we're, no, we're not. We're not ready. Oh, right. We're cutting over now. We have some. We have a couple just scheduling things that are happening. Oh, thank you, Logan, for the gift. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank that's you. Huge. So all of those people Lonely, need to stay around Lonely. for Avengers and chill. And we just have to just hammer in the schedule. We have RC got us up. Tuesday. We've got Tuesday. we got one more episode of Prime. Yeah. Then we have Gen Con. Then we have a week off. Then we have the new Nikki campaign, which is using the Ravenloft material. Vanity's Guide to Ravenloft. It's called Edge of Midnight, a Ravenloft folktale. And then we've got Icebound, literally the next day, which is a new monthly campaign DM by Derek. So we've got yeah. a lot of stuff coming up. Join our Discord. And giveaways. 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 Big giveaways. Join the Discord for all of the information. Join the Discord. I'm We're so going over to Avantius and Chill. 
Sub to join. Are you ready? Sub to join. See you guys. Sub. See you soon. Goodbye. See you soon.